Rui, a 15-year-old boy who still does not have any magical abilities, is often the victim of bullying from his friend Elena. Elena is Rui's friend, who mocks him in every possible way due to the fact that he does not have any magical skills. On this day, Elena mocks Rui just as usual. In this world, almost everyone has at least some kind of unique magical power, while Rui did not have it, which greatly upset him. In addition, Rui had problems not only with magic, but also with sports, which only upset him even more. Unlike Rui, Elena learned to use magic at the age of three. As she grew older, Elena's magical skills grew more and more. In addition, Rui was even more upset not only by Elena's superiority, but also by the fact that she would never be able to understand all his pain. Elena also trained Rai in magic, hoping that sooner or later he would also be able to gain some kind of magical power. However, Rui was not very happy with the fact that it was Elena who trained him, which the girl did not enjoy. At one point, Rui simply cannot withstand all the pressure that constantly surrounds him. Then he tells Elena that today, he wants to practice magic on his own. Elena was surprised by this decision, and she starts a row with Rui, in which she told him that people like him could never learn magic alone, thereby trying to provoke Rui into fighting her. At one point, Elena cannot stand it, and tells Rui that since he is unable to use even the simplest magic, then he is simply the same pathetic loser as his dead parents. These words deeply touched Rui's soul, since his parents died a long time ago, when Rui was still very young. Then Rui, not holding back all his anger at Elena, tells her that from now on he will no longer date her. Elena could not believe what she heard, which left her simply at a loss. Rui said that he did not even see Helen as a friend, as he was very annoyed by her arrogant behavior. With these words, Rui ran away from Elena towards the forest, while Elena herself could not believe all of the above. After such an unpleasant conversation, Rui was able to reach the forest after some time, where he decided to start training in magic. In preparation for using the spell, Rui attempts to use wind magic. However, Rui, as before, did not succeed, which made him extremely disappointed with himself. Rui was still haunted by what Elena said about his parents. A little later, Rui pulls himself together and continues to try to summon wind magic. After several attempts, Rui again began to think that, as usual, he was not succeeding. Rui also noticed that recently there has been a different atmosphere in the forest. Rui thinks that the atmosphere in the forest has become different because of the monsters that may live in this forest, and he decides to leave the forest as soon as possible. As Rui began to leave, he saw a very strange shining hole in the ground, from which came very strong magic that even he could feel. Rui decides to go back and tell everyone else about the pit, but due to carelessness, he falls into this very pit. After falling, Rui briefly lost consciousness, and a few minutes later he wakes up and sees that he is in some strange place, in which at first glance, there was nothing. After Rui woke up, he began to remember everything that happened to him before he got here. While Rui was thinking, a beautiful and busty woman in a black revealing robe appeared behind him. Rui was very confused at the sight of the woman, because he had never met such beautiful women in his life. Taking a closer look, Rui notices small horns on the woman's head, believing her to be a demon. Rui read in a book that demons are extremely cruel and treacherous creatures that can control very powerful magic. The beautiful woman confirmed Rui's guesses, telling him that he immediately guessed that she was a demon. Out of confusion, Rui somewhat awkwardly introduced himself to the demon and said that this was the first time he had seen such a demon. The demon was very surprised by Rui's courage, despite the fact that in his village the elders told the children about demons, that they are very dangerous for people. Despite this, Rui said that he was apparently not afraid of this demon due to the fact that she was very beautiful. These words made the demon very embarrassed because for the last tens of thousands of years, no one had praised her for anything, especially for her beauty. Rui noticed how embarrassed the demon was, and he immediately began to ask her forgiveness for such unexpected words. After that, another girl appeared behind Rui, who was smaller and had tanned skin, and she also had a long, scaly tail and wings. Rui greeted the girl, which she did not like, but she was surprised by his courage. After this, the girl introduces herself as the seventh Dragon Queen. After hearing this, Rui was very worried, since dragons were considered the most powerful race in the world. The girl was pleased with the way she introduced herself to Rui, thereby greatly surprising him. After this, the girl asked Rui if he knew who this demon was. After hearing this, the demon remembers that she never introduced herself to Rui. The woman then introduced herself as Desterosa, the 66th demon queen who rules over all the darkness and chaos of this world. After this, Rui was extremely frightened and greatly amazed by what he heard at the same time. However, Rui never fully understood whether they could really be the Demon Queen and the Dragon Queen. Desterosa thought that Rui didn't see her as a Demon Queen, 
just because he thought she was beautiful, while the Dragon Queen didn't understand how Desterosa was so easily embarrassed by his compliments. After that, they started having a small quarrel, looking at which Rui thought that they both got along well with each other and were probably even friends. During this quarrel, they both decide to reincarnate and show Rui their true appearance. During the transformation process, Desterosa's clothes were torn almost completely. Meanwhile, the Dragon Queen's outfit completely disappeared, and a hard, scaly layer began to appear in some places. At this time, Rui felt an extremely powerful flow of magical energy that he had never felt before. After the reincarnation, the Dragon Queen turned into a huge and formidable dragon, and Desterosa acquired a new, even more revealing outfit than she had before. After that, Rui was completely convinced that there was a demon queen and a dragon queen in front of him. Rui remembered a legend in which a long time ago there lived a hero who had talents in magic, swordsmanship, and a good-natured character. One day this hero rid the world of the dragon queen and the demon queen, thereby saving people from their atrocities, after which he himself disappeared. Then Rui realized that these were the same dragon queen and demon queen that this hero imprisoned here. However, Rui did not understand why they were not defeated, but only imprisoned here. He then assumed that the Dragon Queen and the Demon Queen were so strong that he could not completely defeat them, but only trapped them in this empty space. Then he thought that they might know how they could get out of here, and he decides to ask them about it. After asking Rui, Desterosa tells him that it is simply impossible to get out of here. Then Rui was in despair that he would spend the rest of his life here. The Dragon Queen only added that if they knew how to get out of here, they would no longer be here. After this, the Dragon Queen decides to show Rui her seal, which appeared on her when she ended up here. The Dragon Queen said that this seal was placed on them by the hero who left them here in captivity for many years. She also added that it was because of this seal that their souls are now closely connected with this place. Then Rui began to look for this seal on his body, and as it turned out, he did not have such a seal. Then Desterosa began to undress Rui to try to find the seal of imprisonment on him. As it turned out, Rui really didn't have any seal, and no one knew why exactly he didn't have a seal. Then Rui said that he got here after he fell into some strange hole in the ground. Desterosa thought that he had ended up here due to some strange accident. Desterosa also suggested that he could still get out of here. Hearing this, Rui said that he was ready to do anything to leave this strange place. Hearing this, the Dragon Queen and Demon Queen were surprised by Rui's big promises. Rui, in turn, did not fully understand what exactly they wanted from him. Then Desterosa said that Rui could make a hole in this place through which he could escape. Then Rui said that he could not use magic on his own, and thus he could not make a hole in this space. Desterosa told Rui that he couldn't not use magic at all. Then Desterosa invites Rui to train him in order to increase his magical powers. For better understanding, Desterosa explained to Rui that magic is like a muscle, and the more he uses it, the stronger it becomes. But despite this, if he overdoes his efforts, then his magic can completely run out, and then he can die from it. Desterosa also added that for the most effective training, he will have to bring his condition almost to death as often as possible. Desterosa said that 500 years of training would be enough for Rui, which greatly shocked him, thinking that he simply would not survive. Then the Dragon Queen told Rui that time moves differently here, and that here one year is equal to one day on Earth. Then if Rui spends 500 years in this space, then only 500 days will pass on Earth. The Dragon Queen said that if they trained him, he could get out of here. Rui thought that they would not help him just like that, and then they said that in return, he would help them get out, and he could not refuse such an outcome of events. The next day, Desterosa began training Rui, which he was very grateful for. Desterosa reminded Rui that it would take him 500 years to master all of his most powerful magic techniques. Rui wanted to know if time really moves in this place, as the Dragon Queen said. Desterosa said that everything was so, and that once she herself checked it with the help of magic. Then Rui remembered the elder in the village who took care of him when his parents died. He thought that the elder there would worry about him, and that after all this training he would definitely return to him. He told Desterosa that he would try his best to get out of here as soon as possible. After saying this, she pats Rui on the head, thereby praising his efforts. Rui remembered how before his mother died, he also stroked his head, which made Rui feel a pleasant warm feeling that he had not felt for a very long time. However, Desterosa asked for forgiveness if he did die here, which caused Rui's emotional mood to suddenly change to a more depressive one. During his training with Desterosa, Rui practiced his magical skills for a long time. From such training, Rui crawled to the Dragon Queen completely exhausted. The Dragon Queen realized from Rui's exhausted state that Desterosa was training him very well. Before Rui had time to regain his strength, the Dragon Queen was ready to train him. The Dragon Queen said that she would train Rui not in magic, 
but in a special Qigong technique. The Qigong technique was unique in that it fully revealed the full potential of any magician. There were very few people in the human world who used the Qigong technique, but this technique was not inferior to ordinary magic and power. The Dragon Queen told Rui that if he mastered this technique, he could easily defeat even a dragon. The study of Qigong technique is based on nine exercises, which are divided into attack and defense exercises. Any person who can learn all the exercises will be able to overcome any difficulties along the way. Rui didn't understand why no one used such powerful magic. The Dragon Queen explained that this technique is very difficult to master. She also explained that in recent years, it has become much easier for people to use magic, and that everyone can easily use basic magic, while the Qigong technique needs to be studied diligently for years. This didn't scare Rui much, since for him, training in the Qigong technique should be as difficult as training in ordinary magic. The Dragon Queen also added that to learn the Qigong technique, a person does not need any talent, and all training was based only on painstaking study. Rui said that he will try his best, and he can't wait to start training. However, the Dragon Queen did not mention that Rui must memorize everything he will study. After the explanation, Desterosa appeared to them and said that the training program would change every week. The Dragon Queen thought that Rui should learn Qigong before Desterosa had time to teach him how to use magic. Ten years after Rui found himself in endless hell, his magic skills became much stronger. Desterosa was satisfied with the results of her training, but she also understood that Rui needed to continue training. Desterosa noticed all of Rui's progress and saw how he became a real magician. Besterosa was also surprised by how Rui, during all her continuous training, never showed his fatigue. At the end of the training, Desterosa told Rui that he had enough for today, but Rui argued that he could still continue despite the almost complete lack of magical energy in him. Rui also said that he tried very hard in training and that he cannot just take it and start resting. Desterosa thought that Rui had an unhealthy desire to master magical skills. Then she decides to tell him that he is trying very hard to prove himself in all her training sessions. She also added that despite how weak a magician he was in his world, all his efforts bring him results. After this, Desterosa decides to transfer some of her magical power to Rui through her magic channel. She explained to him that magicians like him have very little magical power, and therefore she could transfer very little magical energy to him. She also explained that if he did not use this magic, his magical power would weaken, and over time he would not be able to use his magic at all, which scared Rui very much. After this, Desterosa began the process of transferring magical energy to Rui. While she was transferring some of her magical energy to him, she noticed that during all the time of his training, Rui's magical channels had become more stretched compared to other people. After transferring the magical energy, Desterosa kept telling Rui that with every training he and his magic were becoming stronger. At first, such words from Desterosa touched Rui very much, since no one had previously praised him as much as now. A little later, he calmed down and told Desterosa that he was very pleased to hear such warm words of support. Rui also said that he was very glad that he came to this place and ended up with them, affectionately calling Desterosa little sister. She was incredibly embarrassed by what Rui called her, causing her to faint. At first, Rui became very worried about Desterosa, but the Dragon Queen told him that she was just crazy and that she would come to her senses soon. After what she saw, the Dragon Queen told Rui to rest before training with her. During training, Rui was able to do 100 push-ups with a very heavy stone on his back. After this, the Dragon Queen told Rui to rest before the next exercise. She was pleasantly surprised at how the first visible results of her training began to appear. She also drew attention to how, after 10 years of training, Rui was able to master the Qigong technique. While she was thinking about Rui's abilities, she noticed how he, hiding from her, continued to do push-ups, which she did not like very much. She was very unhappy with this behavior, telling Rui that he should never overexert himself. Rui said that because he was extremely weak in his world, he should train as much as possible. The Dragon Queen kept telling him that this was all nonsense and that his physique was more than strong and resilient, which Rui simply did not believe. He said that he was the weakest and slowest in his world and that the Dragon Queen would not be able to understand him because she was very strong. The queen draconically realized that Rui was a child with complexes and that she needed to somehow fix it. She then tells Rui that thanks to his efforts, his physique is getting stronger with every workout. She explained to him that he considered himself weak only because he simply did not know before how effectively he could use his body. She also drew his attention to the fact that his body has very efficient regeneration and that he should be grateful to nature for the fact that he was born so strong. Rui was very touched by the Dragon Queen's words about his unique physique. After this, he decides to ask the Dragon Queen about what her parents were like. 
She replied that her parents died when she was very young and that she did not even remember their faces. After this question, Rui began to feel somewhat awkward after his question, thinking that she was uncomfortable remembering it. But instead, the Dragon Queen just grinned and told Rui not to think about it and that she also had a strong body, which she received after birth. After that, Rui could not contain his emotions and rushed into the arms of the Dragon Queen, thinking to himself that they had a lot in common. She didn't fully understand what exactly was going on, to which Rui replied that she was trying very hard too. After that, the Dragon Queen realized what exactly was going on, and after a short hug, she began to calm him down. After this, Rui felt better and said that at one time the Dragon Queen was the same as he was before, and that he would no longer whine. At this time, Desterosa had already managed to come to her senses, and she understood that everything had worked out for them with each other. In the hundredth year of his stay in the Endless Hell, Rui became much stronger, and he could even use some magical techniques. He wanted to show the Dragon Queen his results, and he called her as Ryo. Then she remembered how Rui once asked her if she had a name. Before, when she terrified people, everyone knew her as the Dragon Queen, and no one saw her as an individual. And after hearing this, he decided to address her as Ryo. Rui distracted Ryo from his thoughts, and he wanted to know if his magic had gotten better. Ryo said that his magical skills have become much stronger compared to those he demonstrated in previous training. After this, Ryo began to praise Rui for being able to master half of all offensive and defensive Qigong techniques in just 100 years. Rui later told Ryo that every time she touches him, his heart starts beating faster every time. Ryo was shocked by what she heard, while Rui continued to say that her skin was very soft and that it smelled very good. Rui still couldn't stop complimenting Ryo, which made her feel more and more embarrassed. After that, she began to beat Rui for what he had just said to her, considering him a pervert. Rui didn't understand what exactly he said about her, thinking that he said too much. At this time, Ryo, while still thinking about what Rui had just said to her, was also thinking about how much he embarrassed her. At that moment, Desterosa approached them so that she could discuss some issues with Ryo regarding further training. Rui then decides to leave Desterosa with Ryo and continue training away from them. Desterosa pointed out to Ryo how they had become friends with each other during their training. She reminded Ryo of how before Rui was here, they would constantly fight each other to the death. Then they both realized how much had changed in the endless hell since Rui's appearance. Then Desterosa thought about how everything had become so fun for them from that moment on. After this, Rui decides to turn to Desterosa with a question about his magical abilities. However, instead of listening to Rui, she tells him not to call her by her name anymore. Rui then tries to remember how he should address Desterosa, and when he remembered, he addressed her as little sister, which almost made Desterosa faint. After that, Desterosa attacked Rui with open arms. After this, Rui and Desterosa begin training, in which Rui shows her his abilities in using his fire magic skills. Desterosa was very pleased with how after 100 years in endless hell, his skills had become so strong. However, despite such a rapid growth in abilities, their moment of separation is getting closer and closer. At this moment, Rui runs up to her so that he can find out if she is happy with his abilities. But when Rui ran up to Desterosa, he noticed that she began to cry. Rui was very upset because his little sister suddenly started crying. Desterosa, in turn still crying, hugged Rui tightly to her, telling him that she was crying precisely because of him. Desterosa, not holding back her emotions, promised herself that she would definitely return him to her world, even if they never saw each other again. Over 300 years in endless hell, Rui was able to learn to use Dark Flame, one of the most complex and powerful spells. Desterosa and Ryo were pleased that Rui was able to master magic that only high-ranking demons could use. Desterosa explained that she transferred some of her magical energy to Rui through magical channels from time to time so that he could use his magical skills more effectively. She was extremely pleased with how quickly Rui was able to master such complex spells. Ryo said that Rui was also making great progress in her training and that he had mastered all the Qigong skills. After the training, Desterosa and Ryo once again praised Rui for his efforts and determination. After training, Rui commented that it was already late and that it was time for them all to go to bed, which Desterosa and Ryo agreed with. A second later, Rui fell to the ground from an unpleasant pain in the chest area, and Desterosa and Ryo immediately tried to find out what happened to him. When they removed his outer clothing, they noticed a barely visible gray military mark on him. Rui was scared, while Desterosa and Ryo were happy for him, because such a mark only appears on professional warriors. Then Rui calmed down and wanted to find out if Desterosa and Ryo had similar marks. Desterosa then slightly removed some of her clothing so that Rui could see her mark. She said that it depicted a royal mark, 
which was higher in status than a military mark, and it showed that the owner of such a mark was worthy of the royal title. Rio also showed her mark on her palm, which signified her membership in the royal family. Then Rui decides to find out what exactly is written on his military mark. Destarosa and Rio read the contents of the mark, and it said that Rui is a warrior of demons and dragons. From what she heard, Destarosa was overjoyed and proud of Rui, and she immediately began to hug him tightly. However, Rio said that this mark is not finished, and it needs to turn silver to be complete. Rui felt that in order to complete it, he had to train more and harder. However, Rio said that his current body has reached the limit of what it should be at his age. In the endless hell, no one ages, and therefore Rui's body does not grow, due to which he will not be able to overcome his threshold of the maximum power of his magical skills. And the only way to overcome this threshold is to get out of the endless hell. Desterosa tells Rui that his skills are now more than enough for him to escape the endless hell. Then Rui decides to rest today, and tomorrow he will try to get out. A little later, Rui returns to the small house in which he lived to rest, and gains strength throughout all these 300 years of training. In a dream, Rui accidentally grabs something very large, soft and pleasant to the touch. When he woke up, he saw Desterosa in front of him in her underwear, whom he had been holding by the chest all this time. Desterosa was pleasantly surprised that Rui immediately decided to grab onto her. This sight frightened Rui very much, and he did not understand what was happening now. After that, Rio, who was also in her underwear, attacked Ruya. Rui was still confused by the appearance of Desterosa and Rio, and he still didn't understand what exactly they wanted to do with him. Desterosa then explained to him that since he would be leaving them tomorrow, he and Rio had to say goodbye somehow. Rio said that their power and knowledge is not all they can give to Rui, then they told Rui that they could also give him his first time. After that, Desterosa immediately kissed Rui, which made him very excited. After the kiss, Desterosa couldn't stop telling Rui how much she loved him. After Desterosa, Rio also began to kiss Rui, thereby showing all her affection for him. After the kiss, Desterosa noticed how embarrassed Rio was, which she in turn denied. After this, another quarrel began between Desterosa and Rio, in which they began to make excuses for the fact that this was happening to them for the first time. Rui could only silently watch their quarrel from the sidelines. After that, Desterosa stopped quarreling, and they were both ready to attack the defenseless Rui. Rui was very confused and frightened by the situation in which he unwittingly found himself. However, Desterosa and Rio could no longer be stopped, and they were ready to continue their pleasures with Rui. The next day, Desterosa and Rio explained to Rui what he needed to get out of the endless hell. Rui just looked at Desterosa and Rio and thought about the day he ended up here. He could not forget those very first training sessions, which tortured him half to death. He couldn't forget those moments with Desterosa and Rio when he had so much fun with them. Rui understood that these days of his life had come to an end, and that today, he would return home. After this, Rui began to prepare one of his spells, which would create a hole in space through which he would return home. Before Rui creates the portal, Rio interrupts his spell to give him something important. Rio gives Rui his dragon fang earring so that he can use it to create a hole in space. Rio tells Rui to take her earring and channel all his magical power into her. Ruyu took Rio's earring, directed his magical power into it, and instead of the earring, he ended up with a dragon sword in his hands. Rui was surprised by how strong the magical power was coming from his sword. Rio informed Rui that this was not an ordinary sword, but a relic of his father, which was made from his fangs. She also added that there are only two such swords in the entire world, and she gives one such sword to Rui as a memory of them. Rui wanted to say that he cannot accept such a gift from Rio, but she does not listen and interrupts him. Rio continued to say that she was giving this relic to him for a reason, and that he should fully understand this if he did not want to accept it. Rui then changes his mind and decides to accept the sword, promising Rio that he will treasure it. Rio was happy with Rui's decision, after which she explains to him how to properly use this sword. A few minutes later, Rui was ready to use the sword to cut the space between the human world and the endless hell. Rui began to concentrate all his magical power on the sword, after which he makes a strong and confident swing. After his impact, a large crack appeared in the air, from which a bright light came. While the crack was growing and getting larger, Rui had already begun to say goodbye to Desterosa and Rio, not holding back his emotions. Before Rui leaves them, the three of them begin to hug each other. Desterosa wished Rui a good journey and to be careful when returning to his world. Rio wished Rui good luck and told him that they would always wait for his return. Ruyu could not believe that this was the end, and that after passing through the crack, he would finally find himself in his world. He also thought that he would definitely free them from endless hell in order to continue living with them. 
Before returning to his world, he told Desterosa and Ryo that he would definitely free them from here. Desterosa and Ryo just looked after Rui, who was already leaving them. A second later, Rui walked through the crack, after which it closed, letting Desterosa know that Rui had left them. Rio told Desterosa that they were now alone in an endless hell for the first time in 300 years. Then Desterosa grabbed Rio and began to cry loudly, which Rio did not expect from her at all. Desterosa couldn't stop talking about how much she was already jumping around the Rui. Rio then began to try to calm her down, thinking to herself that she had never done this before. Rio never ceased to be amazed that the Demon Queen was capable of such emotions. When Desterosa calmed down a little, she decided to ask Rio if she missed Rui. Rio said that she believes in Rui and that she doesn't feel as lonely as she did before they had Rui. After what Rio said, Desterosa's emotions got the better of her again, and then she began to squeeze Rio, calling her cutie. Then Desterosa told Rio that if she felt lonely, then they urgently needed to hug. After that, Desterosa began to tightly hug Rio, who tried to fight her off in every possible way. Rio increasingly wanted Rui to return to them as soon as possible. Meanwhile, Rui was between dimensions through which he must get to his world. Rui also really missed Desterosa and Rio, whom he won't be seeing for a while. However, he pulls himself together and thinks that he will definitely save them. A little later, he finds another crack that should move Rui to his world. Then Rui takes out his sword, which Rio gave him, and hits the crack with it to make it bigger. When he widened the crack and went through it, he found himself in the same forest in which he found a hole in the ground through which he fell into an endless hell. It was only seconds later that Rui finally realized that he was finally home. Rui's happiness simply knew no bounds, and he decided not to hesitate and return to his native village. However, during his stay in endless hell, he managed to forget the way home. At first, Rui wanted to get onto the tree and look around, but as soon as Rui jumped, he found himself at a very high altitude. From such a height, Rui was able to look around and see the sea and his native village nearby. As soon as Rui saw all this beauty, he realized what a small world he had lived in before. At first, Rui thought about how he could save Desterosa and Rio, but he was not entirely sure that he would succeed. Then Rui plans to return to his home first, to be sure that nothing has changed there since his disappearance. After arriving home, Rui packed some things and was going to go to a very important place for him. This place turned out to be a large stone, on the site of which Rui's mother and father were buried. Rui apologized for his absence for so long and said that next time he would introduce Desterosa and Rio to them. At that moment, an elder appeared behind Rui, who raised Rui and looked after him after the death of his parents. The elders wanted to know from Rui where he had been all this time, to which Rui said that it was too long a story. Rui apologized to the elder for being gone for so long, and he was very happy to see the elder. Then the elder invites Rui to go to him to give him something warm. Rui created a large fireball and told the elder that he must go. The elder was shocked that Rui could create such a fireball so easily. Rui said that he is fine and that he is not as weak as before. The elder saw unprecedented confidence in his abilities in Rui's eyes, and he also said that he would look after Rui's house. Rui thanked the elder for his concern, after which he went on about his business. While Rui was walking, Elena noticed him and immediately began telling Rui about how angry she was with him. Elena thought that since Rui had returned, he wanted to make peace with her. Rui told Elena that her arrogance had not changed at all during the time he was gone, and that she should finally grow up. Elena was in deep shock from what Rui told her, since before his disappearance he had not behaved so boldly with her. Elena, in a fit of rage, immediately decided that Rui should answer for his words, and she was already preparing to strike Rui. However, contrary to all Elena's expectations, Rui manages to repel her attack without receiving a scratch. Elena was perplexed by how Rui was able to stop one of her most powerful moves. Rui told Elena that she couldn't see anyone around her, and that she couldn't see how people around her were getting stronger while her skills remained the same. Then Elena only gets angrier, and she again tries to inflict at least some damage on Rui. However, despite her fast attacks, Ruyu still manages to dodge each of her blows. After this, Rui decides to use one of the techniques of the Qigong technique, during which he delivers a powerful kick to Elena right in the face. After such a strong blow, Elena fell to the ground, but even after it, she did not stop commanding Rui, telling him to pick her up. Instead, Rui just says goodbye to Elena, telling her not to get in other people's way anymore. Elena still did not stop shouting after Rui that sooner or later, she would still be with him. On the way, Ru remembers a conversation with Desterosa and Rio, in which they discussed a plan on how Rui could rescue them from the endless hell. Desterosa suggested that the first thing to do would be to find some information about the hero who imprisoned them, since only he knows how to remove the seals from them. Rui suggested that this hero must have already died, 
but Ryo said that his relatives or his family might also know how to free them from here. Then Rui decides that when he returns home, he will have to find the hero's grandchildren. Along the way, Rui decides to first find out about the hero's grandchildren from people in Escadoria, the capital of the continent. However, Rui did not know which direction the capital was located, and he decided to find a large accumulation of magic. The technique of searching for magic is more often used by demons, while people need to have a lot of magical energy to master this technique. Rui then concentrates all his power on using this magic to find large concentrations of magic that may be coming from the capital. After using it, Rui finds a large accumulation of magic, thinking that the capital is located in that direction. After Rui discovered the approximate location of the capital, he decides to use Flying Jump, one of the Qigong techniques that allows him to develop very high speed. Rui only jumped forward slightly, and he was already able to cover a very long distance in a matter of seconds. After several such intense jumps, Rui decided to take a short break. But when Rui stopped, he noticed a large line in front of him, which was moving towards the entrance to the capital. Rui was a little worried because he had never been to the capital before, and he didn't know what to expect. Finally, it was Rui's turn, and one knight demanded that Rui show his migration card. The knight realized that Rui did not have any migration card, and he demanded that Rui leave the queue. Rui was confused, because no one had told him before that he should have some kind of migration card. Rui began to worry more and more every second, while trying to somehow get out of the situation. The knight believed that Rui was going to enter the Magic Academy, but Rui did not fully understand what the knight was telling him. Then the knight told Rui to hurry up, since the entrance exam to the academy would begin very soon. Then the knight let Rui into the capital and wished him good luck in his exams. Rui was happy, and at the same time he also did not understand why that knight still let him through. Rui was in the capital for the first time in his life, and he was simply amazed at how beautiful everything was in it. Rui heard from adults that there were a lot of people living in the capital, but there were many more of them than he thought. Rui went to one of the signs so that he could familiarize himself with some of the capital's places. To the right of the sign, Rui saw a shopping area where people were selling various things in the morning. To the left was the very academy that the knight had told him about. Rui always dreamed of getting into this academy and studying there, but now he had no time for that. At first, Rui wanted to find out something about the hero's relatives in the bar, because you can always find various useful information there. But since he was still a child, he would have been quickly kicked out of there. Then Rui thinks of going to the guild, where he can get the opportunity to earn money by completing various orders, and he can also get a migration card with which he can travel to other cities and countries. After some deliberation, Rui decides to join the guild and become an adventurer. Then, an old angry woman appeared near Rui, who believed that Rui had gotten lost on the way to the academy. Then the woman grabbed Rui and forcefully dragged him towards the academy. On the way, the woman told Rui that the academy was made to directly compete with the Empire, which was becoming larger and larger every year. She also told Rui that he would have no problem passing the exam at the academy without presenting any documents. A few minutes later, they reached the very academy where entrance exams are now being held. Rui already understood that he was now in a hopeless situation, and now he had no choice but to go to the exam. On the other hand, Rui was not at all upset that he was able to get here. After that, Rui walked up to the counter, behind which was one of the teachers who was receiving new students. In the distance, Rui noticed targets floating in the air, where new students showed off their magic skills. One of the teachers told Rui that he needed to show his magical skills, where he could use absolutely any magic. Rui noticed that one girl was completely unable to hit targets with her magical abilities. Rui felt sincerely sorry for her, while the rest of the applicants laughed at her and said that she was completely inept. The next one to show off his magical skills was Rui. At first, Rui wasn't going to show his full power, but he decided to show everyone what he learned from Desterosa and Rio. At this time, the others did not understand who it was and from which village he came here. The teacher gives Rui the command to start, and Rui created a huge fireball that should destroy all the targets at once. The others were shocked by what they saw and did not understand how Rui was able to use such powerful magic. After Rui used the magic, a large gap appeared on the ground, from which a lot of smoke came out. While the others were scared by such magic, Rui was more than pleased with his result. Rui decides to ask the teacher if he managed it, but the teacher at that moment was lying on the ground unconscious. Then Rui decides to ask another teacher if he will be accepted with such skills, to which the teacher fearfully replied that he might be accepted, after which Rui was sent to the next exam. Rui was very embarrassed by the interest with which people around him were talking about him. At that moment, Yuri, one of those who also decided to enter the academy, decided to turn to Rui. Rui didn't understand what a handsome guy like Yuri wanted to know from a country boy like him. 
Rui greeted Yuri and said that he was very glad to meet them, to which Yuri reciprocated. After meeting each other, Yuri decides to immediately start communicating with Ry on Tai, since everyone here was absolutely the same. Rui was very surprised by Yuri's expressive smile, thinking to himself that girls were constantly running after Yuri. Yuri drew Rui's attention to how many unusual new students were entering the academy this year. Yuri also told Rui that he thought she would be the best among the new students, although Rui did not quite understand who Yuri was talking about. Rui decides to ask Yuri who exactly he is talking about, telling him that he only recently entered the academy. At first, Yuri thought a little, but a little later he and Rui returned to the topic of conversation. Rui wants to know from Yuri how strong she is, to which Yuri replies that she is the granddaughter of that same hero. Rui was shocked by what he heard, since he did not at all expect that the granddaughter of the hero himself would study here. Then Rui decides to ask Yuri what she looks like, which at first surprised him very much. Almost immediately, the hero's granddaughter happened to be near Rui and Yuri. As soon as she appeared, she immediately asked Rui if he was the same new student that everyone was talking about now. When Rui told the hero's granddaughter that it was him, she told him that he looked extremely pathetic. Then Yuri decides to intervene in the matter, telling her that she has no need to insult Rui. After this, Yuri introduces Rui to Charlotte Eudelia, the granddaughter of the legendary hero. Rui immediately recalls moments in his life when he admired the hero and his actions. He also thought that the Queen of Demons and the Queen of Dragons were not at all as evil as they were described in legends, but very kind creatures. Eudelia interrupted Rui's thoughts and told him that she would not let some boy just take her place at the academy. Then Yuri tells Eudelia that all the exams are already over and that there is no way to change the situation. Then Eudelia puts her hand into her chest and pulls out a white glove. After she takes out the glove, she throws the glove towards Rui and challenges him to a duel. Everyone around was in unprecedented shock that the granddaughter of the legendary hero was challenging a simple village boy. Eudelia tells Rui that if she defeats him, he will refuse to continue entering the academy. If Rui still manages to defeat Eudelia, then she will become his personal slave. Yuri tried with all his might to dissuade Rui from accepting the challenge because it would be a completely irrational decision. On the one hand, Rui thought that he did not need a slave at all. But on the other hand, he had the opportunity to learn something about the hero from Eudelia. Despite persuasion from others, Yuri Rui raises his glove and thereby accepts Eudelia's challenge to participate in a duel. A few minutes later, Rui and Eudelia were ready to begin the battle, while the rest of the students watched the whole thing. Regus, one of the teachers at the academy, was very worried about the duel, because if there were casualties among the students, he could suffer heavy punishment. Then Yuri reassured the teacher, telling him that he took full responsibility upon himself, because he knew that deep down, the teacher also wanted to know what Rui was like. However, Yuri said that the teacher should also judge everything, which at first did not suit him very much. After this, Regus comes out and dictates the rules of the duel, in which the winner will be the one whose opponent loses consciousness or surrenders on his own. The teacher also added that he could end the fight himself if he considered that one of the opponents was no longer able to continue the battle. Regus also reminded the duel participants that killing during battle is prohibited, after which Regus announced the start of the duel. Eudelia thought that if Rui surrendered as quickly as possible, the duel would end quickly. After the announcement of the start of the duel, Eudelia took out her sword, with which she was going to defeat Rui. At first, Rui was also going to get his sword, which Ryo left for him. But he remembered her words that Rui should only use his sword when there is a real threat to his life. Then Rui changes his mind about using a dragon sword in the duel, and he decided to fight the duel with his bare hands, which surprised Eudelia at first. Eudelia was already ready to strike Rui the first blow, while not forgetting to remind herself once again that she is the granddaughter of the legendary hero. After this, Eudelia ran with all her anger towards the unarmed Rui. Then Rui puts his hand forward and uses the Qigong technique, Golden Cocoon, which completely absorbed all the damage from Eudelia's blow. Eudelia was shocked by how Rui was able to deflect the blow of her sword, which can easily cut through steel. After fending off the blow, Rui says that he is neither the Demon King, nor the Dragon King, nor a hero, nor even the grandson of a hero, but that he is just an ordinary village boy. Eudelia was still shocked by how easily Rui could fend off her attack with his bare hands. The Golden Cocoon technique makes only a certain area of the wizard harder and more durable, while the Steel Cocoon technique made the entire body of the wizard hard. But at the same time, his defense was less strong than that of the Golden Cocoon. Also, the Golden Cocoon did not in any way impede the free movement of the protected limb, which made it very effective. Eudelia again tried to inflict at least some damage on Rui, 
but he was able to easily repel this attack. Eudelia did not understand how Rui could so easily fend off her blows, because she masterfully wielded a sword. Then she decides to change her strategy to use many petal blades instead of a sword, which flew towards Rui. But despite the speed and number of these blades, Rui was able to dodge each blade without any difficulty. Then Yudenlia decides to use a myriad of these blades so that they will surely hit Rui and neutralize him. The teacher thought that this was too much, and he decided to interrupt the duel, but Yuri decided to stop the teacher. Yuri drew the teacher's attention to how confident and calm Rui was behaving, which could mean that he could easily cope. Rui was surprised by how many petals were flying towards him, and he felt that he needed to use very strong magic here. Then Rui decides not to run away from the petals, but on the contrary, to run towards these petals. Then Rui makes a high jump and uses the magic technique of a wide flame, which burned all the petals flying towards him. Eudelia was in unimaginable shock at how Rui could so easily repel attacks from both sword and magic. Then Eudelia was overtaken by memories from her childhood when she trained long and hard with her father. Her father told her about the hero's mark that no one had been able to obtain, and he told her that if she trained long and hard, sooner or later she would receive such a mark, which in turn motivated her greatly. After that, a crowd of adults appeared next to her, who were touched by her in every possible way and said that she would definitely become a hero like her grandfather. Eudelia promised that she would train all the time, and that when she grew up, she would become a real hero who would protect civilians from various threats. Having collected her thoughts, Eudelia was again about to strike Rui again. Moments before the impact, Eudelia was determined to prevent Rui from taking her place at the academy. At the moment of impact, Rui again uses the Golden Cocoon Qigong technique to once again repel the entire attack. Then Rui remembered those very moments from his life when Elena mocked him in every possible way, who believed that he had absolutely no talent in mastering magic. At this moment, Rui thought that Eudelia had also had a very hard time before, and that she had devoted all her time to training to become one of the best. Then Rui decides to use another technique of the Qigong Golden Sword Grip technique, with the help of which he not only stops Eudelia's next attack, but also grabs the sword in his palm. Eudelia was very frightened by how Rui was able to grab her weapon so easily with his bare hands. After grabbing the sword, Rui prepared to use the next Meteor Fist Qigong technique, which greatly increased the power of his fist attacks. Eudelia considered that these were her last seconds of life and that she was unable to defeat Rui. However, Rui's fist manages to stop his fist a couple of inches from Eudelia's face, from which she is not harmed. Rui decided to convince Eudelia that the duel had ended in his favor and that they no longer needed to continue the battle. Then Eudelia was very frightened, and she began to cry, while not understanding how Rui could defeat her so easily. Rui was very frightened by Eudelia's state in which she was now. Then Rui noticed that no one was on them now, and then he decided to create a small dark space in which no one could notice them both. Then a large black cube appeared in front of the rest of those present, through which Rui and Eudelia were not visible. After this, Rui decides to check on Eudelia's condition and try to calm her down. A little later, Eudelia noticed that everything around had disappeared, and that she and Rui found themselves completely alone in a dark room. Rui explained to Eudelia that he created a special cube that blocked all extraneous light and extraneous sounds so that no one would see Eudelia in this form. After this, Rui immediately began to dry Eudelia, who was very frightened. Eudelia was both frightened and surprised by such concern for her, which made her very embarrassed. Eudelia decided to ask Rui why he was doing all this, despite how rudely she spoke to him. Rui just said that if someone gets into some kind of trouble, then he just goes and helps the person. Hearing this, Eudelia remembered how when she was little, she also dreamed of helping people in trouble. Eudelia thought about how she had never understood such a simple truth before. After this, she apologizes to Rui for her behavior and accepts her defeat. She also admitted that Rui is much stronger than her not only in battle and magic, but also in her soul. Rui said that Eudelia also showed her fighting skills well, and that her latest magic especially surprised him. Rui was about to remove the black cube, but Eudelia said that friends address each other as you, and that they are now friends. Rui did not object to this, and they shook hands as the black cube began to collapse. Viewers finally saw Rui and Eudelia finally get out of the large cube. After this, Eudelia told all the spectators that she was giving up and that she fully accepted Rui's victory. Everyone was shocked by such a statement from the granddaughter of the legendary hero, and Eudelia said that Rui should study at the academy instead of her. Teacher Regas only reminded Eudelia of the promise that she must fulfill if she loses. Rui remembered Eudelia's promise to become his slave, but he said that he did not need a slave at all. 
Eudelia said that she would not accept the fact that Rui refused to comply with all conditions and that she was ready to become his slave. Then Eudelia began to insist that if she lost, then she must become Rui's personal slave. After that, she grabbed Rui's hand and created a slave mark on her hand, with which Eudelia must now do whatever Rui wants her to do. Eudelia was not upset, but on the contrary, she was ready to follow all of Rui's instructions. Rui was only once again embarrassed by the fact that the granddaughter of the legendary hero had become his personal slave. After the duel, Rui and Eudelia met Yuri at the academy, who wanted to ask them about the results of their exams. Yuri said that he could not imagine before that someone from the hero's family would become someone's slave, which greatly confused and angered Eudelia. Yuri also wanted to find out from them who they are to each other now. Eudelia only said that she did not tell Rui because she believes that if she had told him earlier that she wanted to be friends with him, he would have tried to stay away from her. Rui did not understand anything, and then Yuri decides to introduce himself to Rui as Yuri von Exodoria, who was the current Prince of Escador. Rui was shocked by what he heard, since he could not even imagine that he would personally know anyone from the royal family. Then Rui decides to address Yuri as master, to which Yuri himself said that friends should not call each other master. After this, Yuri asked Rui if he had a place to stay for the night, since from his appearance it was clear that he was not from the capital. Rui said that he did not think about it at all, because he expected to resolve such issues as they appeared. Yuri said that he would try to somehow resolve the issue of Rui's place of residence. Yuri said that Rui could spend the night with him, and that he would be well taken care of there, and therefore Rui would not have to think about paying. Then Eudelia considered Yuri's generosity too suspicious, assuming that he had some reason for this. Yuri said that now there is a large shortage of population in the capital, and if thanks to students like Rui, the academy's rating increases, then students from other countries will go to the capital. Yuri also added that if Rui studies at the academy, then Yuri will support Rui in everything. Rui thought that if Yuri helped him, it would be much easier for him to get used to it, and then it would be easier for him to find the necessary information about the hero. And after such thoughts, he decides to become a student at the academy. That night, Rui spent the night in Yuri's room, and the next day he was going to look for information about the hero. As soon as Rui went outside, he saw Eudelia near the entrance, who had been waiting all morning for him to come out. Rui didn't expect to see Eudelia, and she said that she just wanted to come to Rui, so that Eudelia would not think that something was wrong, he told her that he was very glad to see her, after which her offense changed to joy. After this, Eudelia invites Rui to take a walk with her while she shows him various places. Then Rui and Eudelia walked around the capital all day, visiting various places. During the walk, Rui thought that he was now in great debt to Eudelia, and that he now wanted to free Desterosa and Rio, thereby devaluing everything that the legendary hero had done for this world. Then Rui remembered his last night with Desterosa and Rio, when he all discussed together that the hero might still be alive now. Desterosa said that since the hero was able to create a place where no one ages like the infinite, then it was quite possible for him to find a way to become virtually immortal. Then Rui said that since he locked Desterosa and Rio here, he is bad, and when he finds the hero, he will finish him off. Then Rio said that there was no way for them to kill the hero, since he was too strong for anyone to defeat. Desterosa felt that the hero couldn't just attack and imprison him and Rio here, and he probably must have some compelling reasons for this. These words did not convince Rui in any way, and he still wanted to finish off the hero, since he could not just forgive him for being here. Eudelia noticed that something was wrong with Rui, to which he replied that he was fine. Then Rui came to his senses, and he decides to find out something from Eudelia about the legendary hero, and she thought that Rui was one of her grandfather's regular fans. Eudelia said that she doesn't know very much about her grandfather, since 300 years have passed since he disappeared. Then Eudelia tells Rui that despite this, she has several family items, among which were also her grandfather's things, which Rui was very interested in. One of these items was the sword Frau Gerasos, which was used by Eudelia in a duel with Arui, and which was passed down in the hero's family from generation to generation. Rui began to look at the sword and could not take his eyes off it, because while he was looking at the sword, for some reason he simply felt good in his soul. When Eudelia handed the sword into Rui's hands, the sword began to emit unusual energy, and Rui thought that the sword was filling Rui with unusual magical power. After a few seconds, Rui returned the sword back to Eudelia, after which he felt some unusual sensation from the sword. It was getting close to night, and Rui told Eudelia that it was too late to go out and that they should both go home. At first, Rui wanted to accompany Eudelia home, but she invited him to spend the night with her. Finding themselves alone with each other, 
Rui thanks Eudelia for such a wonderful day in order to somehow dilute the suddenly appeared situation. Eudelia supported Rui and said that she would like to spend the day together sometime. At the same time, Eudelia thought that she had a unique opportunity to make Rui her. Eudelia remembered how many guys from her circle began to confess their feelings to her when they found out that she was the granddaughter of the legendary hero. Despite mutual interest in boys, Eudelia did not date these boys, since they were much weaker than her. During all this time, Rui was the only one who was finally able to surpass her. Unexpectedly for Rui, Eudelia reminded him that she was his slave. Then Eudelia said that she could do for him whatever he wanted without any exceptions. After that, Eudelia took Rui's hand and put it to her chest. Rui thought back to that very last night when Desterosa told him that even though he loved them, he shouldn't burden his fate. Desterosa told Rui that she and Rio loved him very much, but they would both be very happy if he found someone to love for the rest of his life. Rio said that among all races, only humans can have one partner, while male dragons can have several females at once. Desterosa said that male demons are also not limited to one individual, and aristocratic demons can have several dozen females at once. Rui remembered Desterosa's words that if he finds a person with whom he wants to connect his life, then he must act. Rio told Desterosa that she was the type who was constantly jealous, after which Rio and Desterosa started having a small quarrel again. At first, Rui thought that he started communicating with Eudelia, only to find out something about the hero from her. However, after the duel and walk together, he became more and more attracted to her. Then, Rui realized that Eudelia had become the very person whom he wanted to protect from danger and with whom he would live his whole life. After such thoughts, Rui decided to act, and he immediately kissed Eudelia. After a long kiss, Rui threw Eudelia onto the bed and began to take off her shirt. Rui decided not to stop at the shirt, and he decides to take off her underwear. At one point, Eudelia felt that they were rushing things too much and wanted to stop. Rui reassured Eudelia and promised her that tonight he would be as gentle as possible with her, which made her calm down a little. After that, Rui began to undress, and Eudelia was afraid that he simply would not fit in her. But Rui no longer listened to Eudelia, and he penetrated her, from which Eudelia experienced such unusual sensations for the first time. The next day, Rui and Eudelia were heading to the academy, and along the way, Eudelia kept complaining about unbearable pain. Rui suggested that she use her regeneration magic, to which Eudelia only pushed Rui and told him to think carefully about his behavior. Then Eudelia asked Rui to become her boyfriend and take full responsibility. Ultimately, Rui decided to take responsibility and agree to Elena's proposal, despite his doubts and fear of change. Of course, the girl was completely surprised by this sudden turn of events, and it made her heart beat faster than she ever expected. A stranger approached the young couple and asked a question, wondering if they were by chance applicants. With obvious confidence, the guy expressed the opinion that they were an extremely frail and defenseless couple, which prompted them to think about their vulnerability in this situation. In addition, they showed interest and asked if the girl was the granddaughter of some hero or famous person. When the stranger tried to get closer to the girl, she firmly pushed him away and warned that if he approached again, she would take extreme measures to protect herself, including even possible violence. Michael, that was the guy's name, told her with a pleading voice to refrain from such threats and hateful words. He tried to convince her of his friendliness and intention not to pose a threat. Rui suddenly felt the need to apologize to them, even though there was no clear reason for such an action. Elena felt a pleasant embarrassment when she heard the guy openly express his affection for her in front of others, and her heart began to beat faster at such unexpected sincerity. Michael didn't like the situation and decided to use his magical abilities to overcome the guy and show his strength. The main character felt puzzled about the motives of Michael, who decided to use magic in the center of the city and tried to unravel what goals could be behind this inexplicable action. Of course, he couldn't just ignore it and decided to intervene to stop the stranger and prevent the possible consequences of his magical actions. He decided to use the stone machine gun in an attempt to stop Michael and his magical actions. This decisive action yielded results. Michael flew several meters away and lost his balance, unable to stand on his feet after the force of the stone machine gun. His comrades began to worry about him and tried to calm Michael down, showing deep regret and remorse to Rui and Elena for what happened, trying to restore peace and make everything okay. The girl agreed with a smile to the guy's proposal to move on, realizing that this episode with Michael was behind her and they could continue their adventure. Since time was not on their side, they had to move more quickly and hurry, so as not to be late somewhere further along their path. So many people gathered around the building that they felt the atmosphere filled with bustle and liveliness, and they had to walk through the crowd to reach their goal. 
Elena asked the guy not to stand out among the crowd, warning that his enemies might start making fun of him because they were surrounded by rivals. When the main character learned that the results might be posted there, his determination did not allow him to stop, and he headed to the place, despite the girl's recommendation. He noticed that there were classes labeled A through E. The girl was sure that they were probably in class A. As it turned out, they were indeed found in class Z, but none of them had previously known about the existence of such a class, which added to the mystery and unpredictability of the situation. Yuri warmly greeted the couple, creating a friendly and welcoming atmosphere in this unexpected situation. Together with Yuri, there was a mysterious stranger wearing a helmet, reminiscent of the helmets of knights, which gave this meeting a mysterious and fantastic touch. As it turned out, this mysterious stranger in a helmet was Yuri's escort, and his presence added even more mystery and interest to this meeting. Having completed the welcoming gesture, they exchanged brief introductions and discussed their expectations for their quest in this new and unknown class, beginning their adventure with eager excitement. The guy introduced himself as Jason and said that his main role was to protect Yuri, which gave them an understanding of the seriousness of this mission and the need for cooperation. Yuri began to reveal that he wears a helmet to hide his true identity, and he hoped that he and the main character could maintain a good relationship despite this hiding his face. Her mood did not improve, and she continued to remain in an angry mood caused by the previous incident with Michael. Yuri only wanted to see the girl. It was for this reason that he did not share information about the class with her, trying to maintain intrigue and make the meeting more mysterious. It turned out that this class is new for this school year. Previously, students were distributed according to their academic performance, but this year in Class Z, they decided to gather students with special abilities, which aroused additional interest and questions from Rui and Elena. We can say that this is a class where talented and unique individuals have gathered, creating an atmosphere of creativity and non-standard approaches to learning. If they had been graded, they would probably have been in Class A, but their performance was so outstanding that they were placed in Class Z, reserved for students with unique abilities. Based on the decision of the management, they were sent to Class Z, taking into account their abilities and potential. The girl could not understand whether Yuri was watching them because it all looked quite suspicious and mysterious, which caused her questions and misunderstandings. For the girl, it didn't matter much whether Yuri was watching them or not because she felt confident and calm when she was next to the guy. Her running seemed too hot, and the guy politely asked her to slow down so they could move together and enjoy the moment. Jason remained confused as to the reasons why they needed to keep an eye on the pair, which made him curious and doubtful about the purpose of this mission. It turned out that this class was populated by absolute naughty people, and even Yuri found it difficult to keep them under control and keep an eye on them. Jason believed that Rui had the necessary skills and determination to meet this challenge and successfully resolve the situation in Class Z. If Yuri hopes so much for Rui, it means that he has invested a lot of hope and trust in the guy, and now Rui must live up to those expectations. His interest knew no bounds and he couldn't wait to find out what Class Z class was, ultimately expecting to unravel the mystery of this mysterious place. The guy and girl quickly changed their clothes and decided to go explore the class to learn more about its students and the characteristics of this unusual group. From the very beginning, they did not notice anything that could seem strange or unusual in this class. Rui's goal was to find true friends among the students in this class and build warm relationships, and he hoped that this would be possible despite their uniqueness and quirks. After recognizing the hero, they began to wonder if he was the one who won the duel during the exam, causing Rui to be slightly surprised and happy that his achievements were known. After a positive answer, their reaction seemed strange, as if they were ready to find out more details from the main character and were interested in his story in their own way. Elena showed a willingness to draw her sword and engage in battle if the situation took a more aggressive turn, expressing her readiness to defend herself and the main character. However, to everyone's surprise, the guy simply shook Roy's hand and expressed recognition, saying that the duel was very impressive and deserved praise. The guy began to express admiration and praise towards Rui, as if worshipping him and saying what a magnificent and skillful duelist he was. Jack spoke of his skills in explosive magic, causing amazement and interest among those present, and his talents made him quite a popular figure in Class Z. Behind Jack was a tall guy named Michael, and next to him was Alex. The introduction of everyone in the class became more informative and welcoming. Jack hoped that Rui would be able to make friends with them and find common ground, which was an important aspect for him and for the entire Z class. Having received such a warm greeting from the students of the class, Rui felt that his fears and worries were in vain, and he was ready for new acquaintances and adventures in this unusual class. The girls also showed support, 
and greeted the boys with a smile, starting to get to know them and talking to them, which created a friendly atmosphere in the class. Rui was attracted to one of the students and began a conversation with interest to learn more about him and get to know him better. Feeling that this class could bring him many interesting contacts and experiences, it turned out that this student was not in a friendly mood, but instead exhibited aggressive behavior and anger, which left Rui a little dumbfounded and unsure of his actions. The main characters felt bewildered, not understanding what could have gone wrong, and wondering if they might have made some mistake or bad experience that caused this student's aggression. Since Rui was from a village, he might not be aware of some of the city's customs or practices, which could explain his negative attitude and dissatisfaction. This was because it was forbidden to have slave beastmen in the capital, but in other major cities this practice continued, which caused discontent on the part of many beastmen and created a conflict between them and ordinary people. The main character wondered if he would ever be able to become friends with this student, despite the initial tension and conflict, and he hoped that the relationship would improve. When the girl tried to tell the guy something, his attention was focused on one of the girls in the class, which caused some misunderstanding and irritation in the girl. He couldn't help but notice that she was amazingly beautiful, as if she had come straight out of a painting, and this caught his attention and piqued his interest. Slightly stuttering, Rui greeted the girl, trying to compose himself and be polite in front of her. However, he only received a cold disregard from the girl, which left his feelings a little hurt and disappointed. Elena could not stand this behavior and was amazed at how the girl dared to ignore the guy, and this caused her indignation and bewilderment. She exhibited pretentious behavior and stated that there was simply nothing to talk about with him, which caused additional irritation and bewilderment on the part of Elena and Rui. Elena was perplexed and disappointed by such an unpleasant answer, which completely contradicted their hopes for friendly communication with the students of the class. Her nerves were already gone, and she felt very irritated ready to explode and tear the girl to pieces on the spot because of her rude and unpleasant behavior. Yuri noticed that the guy had apparently already established relationships with everyone and also added that the teacher was already heading towards them and they needed to quickly take their places. Yuri defiantly introduced himself again and greeted the guy, showing his friendliness and willingness to communicate, despite previous troubles. It was clear from the look of the main character that he felt satisfaction from the new class since from that moment his life at the academy begins, and he is ready for new challenges and adventures. One day, a teacher was explaining something to the children with great diligence, trying to convey important information and knowledge to them. The teacher explained that in this way, water magic uses moisture from the atmosphere to achieve its goals, sharing knowledge about magical processes with students. Ruby disagreed with the teacher and said that water magic was probably also capable of controlling underground waters and water sources, expressing his own vision and understanding of magical processes. Two weeks have already passed since they entered the academy, and the main characters have been actively studying magic and adapting to the new learning environment. Everyone present was amazed at how clearly and clearly the guy explained the material, and his ability to convey knowledge aroused admiration among students and teachers. When they returned from practice, they noticed that all the chairs were scattered around the classroom, which caused surprise and bewilderment among those present. It was very cruel and the children could not understand who had made such a mess and scattered chairs around the classroom, causing indignation and irritation. One of the guys wanted to ask some questions and find out what happened to understand the situation better. He decided to find the one who created this mess. He is sure that he left traces or evidence that will help solve this mystery. Oscar began using magical analysis to uncover magical clues or information that could lead him to discover the villain who was causing chaos in the classroom. This is exactly what Rui expected from Oscar, relying on his magical skills to solve the mystery and find the culprit. Oscar announced that he had these magical skills thanks to the help of the guy, which caused interest and surprise among the others. Thus, he was able to develop his analysis skills and ability to analyze more than just one table, thanks to the training and lessons that the guy gave after school. Oscar noticed a classmate's hair and shoe prints, which could be a clue to who caused the mess in the classroom. Oscar was truly impossible to fool, and his unique skills in magical analysis allowed him to reveal details that went unnoticed by others. As it turned out, the guy was expelled from the village for abusing magic, which explained his strange and hostile behavior. He rejoiced at the opportunity to use magic and realized that he could now be useful and contribute to solving the mystery of the disorder in the classroom. The guy provided information about who broke into the classroom and caused the chaos, sharing his knowledge and observations to help solve the incident. Oscar, not wanting to get involved in conflicts and fights, 
decided to stay away and not join the class that was probably going to look into the situation. Oscar could rely on his friend and assured him that he could cope without his help, expressing his trust and confidence in his abilities. At this time, Jack, Alex, and Michael were nearby, ready to support their friends and help if necessary. They all had one common goal, to catch the one who broke the rules and created chaos in the classroom, in order to restore order and restore calm in the academy. Jack asked the main character if he could start already, expressing his readiness to intervene and help investigate the incident. Kicking down the door, the boys burst into the classroom, ready to begin an investigation and find the rule breaker. The boys were confident that they could win this battle and solve the mystery of the classroom incident, trusting in their skills and their own dedication. It appears that all the suspects are planning to feign innocence and hide their involvement in the incident. A stranger approached the guys, and the main character immediately felt that he had seen him somewhere before. It seemed that he was from the aristocracy or other upper class. The main character apologized for the fact that they suddenly burst into the classroom and explained that one of the hooligans in their class disrupted the lesson, and now they are trying to find the culprit and restore order. The stranger asked if it was too early to suspect them of this, expressing doubt about their assumptions about who might have disrupted the lesson. The stranger also added that in their class, there are many students from disadvantaged families, and this can make it difficult to find the culprit and understand the situation. After these words, Jack became enraged and was ready to tear the stranger to pieces, feeling anger and defending the honor of his class and friends. Understandably, Rui realized that the stranger just wanted to anger them, and he began to think of a strategy on how to remain calm and investigate the incident intelligently and effectively. He asked Jack to trust him and rely on his decisions so that the investigation would go more smoothly and efficiently. The guy began to take something unknown out of his pocket, causing interest and anticipation among everyone present. The main characters carefully examined the hair that Oscar found for them in the classroom and began to analyze it, hoping to find any clues or traces of the culprit from it. The stranger inquired how Oscar was able to find out who the hair belonged to, expressing curiosity about the methods by which Oscar used his magical powers to determine the owner of the hair. The guy started talking about how they did a genetic analysis and compared the data with known samples to determine the owner of the hair. Then he decided to explain it briefly so that others would understand the analysis process. He announced that he used his ability, called Time Rewind, to analyze the genetic information and identify the owner of the hair. The stranger was clearly surprised and did not expect such an unusual outcome of events because the return time ability was extremely rare and powerful. As it turned out, the main characters used magic that could return time, and the hair returned to its owner's head, which surprised everyone present with its unusual magical power. In other words, it turned out that the hair belonged to a stranger, and he was involved in the incident with the throne chairs in the classroom. The stranger could not understand how this was possible, because not even all high-class magicians could use time magic, and this caused him surprise and bewilderment. The stranger pointed his wand at the boy, preparing to possibly use his magical powers in response to their discovery of his crime. The stranger admitted that he was going to purge and remove the main character from the class, implying perhaps some measures to expel or punish him. He warned everyone present that they should also prepare for the punishment or consequences of carrying out a purge that would cover the entire atmosphere of the class. The main character noticed that pointing magic wands without sufficient reason is contrary not only to the rules of the school, but also to the law of magic in general. The main character realized that in this situation, it was more of a self-defense, and now he had no need to hold back. The time has come for retribution and protection of their interests. After this, classmates began to jointly develop a strategy to prevent possible negative consequences and protect themselves and their class. The man ordered everyone to shoot, calling on them to take active action in this situation. The main character noticed that people were gathering near the class, and he decided that they needed to avoid direct blows and being hit by them. Michael made the decision to take responsibility and act independently in this situation. Michael decided to use a technique known as the wall to protect himself and his comrades from attacks. Jack confessed to Michael and said that he would take further action in preparation for dealing with the situation. Jack decided to use his powerful technique, called the bomb, in order to cope with the stranger and his threats. All the wands instantly exploded in the hands of their owners, causing chaos and panic in the classroom. This unexpected explosion, of course, was not part of their plan, and they expected an easier victory. Now the students were absolutely sure that victory was not part of their plans. The students began discussing precautions and rules for using magic to avoid such situations. Among those present was a man who was ready to deal the strongest blow to Alex. His determination and aggression could be seen in his eyes. 
He was not going to allow such an easy victory for his opponent, and instead of allowing the blow, he decisively activated the power-up in his legs. Because of this unexpected reaction, the guy was unable to hit him at all. His blow was completely useless. All subsequent attempts to harm this guy also ended in failure. His incredible agility and reaction made him untouchable for his opponents. He mocked them and noticed that they were too slow, and with such ease that one could even yawn without fear of anything. They were still unable to unravel his whereabouts, and he remained an inaccessible mystery to them. It was at this time that Alex suddenly appeared and delivered his decisive blow, which proved irresistible. And in addition, apparently he also overdid it and completely knocked out his opponents. And apparently, he not only struck, but also overestimated his strength so that the opponents were completely knocked out of action. Alex grabbed him by the throat and asked, who can now be considered bad in this situation? Under Alex's influence, he began to beg for mercy and guaranteed his readiness to fulfill any request. However, the condition was that he would have to obey not only the guy, but also everyone else, following their orders. The main character is ready to strike the decisive blow in this epic battle. The blow was so devastating that the man turned and fell to the ground, groaning in pain while his opponents were left amazed by the hero's might. The blow was so powerful that he simply pierced the wall with his body, leaving a huge hole in it and causing shock among all witnesses. Such a spectacle looked incredibly impressive and epic, forcing everyone around to applaud the hero. The hero's friends were proud to have been part of this incredible victory and to have witnessed his valor. They then raised their hands to each other to symbolize and strengthen their friendship and unity. However, when Yuri learned about the boy's feet, he was overcome with rage, and he clearly did not approve of their action, not being proud of them. Jack was busy cleaning, and this was not his first endeavor in this matter. Inside himself, he admitted that it was his own fault that things had reached this extent. Yuri tormented himself with self-recrimination for simply not being able to follow them. Their promise to not allow such situations to happen again calmed them down, and they felt the obsession release from their souls. Then the main character approached Yuri and sincerely apologized, realizing that he probably suffered because of their actions. He honestly admitted that from the very beginning, when he decided to take this step, he expected that such situations would happen quite often. Yuri's voice was very tired, as if the echo of a long and restless day. Since he was still dealing with their actions, he was unable to get a good night's sleep. Rui felt incredibly uneasy and uncomfortable as he realized that his actions had led to this situation, and now his relationship with his friend had become strained and uncomfortable. At this time, the main character noticed that everyone around him continued to train, and his own experiences seemed small compared to their determination and diligence. And inspired by their determination, he also decided to go for a walk in order to relax a little and take his mind off the unpleasant situation. Leaving the class, the main character noticed how a stranger, with a smile on his face, approached him and greeted him cordially. This unexpected gesture of goodwill bathed him in a magical light, dispelling the tension that had been hanging on behind him after an unpleasant situation. The stranger, showing interest, asked if the main character was Rui. Having apologized to the guy for his sudden appearance, the main character tried to explain that his new mood and desire to talk were the result of recent events. As it turned out, the guy's name was Madison, and he was in Class 2A, which added a new dimension to their meeting. The main character warmly shook the stranger's hand, expressing his respect for him and showing his readiness for friendly communication. Madison was just curious about what Rui looked like since there were rumors about him, and he wanted to see the guy in person. And oddly enough, these rumors turned out to be related to yesterday's incident that everyone was talking about. Madison suddenly began to approach Rui, as if they had found a common language, and their conversation became more frank and friendly. Madison felt ready to tell Rui something important and personal. With a look of trust, he made it clear that he had a story to share with him, and Rui was ready to listen. Rui listened carefully to Madison and realized that even he, being strong, realized that in this world, there will always be people even more powerful and terrible than himself. And at that time, the main character was worried about his charisma and ability to impress others. Rui sincerely and heartily thanked Madison for his honesty and warning about the powerful and scary people in this world. He felt that his new friend truly cared about his well-being and safety. However, within himself, he was well aware that there were at least two people whose power and influence exceeded his. Madison decided that he probably shouldn't have worried then, since meeting such people was unlikely, and he preferred to focus on what he had now. He then began to say goodbye and announced that it was time for him to go, leaving Rui with the thought that their meeting was unexpected and interesting. The main character noticed that Madison was indeed a very mysterious person, and his short meeting left a mystery in his soul. And suddenly, as if in a hurry somewhere, 
Madison began to say goodbye and leave the meeting place, leaving Rui with a feeling of unexplained mysteries and secrets. Rui's gaze revealed many secrets and mysteries that he may yet have to reveal. Arriving home, Rui immediately collapsed on his bed and realized that he was extremely tired after a hard day. Rui was so physically and emotionally exhausted that it was clearly a consequence of their long and tedious labor to restore the class that had been damaged. He was proud to realize that he had worked hard despite the challenges and was able to rebuild the class on his own, which filled his day with a sense of satisfaction and achievement. Rui woke up and looked around puzzled, having difficulty discerning whether it was already morning or still twilight. With a deep sense of confusion and bewilderment, Rui realized that he was surrounded by an unknown space and was away from his familiar surroundings, which caused him to feel a mixture of anxiety and surprise. However, he was sure that even if this place seemed endless and incomprehensible, his little sister and Rio would always come to the rescue and support him. Suddenly, he realized that he felt nothing, and doubts that this place could be an endless hell came over him. The girl behind her suddenly walked up to Rui and gently asked him to remain calm, as if sensing his anxiety and helplessness. She confirmed his words that this was indeed the same endless hell in which they were. Inviting Rui to sit at the table, she told him that they needed to talk and try to figure out this strange situation in which they found themselves. The guy felt a slight awkward tension and indecision, sitting at the table in this mysterious environment. Before drinking the tea that was offered to him, he wondered a little whether it was worth doing this, because the situation remained unclear and mysterious. Despite his initial doubts, Rui was pleasantly surprised to discover the exquisite taste of the tea and the warmth that enveloped him after the first sip. With a cup of tea in his hands, he couldn't help but question her identity and how they related to this strange situation. As it turned out, her name was Chris, and she was assigned to manage this endless hell, which added mystery and intrigue to their meeting. After such words, the main character instantly stood up, ready to defend, feeling an unexpected surge of tension and danger. However, she again asked him to calm down and assured him that she was not an enemy and her intentions were good. Mixed feelings of uncertainty and anxiety remained in his heart and he felt that he needed a clearer explanation of his role and purpose in this strange reality. It turned out that the reason was quite simple. The main character accidentally removed the seal from Endless Hell. This happened because in the real world he received an item from the hero, thanks to which the seal guarding the Endless Hell was removed. It is clear that the guy was shocked by what he heard because he had just found out that he had accidentally released Endless Hell, and this was a shock for him. Remembering the moment when he supported Charlotte's sword and felt some kind of power from it, it became clear to him that it was at that moment that the seal was removed, revealing endless hell. He learned that if he collects all the hero's items, the seal on endless hell will be completely removed and he will be able to return to the real world. Rui began to think that a joint effort with Charlotte could be more effective and safer than a solo search for an unknown hero whose fate he knew nothing about. He was confused, wondering why the girl who seemingly ran this place was willing to reveal information to him about how to unseal the endless hell. Chris admitted that the goal of endless hell has already been achieved, and now it seems strange to her that this hell still exists, and she decided to help Rui to rectify the situation. The guy was completely bewildered and could not understand what exactly the girl was talking about, since the information about the purpose of endless hell was unexpected for him. Rui felt even more confused and unsure of what was happening after learning that the girl had no right to reveal information about the purpose of the endless hell and he began to realize that the whole situation was actually much more complex and mysterious than it initially seemed. After sincerely asking for his forgiveness, the girl tried to explain that she was not allowed to reveal details related to the purpose of the endless hell, and that she was ready to help him find the answers together. The girl explained that the main character is not here physically, and that is why he will be able to return to the real world when he collects all the hero's items and removes the seal. It turned out that he was called to this world, so that he could gain the experience and skills necessary to complete the task of collecting the hero's items and breaking the seal from the endless hell. Thus, Rui began to understand that his role in this world became more clear, and he was ready to take on the challenge and help Chris achieve this goal, since he had the opportunity to gain the skills and experience that would be needed to complete this important task. Concentrating, Ruyu tried to think about swords, and to his surprise, he saw swords appear in front of him, ready to use. It was an indescribable feeling of power and control over the world around him. Chris, not wanting to waste time, decisively announced that they would begin training, and Rui was ready to begin learning and using his new swords. Under the influence of unknown forces, he instantly dodged the blow without any apparent explanation, causing surprise and admiration 
both for himself and for Chris, who realized that Rui had unique abilities. He was amazed by this event, as his head literally almost flew off from his amazing dodging of a blow. At the very last stage of the training, she warned that if he died in this world, he would never wake up in reality, and this gave the whole situation seriousness and importance. Chris reminded that everything they were going through was just training, and that Rui still had an exam that would test his abilities and readiness. Rui couldn't help but notice that the girl, despite her gender, was extremely strong and masterfully wielded a sword, which earned him respect and admiration. Chris noticed that the main character didn't seem to be taught how to use a sword, and decided that they had a lot of work to do to overcome this deficiency and achieve success. He may not have had any experience, but the guy already had some techniques that had been taught to him, and he was ready to use them in battle. He used the shine technique to create an instant flash of light, blinding his opponent and giving him an advantage in battle. However, from the expression on the girl's face, it was impossible to determine that she was alarmed by this reception, and she remained calm and decisive. Rui realized that he must use his intelligence and techniques to make up for the speed gap and be more effective in battle. Under the pressure of struggle and stress, his nerves could not stand it, and he decided to use his super enhancement to increase his abilities and chances of winning. Using his super boost, he unleashed a powerful blow, putting all his strength into it in an attempt to turn the tide of the battle in his favor. Rui's strength and determination impressed even Chris, and the battle became much more intense and interesting as both fighters fought for the top hand. Using his magical body, the protagonist gained additional strength and agility, which made his attacks more powerful and threatening, and he continued to fight with Chris, who also fought back. With this powerful blow, Rui was able to establish his dominance in the battle and highlight his unique abilities. Chris, despite her strength, was forced to succumb to the guy's power. Realizing that further struggle was pointless, the girl asked to stop and realized that Rui's strength lay in the fact that he was not limited to a certain form and was able to adapt to the situation. Chris, despite her defeat, quickly reacted and used her shield to deflect the guy's attack and protect herself from the consequences of the powerful blow. The main character continued to demonstrate his unique ability of adaptation and magical power, which allowed him to overcome obstacles and achieve success in battle. Chris recognized his incredible skills and decided that she should find out more about this mysterious guy. Gathering his last remnants of strength and determination, Rui prepared for the final blow, knowing that it would decide the outcome of the battle. For some unknown reason, he suddenly felt a sharp pain in his head and began to faint, which caused alarm and bewilderment in both him and Chris. There were only a couple of moments ahead, and he could have defeated the girl, but sudden frostbite stopped him on the path to victory, and he was left bewildered and with a pain in his head. Chris, however, had no intention of killing him, and his little body did its job to protect him at the moment when he was in trouble. Sakura, symbolizing beauty and renewal, could become a sign of hope and a bright future for a guy who has gone through many difficulties and trials. Chris understood that she relied on the main character because the fate of the world was in his hands, and she believed that he could cope with the difficult task that lay before them. When the guy woke up, he felt that his whole body was in great pain, probably from the effects of intense training and fighting in an endless hell. Rui noticed that there were no wounds on his body, and he began to realize that perhaps he had never physically been to the endless hell, and this was all happening in another dimension or state. The dimension cut was explained as an advanced technology mixing magic and qigong. When this technology is combined with the dimension cut, a true dimension cut is created that could explain everything that happened in the infinite hell. With an opponent who is his equal in strength, Rui realized that even if he doesn't have a weapon, he can use magic to fill in the gaps in his technique and swordsmanship, making him stronger in battle. Rui had doubts that a girl might be better than him in combat or with a sword, and this could cause some self-doubt. By focusing on training with the ball, he realized that this was the way to improve his technique and skills, and he was ready to learn and develop to become better. The inner fire and determination burned within him, and he was ready for hard work. The next day, when the boy arrived at school, he was immediately welcomed and felt part of the community, preparing for new challenges and adventures. They all had nothing special to do during recess and they decided to spend this time in a friendly conversation, discussing past events and future plans. Rui looked into the distance, his gaze rushed into the endless expanses, and suddenly his attention was attracted by the presence of someone who had already arrived. Yuri's same bodyguard, whose job it was to ensure the safety of his boss, felt surprised when the young man expressed his need for his help. With bitter sincerity in his voice, he told how he was once again kicked out of the place where he had found temporary refuge. Striving for self-improvement, the main character expressed a desire for that same bodyguard 
to teach him the art of wielding a sword. To improve the effectiveness of his training, he decided to turn to Charlotte asking for help. In this chaotic duel, where Charlotte attacked with a sword and the guy tried to defend himself, the main character felt an urgent need to learn both attack and defense in order to become a true master of the sword. With pride and determination in his eyes, the guy admitted that he would pass on the ancestral technique known as the King's Defense Sword. Thus, an exchange of knowledge and skills began, where the protagonist became a teacher in the art of magic for Charlotte, while she became his mentor in swordsmanship. This union promised them not only power and skill, but also strengthening friendship and mutual respect. He silently watched as those around him strived for excellence and could not help but notice that their zeal began to influence him, instilling his own share of inspiration and desire for self-development. Of course, Rui happily accepted this dynamic atmosphere and most likely wanted to become stronger by accepting the influence of others into his character and improving with them. Thus, they decided to apply their efforts moderately, moving towards their goals and excellence together, supporting each other along this important path. The main character lent his support to the guy in his aspirations and endeavors, standing next to him, ready to help and inspire him to achieve his goals. After some time, the main character again found himself in endless hell, where he continued his training, striving for perfection. This time his outlook was more confident, and he approached his training with more determination and self-confidence. This visible progress in his efforts encouraged not only him, but also those around him, including the girl. Their faith in his abilities became even stronger, and they continued to support him in his path to excellence. He became much better and was even able to injure a girl, which was a clear indication of his improvement and the growth of his fighting skills. She noticed that he had begun to train and realized that his persistence and determination in the process had not gone unnoticed. The main character openly admitted that he has many teachers, and he is taught by guys who have outstanding sword skills. Chris noticed that he was serious and realized that his desire to excel and achieve his goals was a real priority for him. Rui asked why his sister and Rio were not in the endless hell, expressing his concern and concern over her absence. She began to explain that she and he were on different floors of endless hell, separating them in this world, but remaining in contact. This knowledge about the second floor aroused his keen interest and desire to explore this unexplored area of infinite hell in order to learn more and perhaps meet his sister and Rio on a new level of this mysterious world. The girl was forbidden to say who exactly was on the second floor, and this rule added even more mystery and intrigue to their communication with Rui. The main character was a little upset after these words, since the hope of meeting his sister and Rio was overshadowed by the ban on disclosing information about them. Chris admitted that it looks like the guy in his world actually met the granddaughter of the main character, which caused surprise and joy among everyone. It turned out that it was Charlotte, and the main character admitted that they were friends, which added new threads of connection and understanding between them. At first she resented him, but after a duel between them, their relationship changed dramatically and she began to see him as a true friend and ally. It turns out that she is actually very lonely and strives to become stronger not only for herself, but for the sake of others. And this additional point added even more depth to the exploration of her character and motivation. Chris was sure that she lived happily, but at the same time, it was important for her to share this joy and happiness with others. So she strived to become stronger and more useful to others. The guy admitted that she also helps him with her life activities, and their interaction turned out to be mutually inspiring because they supported each other in finding their own strength and the meaning of life. Since six hours have already passed and the guy has started to become transparent, they will have to say goodbye soon, leaving behind important lessons and inspiration for future endeavors. Before he left, Chris stopped him to express her gratitude and promised to continue her journey to excellence in his absence. She asked him to beware of the Genesis sect and to be vigilant, warning him against potential dangers along his path. The girl couldn't tell him the details, but she assured him that when he solved the mysteries of the endless hell, he would definitely have to contact her and find out more about the Genesis sect. She stressed that he must be vigilant and careful, otherwise he risked being left with nothing when he revealed the secrets of the endless hell and the Genesis sect. After this important information, the guy began his journey back to his world, with the hope of future contact and a deeper understanding of the endless hell and its secrets. It was clear from the girl's facial expression that she was sincerely worried about the guy, and her concern was a reflection of their strengthened connections and friendship. At this time, a change came, and the guy and the girl, leaving hope and a promise to meet again in their hearts, separated for a while to continue their studies and adventures in their worlds. The main character was very bored without her, 
and he felt that in her absence, something important and special had left his life. Since Charlotte was busy, he needed to arrange for someone to hang out and go out to relieve his boredom and loneliness. He, feeling hungry, decided to go somewhere to eat to quench his appetite and spend time usefully. At this time, he heard that a showdown was taking place somewhere in the vicinity, and this made him be vigilant and cautious before going further. The main character immediately decided to get closer and find out what the problem was, ready to offer his help if needed. At this time, it turned out that the same angry guy from class was arguing with someone, and the situation looked tense and potentially dangerous. However, it turned out that it was Wolf, and the main character was familiar with his difficult character and tendency to conflict. The main character approached Wolf and asked what happened, showing interest in what caused the argument and conflict. The guy was asked to talk to his classmate, since he was closer to Wolf, and might be able to calm the situation and find out what happened, since it was difficult to get information from Wolf due to his anger. The atmosphere was very tense, and everyone around felt angry and dissatisfied, which created an unpleasant environment. After the man's words that it was precisely because of such aggression that he hated the sphere of people, the guy flared up in rage as this hurt him and caused a wave of emotions. Rui intervened in the conversation and asked what had happened, revealing an interest in the conflict and a desire to resolve the situation. A classmate was accused of stealing goods from a man, and this became the cause of disagreement and conflict. The guy asked me to tell him, at least in general terms, what exactly happened in order to understand the situation and possibly help resolve the conflict. The man began to say that a thief had entered his store, and he was sure that a classmate had stolen his goods, prompting these accusations. After he left, it became clear that the store window had been broken, adding an additional element of mystery and mystery to the situation. Immediately after calling the police, he himself decided to start a search, and his classmate actually had his stolen goods, which led to the resolution of the conflict and the restoration of justice. But the man didn't believe the guy could have done it alone and was confident he had help, leaving doubts about how exactly the item was returned. He wondered if this could really have been done by the guy alone or if there were some hidden aspects to the story that he hadn't noticed. The boy often heard that beastmen were accused without good reason, and this made him worried that he might be caught and accused without providing evidence of his innocence. Then the main character decided that he would find the real thief in order to clear his name and provide evidence of his innocence, promoting justice in this difficult situation. However, these words did little to calm everyone down, and the tense atmosphere remained unchanged, highlighting the complexity of the situation. Rui asked if this classmate was running fast, trying to find some evidence that could confirm or refute his guilt. Then the main character decided to use magic to help solve this mysterious situation and find the real thief. He decided to use the smoke veil to create confusion and try to hide, perhaps giving himself extra time to think and act. It is clear that they immediately disappeared from the man's line of sight, leaving him in panic and bewilderment. They tried to leave the danger zone, and Rui led the guy towards safety to warn him about the possible consequences of theft and conflict. And the man could only think about where his classmates could have disappeared, leaving him in a state of confusion and unresolved questions. The man was understandably furious after such an act, and his feelings were so agitated that he could make rash decisions in an attempt to unravel this mysterious situation. He immediately began to get angry at the men standing next to him because they could not prevent and did not see how his classmates ran away which only increased his anger and disappointment. They could not understand what to do now, faced with growing chaos and unexpected developments. They decided that they just needed to ask the Academy for help, how to seek help from competent persons to solve riddles and solve difficult situations. One of them had to go ask for help, while the second began a search to deal with the situation as effectively as possible. All this time, classmates sat on the roof and watched everything that was happening, remaining in a safe place so as not to get into the center of the conflict. At such a dizzying pace, the protagonist, like an arrow, might even attract the attention of a local group of knights, whose determination to hunt him would only increase the tense situation in which he finds himself. The guy did not fall into pessimism. On the contrary, his determination was at its best, and he strove to find the criminal as quickly as possible, filling himself with determination and hope. Wolf felt a little wary about this whole situation. He could not understand why the main characters got involved in this adventure and a certainty arose in his mind that the mysterious individual they encountered was hiding some mysterious intentions. But the guy tirelessly and persistently began to convince Wolf of the opposite, revealing his motives and conviction that this adventure would lead to solving important mysteries and saving many lives. Since he considered his classmate his true friend, he decided to assist him in this difficult matter. The guy's reaction was extremely stunning, 
since he did not expect to hear such words at all and felt sincere gratitude. He could not understand how this happened, because every day he growled at him and expressed his dissatisfaction, and now they showed gratitude to him and were ready to help. However, he still couldn't figure out what the guy's true goal was. The main character, sharing his plan, invited his partner to go to where he discovered the mysterious bottle, assuring that this could give rise to new discoveries and reveal the key mysteries of this fascinating story. However, when they arrived at the indicated place, they discovered that there were no traces or evidence left there. The guy turned to the company with an enthusiastic look and politely asked to give him this beautifully decorated bottle of wine for a while, as if he had an important plan. After receiving the bottle, he began to use magical analysis, blindingly revealing its origin and centuries-old history, as if opening a gateway to unknown worlds. The main character enthusiastically admitted that the secrets of this magic were passed on to him by a close friend, whose wisdom came from ancient texts and mystical knowledge. Despite his passion and effort, he realized that his mastery of magic had not yet reached the heights his friend had reached, and that he still had a lot of study and practice ahead of him. The main character, through the magical atmosphere, suddenly discovered something and broke the silence, inviting the assembled company to go somewhere, as if expecting an important discovery or adventure. Without explaining a word to his friend, he resolutely continued to run away, as if rushing towards something urgent, leaving him bewildered and intrigued. Wolf, carefully watching what was happening, noticed that Rui was moving at such a speed that seemed inhuman, which caused his surprise and suspicion of his friend's mysterious abilities. After these words from Wolf, the main character sped up even more, as if embodying strength and energy that defied explanation and pushed him towards an unknown goal. After some time, as if called by an incredible force, they found themselves in place, as if they had overcome time and space, waiting for what would open before them in this mysterious location. The footprints they noticed led inside the building, as if inviting them to explore the secrets hidden within its hideout. After some thought, the guy decided that in this situation it was better to return the bottle, because he felt that the upcoming exploration of this mysterious place could take a lot of time and effort. Wolf, stunned by the development of events, could not understand whether this was the very barn they were looking for, or whether another mystery had opened up before them. The main character was impatient to get inside, as if his heart was beating in unison with the secrets hiding behind these doors, and he was eager to reveal their secrets. In the midst of their intriguing exploration, Charlotte, who had been searching for them all this time without success, suddenly appeared, disrupting their moment of excitement and solving the mysteries. She admitted that she had come here for their own sake, expressing deep care and concern for their safety, and wanted to be there to help and support them in their adventures. The girl said that she used magical power to search for their traces, as if contacting the outside world in order to find friends and be there in difficult moments. True, using magical power was not an easy task for her, and she admitted that it took a lot of effort to find them in this mysterious location. Finding themselves in this unusual situation before her, they instantly thought that Charlotte had come, perhaps with the purpose of catching them or returning them to the path of safety. They breathed a sigh of relief when they received a positive response from Charlotte realizing that she was not opposing them, but on the contrary, wanted to help and support them on this mysterious journey. Today, she was invited to the royal palace to be an instructor in magic for the warriors. Then suddenly, a request came in to find them. These words clearly upset the protagonist, crushing his hopes and leaving him in a state of disappointment and misunderstanding. Wolf, not ready to give in to Charlotte so easily, felt an inner rebellion and determination to continue the research, despite all the difficulties and disappointments. However, from the girl's reaction, it was clear that she was not very serious about catching them, and perhaps even shared their desire to explore this mysterious location. Then she suddenly decided to help them completely, as if changing her original intentions, and they felt a surge of relief and support from Charlotte. After her decision to help, the main character hugged his friend tightly, feeling deep gratitude and joy that they could explore this mysterious world together. She was very embarrassed by this unexpected hug, but at the same time she felt in it the warmth and support that she had needed for a long time. Wolf decided to attract attention and began to talk animatedly, as if trying to diffuse the atmosphere and involve everyone in conversation to alleviate the awkwardness of the moment. He could not understand why the girl decided to help them, because she was the granddaughter of a hero, and her valor could suffer if she continued to help such a beastman. She asked them not to consider his words nonsense, explaining that on the contrary, abandoning people in trouble hurts her valor and her decision to help does not depend on how he is in her eyes. The guy did not hide the fact that he was slightly stunned by these words, feeling how the internal conflict began to dissipate, 
and he received support and understanding from an unexpected ally. It is not clear for what reason, but she suddenly took up her sword, as if preparing for something that might require her protection, and they were again enveloped in mystery and uncertainty. Then, feeling the growing tension, they decided to quickly end the situation, realizing that they had many challenges and mysteries ahead, and time was an important resource. Having opened the doors, they were stunned by what they saw, as if a world of wonders and secrets had opened up before them, and they were ready for new adventures and discoveries. There were a lot of expensive things there, impressive both in their wealth and elegance, as if they had entered a treasury that they had never even dreamed of. And inside it turned out to be even more spacious than Charlotte had thought. She appreciated the enormous possibilities hidden inside this place. By all appearances, the man inside was involved in shady dealings, and the guy was sure that many of the items here were stolen or acquired by dishonest means. Most likely, it was a secret warehouse of a group of thieves, where they stored looted treasures and valuables, and they found themselves in the very center of secret criminal machinations. The main character was sure that it was better to quickly inform the knights or other servants of the law about what they had discovered in order to prevent further criminal acts and restore order. And immediately after these words, gun barrels were pointed at them. They were suddenly surrounded by a threatening aura, and they realized that the situation had become even more complex and dangerous. They were surrounded by several dozen people, creating an atmosphere full of tension and hostility, and they found themselves in a conflict zone where choices and actions became decisive. A man approached them and asked if they were lost, as if trying to bring clarity to a difficult situation, and they felt a slight sense of relief, although they did not quite understand what was happening. His name was Ghoul, and he found himself the leader of this gang, managing all these people and the situation, and they realized that they were now dealing with an important player in this mysterious incident. According to their impressions, he is a fairly authoritative figure in the world of crime, which emphasized the seriousness of the situation and the need for caution in dealing with him. For some reason, the guy had doubts that this man was really the leader of the thieves, perhaps due to his unusual appearance or behavior, and this added to the mystery of the situation. He made good money from thefts, but the main character was determined not to let him make money from all this stolen property and believed that justice must prevail. He was determined to stop the thief and put an end to his illegal activities, even if it meant confronting an authority figure in the world of crime. The man suddenly felt that he seemed to have seen the main character somewhere, and his look at the young man became full of suspicion and bewilderment. Then, as if revealing some secret, he said that he was very lucky to see this young man, and his words aroused surprise and questions from everyone present. He did not think that his goal would come to him, and his attitude towards the main character became even more mysterious, leaving many unanswered questions in the air. Charlotte resolutely drew her sword and took a stance, preparing to defend herself, her determination clear despite the difficulty of the situation. Wolf was very angry that the man had stolen goods from the souvenir shops, which could expose him to suspicion and hostility from the locals, and he strongly expressed his indignation. The man couldn't even remember which gift shop he stole from, and his incredible carelessness and oversight added to the mystery of the situation. He did not deny that one of his subordinates seemed to have stolen something from there, and did not see a huge problem in this. Then he began to mock and show where all this goods were, after these words, the guy now definitely won't forgive them and will tear them to pieces on the spot. The man realized that the guy seemed to have gotten it for this act. Taunting him, he offered to become his master as an apology. Wolf was shocked by this proposal and was already at the peak of his rage. He began to explain that he actually had one rich suitor for the guy. People quickly break down psychologically, so they are short-lived. Wolf's nerves could not stand it, and he was ready to tear everyone and everything to pieces. But the main character stopped him in time and thereby prevented a fight. He was sure that they simply wanted to anger him, and he should not give in to it. He asked Charlotte to shut up because she was looking down on him. The guy asked him not to think about it because they don't think so, he's just talking nonsense. These words also slightly struck Wolf, because he had apparently never heard such a thing before. After that, he really calmed down a little and came to his senses. The main character hoped that the guy had learned his lesson and understood everything. Wolf's gaze switched to Rui's bloody fist. He admitted that he would repay the man for insulting his friend. The man ordered his subordinates to deal with the guy because he sees him as a huge problem. The excitement for the fight lit up in their eyes. In addition, the man asked not to hit Rui in the face, thereby mocking him. The man realized that if he sold it to perverts who loved cute boys, they would pay a lot for it. It sounded disgusting. But after some time, the man's gaze changed very sharply. He was scared. His subordinate's fingers were broken in every possible way. The main character used a technique called golden shell and also finger removal. 
The man was very frightened by this and could not understand who was standing in front of him. Well, the main character was calm and noticed that the man's gun began to shake. In turn, he tried with all his might to show that he didn't care and was calm. And then he completely ordered to open fire. Well, the guy had an idea of what to use to protect them. He used a move called the crane. It was the first time Wolf had ever seen such a technique. And everyone present had already run out of ammunition. And now the friends had a chance, but they had to try not to damage the stolen property. Rui easily dealt with his opponents and did not see them as a danger. And Charlotte helped him at this time, as always. She asked to leave someone for her. Their team worked really unitedly and it brought results. Wolf was stunned by the sequence of attacks, because they protect blind spots from each other. And after some time, everyone present was lying unconscious. The man had no choice but to shoot at the standing guy. Wolf turned away at that time and did not notice the bullet flying at him. In a split second, she should have approached the guy. When he already noticed this, he was very scared and did not know what to do. Rui noticed this too and realized that he needed to do something. The main character began to approach the guy in order to help him. And a split second later, screams were heard in the building and blood flowed. Wolf was informed that his arrival had long been awaited and the meeting was eagerly awaited, as if a harbinger of a long-awaited event. This time he was clearly late. Time flowed through his fingers like grains of sand in an hourglass, and the moment of meeting turned into an incredibly slow wait. The wolf, burning with curiosity, could not understand the reason for his invitation, as a mysterious invitation, unraveled only by the slow revelation of riddles. He was led outside with a seductive hint of something mysterious, like a curtain rising before a mysterious performance in the evening light. The boys sought to demonstrate to their peers such a creature as the wolf, as if lifting the curtain on an amazing and monstrous world hidden in the shadows. Then, as if in an unkind dance of fate, guns were pointed at him, creating a tense moment, like a cinematic scene where a grim turn of events awaits resolution. For some unknown reason, Wolf was told that he was lucky, as if a mysterious happiness had seeped through the secret loops of fate, granting him unexpected good fortune. And at that moment, it became clear to him that they were pursuing dishonest goals, like a secret conspiracy, and they were simply going to put him up for sale, like a commodity in a world of intrigue and betrayal. Their intention filled him with disbelief like a foggy haze, and he could not realize that their plans were so permeated with darkness that it was difficult to believe in their reality. Subjected to shock, he gradually turned his inner anxious impulse into a whirlwind of anger, like a blazing fire after the extinction of an unknown bustle. With a mocking grin, the guys asked him if he really believed that he could be friends with people, as if to undermine his confidence in his own hopes. After what happened, Wolf finally decided that he would no longer trust people, as if swearing to himself to avoid such deceptions and betrayals in the future. But suddenly, remembering how Rui saved him from a fatal bullet, he realized that even in the darkest moments there is light, reconsidering his previous beliefs with new hope. Rui justified his action by explaining that to him, the wolf is the same as everyone else, and that he does not see any obstacles in the fact that the wolf is not a person. After all, all people, like fugitives in search of their essence, just like the wolf at the moment, strive to find their true path in this labyrinth of existence. Rui simply didn't want Wolf to become something he wasn't, because he understood that Wolf might seem rough and unapproachable on the outside, but on the inside he was kind and sensitive. When meeting with teachers and peers, Wolf became the target of discrimination, and he naturally did not like being the subject of insults and misunderstandings. Charlotte instantly ran up to the guy, eager to know if his friend was okay, as if showing concern in moments of uncertainty. Having invited the couple to relax, Wolf himself decided to show them something unusual, like a mysterious performance that was supposed to capture their imagination. Finally, he decided to show them his real self, not the mask under which he walks, but his true appearance as a wolf, as if revealing his soul to them. Literally a moment later, the guy and girl witnessed the real wolf in his true appearance, as if revealing to them the secret of his true essence. Charlotte suggested that it was an atavism, giving the whole situation even more mystery and mystery, as if revealing unknown facets of not only the guy, but also nature itself. She heard about this more than once, as if revealing to her a new world of secrets and mysteries, which she had only briefly touched upon in her previous knowledge. Long ago, beast people had the amazing ability to change their appearance, as if resurrecting an ancient legend in their own incarnation. She had heard that nowadays, very few beastmen were born with such an ability, so this guy was one of those unique creatures that were legendary. All those who dared to harm the wolf deeply regretted it, for he easily surpassed their strength, as if leaving them helpless and disappointed. The bandits desperately tried to defend themselves from the guy's attack, putting all their strength into repelling his attacks, 
as if they were caught in a whirlwind of an unpredictable battle. Charlotte noticed that the wolf moved with amazing speed, like a ghostly sword flashing with lightning in the hands of an invisible warrior. Then the guy simply destroyed all the male guards, like a whirlwind of unstoppable force, sweeping away everything in its path. After this, Jackson began to call someone, as if a harbinger of new events developing an incredible intrigue. In his arsenal, as it turned out, there was an unusual ally weapon, a wise parrot as an unusual ally in strategic intrigues. Wolf was surprised to discover that Jackson had such a rare weapon, as if he had encountered an unexpected secret in his arsenal. Jackson struggled to make the parrot fly because he was deeply frightened and could not cope with the task, as if faced with unexpected difficulties. The boy could not allow the man to do this, as if he felt a deep responsibility and felt that he had the burden of protecting someone who could not protect himself. Jackson realized that he would have to sacrifice some essence or substance, as if faced with a difficult choice for the sake of the greater good. At the final stage, she only said that someone should take charge of dealing with the guy, as if challenging him and forcing himself to take responsibility for resolving the situation. The initially ordinary and vague substance began to transform into some kind of monster, as if a monster with an uncertain threat was forming from the dark depths. Both of them found themselves in a state of bewilderment from what they saw, as if they were faced with something beyond their understanding and expectations. Jackson was not surprised that the guy was so scared, as if realizing that he was faced with something terrible and incomprehensible, which led to natural fear. It was a very rare representative of slugs, since it sucked objects into itself and increased in size, as if possessing properties unique among its species. Jackson didn't want to use this for Wolf's sake, but knew that it was his fault that he himself attacked him, as if causing the need for extreme measures. Wolf felt that he needed to catch up with the man before he could strike, as if realizing that now was the moment to take decisive action. At this time, he simply stood there, not posing any threat, as if remaining calm and peaceful. But only after some time did he finally make some movement, and it became clear that he was trying to grab the wolf, as if launching a surprise attack. Fortunately, the guy easily dodged this attack, as if showing brilliant dexterity and avoiding trouble. But the unconscious stranger found himself under attack, as if he had become an unfortunate accidental participant in what was happening. Something strange was happening in this bubble. The mucus began to absorb the stranger, as if immersing him in its unusual essence, causing mysterious changes. The mucus swallowed him up, as if plunging him into the unknown depths of his inner world, leaving behind only mysterious traces of what happened. When the enemy tried to capture Rui, Charlotte managed to save him in time, as if showing accuracy and determination in protecting her friend. The monster then began to attack the others present, like a whirlwind of chaos and fear causing a storm of struggle for survival in this incredible confrontation. They then realized that this A-rank monster was extremely dangerous, as if facing a force beyond their normal perception and resistance. If the wolf remains in this barn, he will be sucked in, as if emphasizing the inevitability of danger and the monster's insistence on absorption. He needed to leave, as if he were facing a growing threat that emphasized the urgency of his actions. The guy realized that he would have to figure out how to fight such a monster, as if he were faced with a task that required special understanding and skills. After all, even experienced adventurers fight in groups with such monsters, as if emphasizing the complexity and seriousness of the situation in which the guy found himself. But Ruby asked his friends not to give up, because if he is not stopped now, it will only get worse, as if calling for decisive action in the face of the impending threat. Thanks to Charlotte's treatment, the guy was able to begin to move, as if coming to life under her caring hands and regaining his strength. Rui decided to use a technique called glaciation, as if turning to his unique abilities in the fight against the monster. And strangely enough, a real block of ice appeared around the monster, as if as a result of a magical combination of the efforts of Rui, Charlotte, and the guy, the icy appearance of the monster became more and more integral and massive, as if its essence was sealed in a cold shell. He, concentrating all his efforts, tried to get out of this ingenious trap, as if every movement became a test of will and endurance for him. To some extent, he managed to get out, and he attacked the defenseless and weak Rui at the moment, as if trying to use his instant freedom to counterattack. Charlotte couldn't just stand by and watch this. After all, she also needed to stand out, as if she was taking drastic measures to help Rui at this critical moment. Then, at some point, it happened that the monster literally swallowed the entire barn, as if devouring its walls and ceiling, leaving only traces of its greedy presence. The wolf continued to insist that they need to escape before it was too late as if sensing a growing threat in the space consumed by the monster. Well, the guy and Charlotte had a different opinion and began to fight the monster, 
as if they were determined not to give up in front of an incredible challenge that they had to overcome. The girl decided to use the heroic Sakura heart technique, as if summoning strength and determination comparable to the splendor of spring blossoms. Then, with all her determination, she was fully prepared to attack, as if preparing for an impressive and powerful charge towards the monster. She, framed by an atmosphere of mystery, conveyed that she trusted Rui with everything unspoken, expressing boundless trust and creating a whirlwind of mystery and expectation around herself. As if with a magic brushstroke, he wove into his assurances not only strong confidence, but also invisible threads of worry, creating an invisible thread that connected their hearts in an invisible dance of devotion and hope. The beast's monolith, under the power of an ice spell, disappeared under the cover of ice, like a frozen mystery, giving the landscape a dark beauty in which the unknown secrets of history are hidden. There was disbelief in the wolf's eyes, as if he was still wandering in the shadows of doubt, not believing that this giant of time and fate really lay within them. They were left behind with the ice titan only to race after Jackson, as if time was running out and their fate depended on every moment they lived. After this epic battle, Rui realized that his powers had not yet fully returned, as if the fire within him, although burning brightly, took time to flare up at full power again. Together with Charlotte, amid the echoes of the battle, they claimed that Jackson had gone far ahead, hidden in the shadows of distant horizons, as if finding him had become an impossible mission in the ocean of the night. Wolf, filled with confidence, assured that he could catch up with Jackson if he followed the scent, like a wolf scenting prey, opening the possibility of catching up with the fugitive in this hunt for the traitor. Showing an unprecedented sense of humor, the wolf asked with a smile if the guy was going to climb on him, as if playfully ignoring the shadow of uncertainty in the air. With a slight wink, Wolf noted that if the guy had decided to do this, it would have become a symbol of absolute trust, like an unusual gesture that warmed the coolness of the night with extraordinary friendship and trust. With sadness in his voice, Wolf noted that he could not yet fully trust all people, as if shadows of suspicion were still flickering in his eyes, filling his soul. Wolf, having weighed his experiences, realized that his characteristics were different from others, and this understanding accompanied him for a long time as if being an integral part of his uniqueness in this world. With trepidation in his voice, Wolf, eager to avoid the impression of favor, asked for help rather than doing them a favor, as if the mixture of vulnerability and strength in his request gave the moment special depth. Determined, Charlotte decided to take responsibility for those consumed by the slug and set out to deal with Jackson as if she were an integral part of their destiny, filled with secrets and trials. With an unexpected burst of friendship, the boy climbed onto the shoulders of his comrade, and together, they rushed forward like a whirlwind, in which strength and determination merged, filling the night with the ringing echo of their decisive procession. Using the bracelet Jackson found among the ruins of the capital, they deciphered the mysterious signs that opened the way forward for them, like a luminous thread leading through the dark labyrinths of the past. The bracelet was decorated with a large stone, and undoubtedly, it was not just a treasure. By selling it along with the mysterious bird, they could receive a significant amount, as if exchanging the mysterious for material in this game of fate. He vowed unforgiveness, deciding that by reviving his gang, he was pursuing the goal of taking revenge on them for all their troubles, as if creating the shadow of a majestic vendetta in his destiny. The wolf, like a cunning hunter, caught the scent of a person and instantly set off in pursuit, as if dancing with the wind, where the smell became a thread leading him to a hidden goal. Informed that Jackson had already left the city, Wolf shared the information like the wind carrying the news of his departure, and embodied his determination to catch up with him in the night desert. Wolf, imbued with a premonition of future events, enthusiastically looked forward to the upcoming meeting, as if in a previously unraveled chapter of his adventure novel. With the agility of a predator, he easily began to climb the wall, like a shadow, slowly and silently, enveloping himself in the invisible veil of the night hunt. In the blink of an eye, they disappeared from one side of the fence, like shadows crossing the line between light and dark, leaving behind the bustling world of the city. The wolf, standing on the new side of the city labyrinth, asked what they should do next, as if the starting point of the adventure now required a choice of direction. Rui insisted that they must attack Jackson without allowing him to escape, as if the strategy required decisive action to ensure that the moment of retaliation would not be lost. Using a refined strategy, Rui took advantage of the medium gravity, as if cunningly playing a game with gravity, to approach his goal with irresistible determination. Jackson was faced with a lack of understanding of what was happening, and the guy, enjoying the moment, mocked him, 
as if he had mastered the secrets of their power. It was time to move on to the next stage of their plan, as if the puzzle pieces of an adventure were beginning to fit together, awaiting completion. After that, everything depended on the guy, as if he was a key player in their strategy, and all eyes were directed in his direction, waiting for his next moves. He began to rise in front of them, preparing for the next jump, as if there was a tense energy in the air, and the upcoming jump promised to change the course of events. With a series of worries and expectations, he soared into the air, performing the promised jump, as if they were caught up in a wave of action, carrying them into the next episode of this night's performance. With a mocking grin, the guy said that it seemed that they had not met for a long time, as if he was playing his own game and using a cunning move in his secret plan. Jackson, in amazement, could not understand how the guy managed to get into his place, as if the mysterious meeting had shrouded them in questions, cast a mantle of opaque mystery. Jackson tried in vain to pay off the guy, but he, being a principled man, insisted that he did not need the stolen things, as if refusing temptation in favor of his principles. Even when he began to offer him a woman as compensation, Jackson was aware that the guy remained unforgiving in his beliefs, as if warning him against a dark path. With pride and confidence, the guy declared that he was not interested in all these attempts to pay off, because he already had a loved one, as if protecting his world from alien interference. In response to these words, the guy's next step was to hit the man, as if expressing his adamant unwillingness to negotiate and emphasizing his determination in the language of physical force. Rui used a technique called Golden Shell, as if revealing his mastery in battle and creating a whirlwind of brilliance and elegance in the chaos of battle. The blow was so powerful that Jackson was thrown several meters into the air, as if becoming part of a temporary dance of power, where gravity succumbed to the force of his crushing blow. Thanks to this sudden turn of events, they were given the opportunity to relax, as if the shadow of tension gave way to calm and the phase of their adventures paused for a moment. The main character politely asked the parrot if he could land, as if addressing an exotic companion with a question about the possibility of descending to Earth. Having landed, the guy immediately began to maneuver, calling his friend to look after the parrot, as if creating a picturesque picture of the interaction between the members of their difficult team. With surprise, it became clear that Wolf had managed to catch Jackson at the moment of his landing, as if by the magic of events, where dexterity and cunning wove an invisible network around the characters. The guy, evaluating every word with his eyes, asked if Rui trusted him, as if the issue of trust had become a key point in their relationship. With a smile, the main character joked that he was not entirely aware of what the guy was talking about, as if adding humor to their dialogue and softening the tension of the moment. Now all that remained was to follow Charlotte, because she still continued her mission to save the thieves, as if opening new chapters of their adventurous journey. Noticing the man's bracelet, the protagonist somehow found it familiar, like a rush of long-forgotten memories calling to the secrets of his past. The wolf, turning to his friend, began to find out if anything unusual had happened, as if closely monitoring the well-being of the main character. Very little time passed, and they found themselves next to Charlotte, as if their paths had merged in a dance of destinies and adventures, trusting the course of events. During this time, Charlotte truly helped all the victims, as if her good deeds became an integral part of their struggle for justice and well-being. It is quite natural that at this moment the knights came, as if the personification of the defenders of justice, adding a share of mystery and nobility to their conspiracy. Now they were faced with the task of proving Wolf's innocence, as if the beginning of a new stage, where truth and justice were again in the balance. This was perhaps the most difficult thing in their work, as if solving the mystery and protecting innocence required effort, will, and the combined strength of all forces. Yuri asked the knights to draw up a report on the damage caused, as if using their authority to assert the veracity of their position in a difficult situation. The guy expressed his strong indignation at what had happened, as if the fire in his eyes was burning with indignation, and his emotions spoke the language of protest and rejection. Yuri expressed contempt for the thieves, stating that even his stomach felt heavy in their presence, as if the words filled the air with condemnation and disgust. In addition, for some reason the parrot also seemed to be alarmed and did not listen, as if sharing its anxiety with others. However, in the end, the parrot seemed to have found a common language with the guy and became friends, as if taming even the most rebellious birds with its charm. Wolf suggested that, apparently, the parrot expresses a desire to become his friend, as if unraveling the language of the birds and opening a new chapter in their adventurous union. In addition, it turned out that the guy is able to understand what the parrot is talking about, thanks to his ability called atavism, as if opening up new facets of mutual understanding for them. Since the guy was more an animal than a man, 
he could somehow understand the conversations of animals, as if an animal whisper sounded in his soul, revealing the mysterious world of wild nature. The guy decided to ask the manager if he could adopt a parrot, smoothly moving from mysterious languages to practical decisions in his life. The main character could not understand why he liked this parrot so much, as if the secret of his affection for his feathered friend remained unsolved. It seemed to Wolf that he knew the reason for this affection, as if secrets flashed in his eyes, far from the gaze of everyday life. Because the wolf feels extraordinary energy and strength in the parrot, incommensurate with its tiny body, as if incredible magic and power are hidden in this feathered creature. The wolf never understood why the main character always strives to help everyone around him, as if this riddle contained the mysterious essence of his soul, full of kindness and attention to others. He may have power now, but before he was completely helpless, as if solving the riddle of the transformation from vulnerability to strength in the inexplicable story of life. Previously, he was absolutely helpless, but one day he had teachers, like wise guides, who opened the path to potential and strength for him. He learned a lot from them, and most importantly, he learned kindness and love, so he decided to become someone who would give and not take away. The guy couldn't make out what his friend was talking about, as if another secret was unfolding in front of him in their relationship, requiring attention and understanding. Thus, he now passes on his knowledge and teaches others what he was taught, as if the chain of goodness and learning continues its incredible adventure. After these words, the guy, for an unknown reason, took a strange pose, as if magically joining a ritual that only he understood, adding mystery to the air around him. As it turned out, this was the pose of an animal lover, which symbolized complete obedience, as if the guy had internally connected with the wild nature and accepted its laws. The wolf admitted that he fell in love with the guy's spirit, as if his soul was so attractive and unique that even the beast could not resist this magic. He asked the guy to make him his escort, as if declaring his willingness to devote himself to service and care as a sign of devotion. Rui, of course, immediately began to dissuade the guy, claiming that this was a bad idea, as if foreseeing the difficulties and failures associated with this strange idea of Wolf. Wolf shared that he, too, is not against just being friends with the guy, as if trying to neutralize the tension and offer a compromise solution. But in the very depths of his soul, he still wants to serve him, as if an inner desire to overcome rational considerations and follow his feelings. Rui agreed to the guy's proposal, but added that nevertheless, he would always address him as a friend, as if emphasizing that in their relationship, friendship is valued above all else. Charlotte was glad to see how the guys became friends, as if in their combined strength she saw hope for a successful resolution of all the problems and trials that faced them. She asked her friend for forgiveness, suggesting that perhaps their friendship was related to discrimination against beastmen, as if feeling responsible for a possible misunderstanding. The cannibals sought to end discrimination, but died halfway. This work should have been completed by his heirs, but unfortunately, they did not have the necessary abilities, as if revealing a new layer of complex family stories. Charlotte, wanting to end discrimination, apologizes for the misunderstandings, realizing that her ancestors, focusing on their abilities, could not change the circumstances, and now everything depends on their heirs. The guy thanked Charlotte for thinking about his race, as if these words reflected gratitude for understanding and support in the fight against bias. As he began to explain that the problem was not just Charlotte's ancestors, but that his own race was partly to blame, the guy emphasized the importance of everyone's recognition and responsibility in order to make progress in solving the problem. He said that through their conversation, he realized the need to study each other's races more deeply, as if their communication had awakened a thirst for understanding and tolerance. Thus, he expressed the belief that just as he studied his race, people should also pay more attention to the study of the beastmen, as if offering a path to mutual understanding and rapprochement between the two different worlds. Charlotte assured that she would definitely try to promote this idea, as if expressing her readiness to take an active part in the process of rapprochement and mutual understanding between different races. After all, she was the granddaughter of a hero, and for her it was an obligation to keep her word, as if a hereditary call to honor and responsibility sounded in her vest. After these words, they shook hands, as if symbolizing agreement and a common path towards creating a more harmonious and understanding world. The guy was very nervous about Jackson and was afraid that the knights would find out about him, as if the tension in his soul was reflected in concern for his safety and the secrets that could be revealed. The guy was extremely surprised when, Turning around, he noticed a stranger behind him, as if the sudden appearance of a man had introduced an unexpected element into his daily life. The boy suddenly discovered that among his friends he was known as the Thorn, 
as a mysterious symbol that permeated his being and inspired mystery, like the wind on a cold night. After this, the mysterious stranger presented Jackson's dead head, like a dark artifact, keeping unknown secrets in its lifeless eyes, slowing down the flow of time around it. The mysterious guy could not understand his appearance, and the thought slipped into his thoughts that perhaps he had come with the intention of committing suicide. The moment the guy tried to escape, his plans were ruined. A mysterious stranger easily stopped him, as if controlling his every step in this dark game of fate. In addition to his promises, the stranger mercilessly, as if torn away from his own words, actually took his own life, leaving only a shadow of the past in his cold eyes. Having already accomplished a lot of things, it seemed reasonable to him to leave the capital for a while, as if leaving behind a trail of mystery and unknown events. The mysterious stranger who left the scene of the incident, in turn, left behind a whole bunch of mysteries to which there seemed to be no answers. After a while, Wolf returned to class, as if his return gave him a new perspective and inner strength for the next stage of his journey. Rui was stunned by this idea, as if a whirlwind of unexpected thoughts rushed through his head, leaving behind a trail of mysterious excitement and unknown prospects. At that moment, Mikhail joined them, as if the unexpected arrival brought with it a fresh wind of change, filling the space with new possibilities and dynamics. Michael became dissatisfied, noticing that Rantel Wolf was silent, then said something decisively, as if intending to destroy this silent barrier. An atmosphere of discontent clearly reigned between them, as if the shadows of an unfriendly relationship were slowly spreading between them, creating a tense background in their communication. In this situation, Mikhail initiated everything that happened, as if taking on the role of a leader, directing the course of events in his direction. In response to Michael's initiative, Wolf emphatically proposed a duel, as if it were a challenge that could change the direction of their relationship, with more than just words at stake. All their classmates responded to this challenge, as if they had gathered around them to witness this unusual confrontation and decide who would emerge victorious in this duel. Charlotte came to the decision that after the duel they might feel better, and therefore there was no need to intervene, as if believing in the healing power of this confrontation to resolve the tension between them. The moment Yuri entered their circle, a determination appeared in his eyes to share something important about the bracelet, as if interrupting a moment that could change everything. Once in the spotlight, the bracelet was not stolen, but the mystery of its creation and purpose remained mysterious, as if its origins were to be revealed and unraveled. Having debunked the mystery around the bracelet, it turned out that it was an extraordinary artifact, the bracelet of the ogre himself, like an unnoticed link in the chain of his mysterious history. Yuri had difficulty accepting the fact that such an important bracelet was in front of him, as if doubting the truth of this discovery and its connection with the fate of the ogre. The girl asked to look at the bracelet from the inside. Ogre's things had a flower engraved on them. Having discovered that the bracelet was a family secret, Yuri sought to keep this information secret, as if understanding that no outsider should know about it. The main character suddenly realized that in front of him was exactly the key that was mentioned to him, like a piece of a mysterious puzzle that could reveal long-awaited secrets. At that moment, his feelings did not deceive him, and he turned out to be right, as if his intuition was leading him to the truth, revealing to him the long-awaited answer to the riddle. He politely asked to be given this bracelet for a while, as if intending to delve into its secrets and unravel its meaning. If Charlotte did not object, then Yuri expressed his agreement, as if all members of the group began to understand that this bracelet could be the key to solving many mysteries. The guy decided not to remove the seal right now, preferring to leave it untouched, as if realizing that it was better to try not to directly touch this mysterious artifact. Charlotte, blushing lightly with a slight tinge of irritation, asked why he needed the bracelet, as if looking for answers to questions that worried her. Charlotte, without showing indignation, only asked about the time when he could tell, as if striving for clarity regarding this mysterious story. He politely agreed with her proposal, as if he was ready to share this secret when the right moment came. In addition, Yuri was interested to know why the guy needed this bracelet, as if faced with another link in their common mysterious history. Late in the evening, his friend the parrot appeared to the main character, as if unexpectedly bringing a fresh portion of clues and fun into this mysterious world. Wolf claimed that this parrot had wisdom, as if bringing intelligent thoughts into its surroundings, which added mystery to the overall context of events. According to residents, this parrot also won their favor, as if bringing joy and positive emotions to their common space. Now the guy decided to start studying the bracelet, as if opening a new path to solving the mysteries he had encountered. When he put on the bracelet, a blinding light suddenly gushed around him, 
as if opening a door to a world of bright revelations and mysterious possibilities. He wondered what floor he was on this time, and perhaps he was about to face a hostile presence, as if every floor in this world could hide its own secrets and dangers. But to his surprise, after a long time, he finally discovered his sister Alice, as if meeting his loved one was an unexpected gift among the mysteries of this supernatural world. At that very moment, he was overcome with excitement, as if the meeting with his sister had severed all ties and returned to him a piece of previously lost harmony. The girl cautiously asked if Rui was really standing in front of her, as if the incredible return gave reason to wonder about the nature of this meeting. He responded positively, bringing joy to her heart, as if the confirmation of his identity meant unspeakable happiness for her at this moment of meeting. Both felt the joy of finally meeting again, as if the emotions in the arms of a long-awaited meeting were intertwined, creating a magical moment in their dissolute world. Alice was indescribably glad that they were together again, as if the happiness of being reunited with her brother had no boundaries, filling her heart with joy and warmth. The sister's friend reminded the main character that, as always, he too did not remain indifferent, as if emotions overwhelmed him, causing tears of joy or perhaps melancholy. But he could not understand what she was talking about, because she herself was also crying, as if emotions and experiences made their meeting deep and mysterious. Brother and sister continued to look at each other after a long separation, as if their glances reflected their entire history, experienced together, and now coming to life at that moment. Over a cup of tea, Rui shared his story, recounting what had happened during all this time, as if each word brought new nuances to their journey together. Her hug was so tight and strong that she literally squeezed him between her breasts, as if trying to convey all her tenderness and love in this life-giving embrace. Alice's friend, already smiling, took the guy away from the girl herself, as if this unexpected turn of events added lightness and playfulness to their meeting. Rui, in turn, even thought that at this pace he might suffocate, as if the cheerful atmosphere around him created a feeling of incredible energy and movement. She asked him if he thought she was better than Alice. Rui asked if Alice was angry because he found the girl. Alice explained with a slight smile that her words were only a cheerful manifestation of good intentions, a game of the soul aimed at playfully teasing her brother. Lucy said with a peaceful smile that she didn't get angry over little things like that, adding that she thought friendship was more important, and even shared some sage advice with Alice. In addition, Lucy noted that her joy would not be exhausted only if Alice consciously avoided such actions emphasizing her uniqueness in expressing emotions. Meeting again, Rui invited them to share their knowledge, expressing a desire to learn something new from them, thereby creating an exciting prospect for sharing experiences. Then, completely at a loss, Alice decided to amaze Rui by starting to demonstrate complex and incomprehensible techniques to him, opening up a world of unique techniques to him. Lucy, naturally, did not lag behind her friend and happily shared her amazing methods and techniques with Rui, creating an atmosphere of inspiration and exchange of experience around them. The three reunited souls were filled with joy as they realized that they were united again, sparks of satisfaction flickering in each heart, revealing the priceless treasure of friendship. Rui, immersed in the learning process and absorbing the knowledge of Alice and Lucy, gradually became transparent, as if his essence was dissolved in a stream of new ideas and skills. Concerned and surprised, the girls could not unravel the meaning of this mysterious transformation and begged Rui to explain the mystery of what was happening. Rui began to explain that his physical body was in the real world, while here, in the dimension they encountered, only his soul remained, freely moving in a whirlpool of knowledge and experience. It is thanks to this that, after six hours in an endless space filled with knowledge and trials, he returns back, overcoming the barriers between worlds to reunite his soul with his body in the real world. Now, with the understanding of the mystery of Rui and his travels between worlds, Alice comprehended the depth of what was happening and comprehended with a sense of wonder the whole amazing experience. She hugged her brother tightly, as if she wanted to embrace the entire moment, leaving his memory in her heart before he plunged back into the whirlwind of his spiritual journey. Rui, puzzled, could not understand why Alice reacted so sharply. Overcome by an unknown mixture of love and secret fear for her brother crossing the boundaries between worlds, it seemed to her as if an eternity had passed since he left, as if time and their worlds moved at different speeds, taking him on a long adventure. They simply asked him not to forget that he had both of them, maintaining a connection not only in different dimensions, but also in the deepest corners of their hearts. In parting, they only said that they would always be for him, supporting and protecting him, 
ready to be a support in a world where reality and spiritual wanderings are intertwined. The girls were left alone again, but the fire of mutual support burned in their hearts. Their connection remained unshakable even in the absence of their brother, who set off on a world of mysterious journeys. Lucy confidently predicted that they would meet again, and Alice seemed to look into the future with some doubt, not really believing in the inevitability of a reunion. The girl believed with complete confidence that Rui, despite all the difficulties and trials, would definitely overcome her trials, realizing her goals and winning in her spiritual aspirations. When travelers passed through the gates, they were asked to present their migration card, which suddenly called into question the convenience and hassle-free nature of the trip. The man, with surprise in his eyes, could not understand the reason for the unexpected request for a migration card, lost in solving the mystery that had suddenly arisen along the path of his wanderings. The knight, trying to justify himself, explained his unexpected reaction by saying that he had encountered a samurai for the first time, turning his admiring and slightly embarrassed gaze to this representative of a different military tradition. The man was curiously asked for what purpose he had set out on this journey, suddenly drawing attention to the mystery of his mission and intentions. He replied that he had a job, but emphasized that it was not just an ordinary job, leaving the nature and significance of his activities a mystery. Upon entering the classroom, Rui happily greeted everyone, spreading a positive mood around him and filling the space with his energy. His greeting was answered, bringing warmth and friendliness back into the classroom. Quietly to himself, he wished Iris good morning sending her quiet but sincere wishes that shrouded the beginning of his day in warmth and mystery. He was always intrigued by what Iris liked, and he was curious about her preferences, trying to unravel the mystery of her inner world. A classmate approached Iris to inquire about something, asked questions, and created an atmosphere of curiosity around the mysterious world of her interests and preferences. In an icy tone, she asked if the girl realized that she was being ignored, leaving a hostile tension in the air and raising questions in Iris's heart. On the contrary, the girl was glad that Iris finally spoke, experiencing positive emotional excitement from the conversation and new contact. Everyone in the class had already become friends, and only she felt a wall separating her from the others, a feeling of loneliness that she wanted to destroy. Rui looked forward to any chance to form a friendship with her, his eyes shining with determination to overcome the wall of misunderstanding and connect with her world. Rui was approached for help with homework, which provided an opportunity to connect and get to know each other through a common cause, paving the way for a potential friendship. However, it is unclear for what reasons their gazes turned into the distance, creating a moment of mysterious silence, like a hidden secret that has yet to be revealed. Lying on his desk, Rui was dying of boredom, immersed in the monotony of the learning process, dreaming of adventures and unknown worlds that could enliven his day. Charlotte asked if Rui was okay as he lay on the table, expressing concern and curiosity about his emotional state. She noticed that he simply couldn't get enough sleep lately, expressing concern for his physical and emotional well-being. Rui, meanwhile, recalled how he played with his new friend the parrot, smiling at the memories of joyful moments that brought light and rainbows into his life. At this time, he again felt a gaze on him, the same as at that moment in class, causing him incomprehensible sensations and an unknown secret. He mused that it might be an intent to kill him, sensing signs of an invisible threat that could darken his peace and quiet. Rui assured him that he was fine and that he was almost awake, trying to dispel the shadow of worry that shrouded his sudden awakening. Charlotte did not argue with the guy, taking his words on faith and showing understanding, leaving the moment without questions. The guy looked very excited while sitting in class. His emotions were boiling, filling the air with an atmosphere of mystery and expectation as if something unusual was happening in his inner world. It doesn't matter where it comes from, and no one knows from whom, but it is sure to follow, as if a mysterious turn of fate is already rushing forward, bringing with it unknown variables. Walking through the forest, the main character felt that he was being watched, as if they were following his steps, as if an invisible eye was secretly watching his every step. He immediately decided to try something, creating a mysterious moment when the decisions and actions of the main character begin to influence the course of events, enveloping everything in an atmosphere of unpredictability. Ancient hieroglyphs should have been written around him, as if he had become an accomplice to an ancient secret, the deciphering of which could change his fate and the course of events. He drew a magic circle that embodied ancient knowledge and power in action, as if calling upon the mystical forces hidden in mysterious geometry. The magic circle could create a barrier, and this is exactly what Rui wanted to do magically separating his world from outside influences and keeping his travels a secret. Taki was able to catch someone, 
He felt a sense of success, as if his magic circle had worked, creating an invisible net that caught the mysterious pursuer. Rui began to build a cage around himself, as if creating a magical amulet that would protect him from mysterious threats and allow him to unravel the secrets of his own world. To his surprise, he saw Iris standing before him inside the magical cage, as if her appearance was part of a mysterious plan that he could not predict. He could not understand where she had come from and why exactly she was in his magical cage, as if the mystery of her presence had to be solved along with the secrets of his own fate. The protagonist wondered if she would catch him, anticipating questions and doubts that cast a shadow of uncertainty on their meeting in the magical world. But he didn't want to fight her at all, revealing to her his true intentions and desire to unravel the secrets of their meeting together. Iris saw no point in answering the guy, creating a moment of confusion and mystery, as if her silence was part of a complex puzzle. She wanted to take revenge on him for her master, filling the air around her with tension and determination to change the course of events in her favor. After which she began to attack her classmate, showing determination and strength, as if she had become a merciless defender of her master in this magical battle. Well, it is an honorable thing that Rui did not allow himself to be easily offended and began to defend himself, showing restraint and determination to stand up for his essence in this unusual battle. The girl used a technique called bloodshed, embodying magical power and extraordinary energy, as if her attack came from ancient times and was aimed at releasing mysterious forces. And it really worked, and the main character lay down right under a tree nearby, submitting to the power of the bloodshed technique, as if his resistance had been overcome by extraordinary strength. Now she had avenged her master, her attack resulting in victory, creating a moment of satisfaction and triumph behind the ecstatic magical battle. Rui, on the other hand, began to smile and said that his arm still hurt, bringing a touch of irony and playfulness to the situation, as if, despite the defeat, he had not lost his sense of humor. Iris could not understand how the guy could rise, creating a new moment of mystery and mystery in this unusual story, as if he had a power that defied ordinary understanding. This time, she was serious about finishing the guy off and used the bloody scythe, unleashing a new magic move with deadly energy, as if her resolve was undeniable. Her gaze was confident and calm, as if at that moment her whole being was filled with determination and indifference, creating the image of a fearless warrior in this magical confrontation. In a split second, she began to attack her opponent, channeling her determination into magical movements, as if at that moment time had slowed down, leaving only tense air around them. Easily dodging the attack, Rui danced among the glowing shards like a virtuoso, creating a whirlwind of emotion and brilliance that remained in the memory long after this incredible moment. Noticing Rui's deft movements, Lady Iris sensed something unique about them. It was no wonder that she wanted to study this guy in more detail, because his grace was so attractive. Rui, like the wind, easily dodged the attack, noticing how Lady Iris was watching him with curiosity, and, slowing down the girl's steps, politely asked to explain who was at the origins of her charm and power, revealing the secret that had attracted his attention. Flushing with rage, she realized that the guy, by not recognizing her, had become the source of her disappointment, and the fire of rejection flared in her eyes. Developing further, it turned out that her lover, who became the object of Rui's attention, turned out to be not just a woman, but a demon queen, the embodiment of mysterious power and indomitable beauty in the world of magic. Hearing that her lover was the demon queen, Rui was momentarily in a state of slight shock, trembling in surprise at the magnificent secret that had just been revealed. Rui realized that his sister, who seemed ordinary in everyday life, had suddenly acquired a mysterious complexion, becoming a demon queen, and this discovery only increased his emotional turmoil. Iris, meeting Rui's gaze, unexpectedly declared that she felt energy from him comparable to the power of the queen, which once again excited the imagination and created a new layer of mystery in their meeting. Yes, there was truth in these words, because having lived 300 years with Alice, a piece of her strength and soul penetrated into Rui, leaving something in him that survived time and retained its mysterious essence. Having discovered that his magical power truly surpassed that of a human, Rui realized that something incomprehensible flowing through his veins, belonging to another, higher reality. She continued, promising to give only a small portion of her power to Rui, leaving the event in such a way that it would go unnoticed and unknown to ordinary people. With a smile, Iris warned that Rui had the ability to deceive others, emphasizing that his art of stealth and disguise would impress those who met him. However, she emphasized that despite his ability to deceive, she, as the Lord and Queen of Demons, does not fall for such tricks, remaining inaccessible to any tricks. 
By discovering that her magical eye had the unique ability to see magical energy, its shape and color, Iris added a new dimension to their exploration of the mysterious aspects of the magic that surrounded them. There was more to Rui's gaze than just the Demon King's magical energy. She noticed in him an unknown force capable of influencing the deepest realities and secret currents of the universe. For the first time, she didn't notice it herself. But on the day of the exams, when magic was the most important, she felt that there was something outstanding and mysterious about Ruya. Observing him closely during exams, she noticed how adept he was at using black magic, revealing the dark aspects of his inner world, which added to the mystery of his personality. Then Rui, feeling her gaze, suddenly realized at what point he had used black magic, and this inner guess filled him with mixed feelings of discovery and self-knowledge. Stunned by the flow of new information and inner discoveries, Rui experienced a slight shock when he realized that his world was full of mysteries and secrets that could hardly be revealed. He was lost in questions about who Iris was, who turned out to be the Lord and Queen of Demons, possessing so many mysterious and hidden abilities that each answer brought only new riddles. Having decided to reveal her secret to the guy, Iris was ready to meet him and tell him who she really was, opening the door to new pages of their interaction. Iris revealed that she was one of the great Demon Queen's subjects and a vampire, revealing her true nature, which was hidden from the eyes of many vampires. Rui was undoubtedly shocked by this unexpected news, and his emotions fluctuated between surprise, respect, and slight anxiety in the face of the mystery and magic that surrounded this mysterious vampire. The main character, experiencing a mixture of feelings, dared to find out if this girl was the very vampire he may have always been looking for in his soul and in the world of secrets. Iris said that due to the small number of their relatives, they are on the verge of extermination, inspiring the main character that in front of him stands not only a mysterious vampire, but also a defender of his people, fighting for survival. Having unraveled the plan of fate, Iris said that their family was saved from extermination by the guy's sister, who remained faithful to her past and her people, which added even more mystery and nobility in her eyes. Studying these new details, the main character fell into a growing shock, comprehending the depth of secrets and connections that intertwined around him, creating a web of mysterious relationships and debts. Realizing that Alice, his sister, was in hell, the main character realized that her search had become an even more difficult task, because hell is a dark and inaccessible reality. Iris finally found a guy in the capital, a man with magical abilities comparable to the Demon King, which added new nuances to their meeting and relationship. So this means that the guy who has the magical power of the Demon King is actually her real enemy and opens up a new level of complexity in their relationship. Iris began to explain that there are only two ways to take on another's magical power. The first is to gradually take it away over a long period of time. But this method is not suitable for him due to his short life. Rui naturally disagreed with this because his life was extremely long and such a slow method was not an attractive option for him. Iris claimed that his power came from his act of killing Alice which became the source of his magical power, which left him with a mixture of guilt and shock. Doubting the veracity of his words, the girl could not believe her boyfriend, because the idea that he received his magical power from the death of Alice seemed incredible to her. She decided that there was no point in asking him any more questions, since his answers caused final irritation and disappointment, leaving her in a state of dissatisfaction and misunderstanding. The readiness to tear him to pieces on the spot took possession of her, and sparks of indignation flashed in her eyes, muted by rage at the perceived betrayal and riddles that kindled the dark flame in her. Iris, using the High Cross Blood Spear, the embodiment of her power, prepared for an act of vengeance aimed at the border between light and darkness, emphasizing her determination and skill in battle. The guy did not show much nervousness, as he believed in his strength and confidence that he could overcome all difficulties and win the upcoming battle. To ensure his protection, he activated the Satanic Ray, the embodiment of dark forces, ready to answer the call and stand by his side in the fight against the powerful Iris. In the blink of an eye, the bloody spear disappeared as if it had never been there, highlighting the fickleness of magic and the unpredictability of the outcome of this unusual battle. The girl refused to believe in his real strength, since the idea of his strength was distorted in the eyes of her confused mind, unable to comprehend such magical greatness. From that moment on, she fell to her knees, faced with invincibility and shock, opening a new chapter in her understanding of the magic and power that stood before her. Iris, having overcome her own bewilderment, was unable to fully unravel the mystery of who he really was, remaining in the dark about the true nature of his power and essence. The main character began to explain that he was the same as the girl, seeking to save his queen, 
which clarified his true motives and clarified the paradoxes of their meeting in the world of magic and mysteries. Both, having finished the storm of clashes and conversations, sat down on a snag in the forest, surrounded by a silence that seemed to slowly restore balance to their relationship. The girl could not accept into her reality the truth that her queen was really alive. And this fact, like a magical blow, deserved comprehension and internal acceptance. Ready to answer for her actions, she was willing to accept whatever punishment awaited her for her actions, offering her loyalty and repentance to her queen. Instead of suggesting punishment, he suggested that they work together to save his sister, which reflected his willingness to cooperate and showed that he had a place of leniency in his heart. To console her, he promised that the issue of punishment would be resolved after they worked together to save his sister, trying to find a balance between justice and mercy. Realizing that revealing the lives of both kings could lead to war, they realized that they needed to be extremely careful and tactful to avoid additional difficulties and conflicts in a world where politics and forces could throw everything into chaos. At this point, the protagonist realized that revealing this information would make it difficult to seek help from anyone else, as it would raise questions of travel and loyalty in the face of potential conflict. However, this did not mean that everyone around them would automatically become enemies. There were those who could understand the difficult circumstances and remain neutral in this situation. As it turned out, all this time other vampires were watching them from afar, which created additional layers of intrigue and uncertainty in their already established history. A man named Bruno appeared before the couple, suddenly intervening in their destinies and introducing new elements into an already confusing scenario. Bruno said that even after 300 years, the Demon King remains the only master for this couple, instilling in them that the bonds of the past cannot be easily broken. The man wasted no time and immediately asked the guy to make them his subjects, presenting them with difficult choices and trials. Bruno admitted that before this they had no idea, but after 300 long years, they finally met the bridge to the Demon King, creating a new twist in the plot of their lives. Bruno revealed to them that Rui was their last hope, the key to solving the mysteries and to their survival in a complex game of power and magic. To the surprise of everyone, the guy easily agreed to their proposal, as if he had awakened in him the confidence that this path would lead to new discoveries and opportunities. Iris, feeling responsible for the noise of her companions, asked the guy for forgiveness, trying to remain calm and resolve the misunderstanding that arose due to their sudden appearance. She explained that all of her partners were just deliriously happy, somehow losing control and having an unexpected effect on those around them. The main character was also glad that he had more friends, and in this whirlwind of events he found some joy and support in his journey. The girl sincerely admitted that she hopes for further cooperation with the guy, expressing her readiness to cooperate and develop their relationship. After all the incidents, the guy decided to rest a little, giving himself the opportunity to think about what happened and look at the future from a new perspective. Rui, who remembered in his dream that his room smelled very delicious, woke up with a feeling of mystery and mystery that approached him again. When he finally realized that there was someone else in the room instead of him, he fell into a slight shock, not expecting such a turn of events, which added a new element of mystery to his adventure. In front of him, he saw a girl standing and preparing food, creating an atmosphere of warmth and comfort in the room, which caused him amazement and an incredible feeling of surprise. On the threshold of a spring morning, when the rays of the sun gently hugged the earth, Iris greeted a mysterious guy whose gaze was so deep that words seemed superfluous in their invisible conversation. With a look full of tenderness, Iris told the guy about her culinary plans, promising him breakfast, like a magical symphony of flavors, and asked him to wait, leading him into a world of anticipation. The main character was curious about what Iris was doing in his room, creating a mysterious atmosphere filled with rumors of mysterious secrets and magic that he did not yet know about. Rui is left waiting for an explanation of how the sorceress Iris entered his world, like a mysterious star falling from the heavens to illuminate the path to unexpected enchantments. Iris explained with a slight smile that she was destined to be his assistant, as if fate had long ago decided that their paths would intertwine to create a unique saga in their shared life. Iris handed him her creation on a plate as a gift, and warmly admitted that she had invested not only skill, but also all her love into this breakfast. When you look at the table, Iris's breakfast truly looks delicious. Bright colors, delicious aroma, and a rich variety of dishes create the feeling of a magical morning feast. The main character, enjoying a magnificent breakfast, sincerely thanked Iris for this banquet, in which every taste, like a note of melody, sounded juicy and memorable. When he finally decided to try something with his own hands, the main character realized how deliciously he could cook, 
weaving a piece of his inner warmth into every culinary masterpiece. In the atmosphere of the class, the girl decided to reintroduce herself, as if revealing her story in new shades, causing a mysterious stir among her classmates. This time she introduced herself as Ruyu, resurrected and whole again, as if gently mended by the magic of time and fate, ready to weave new stories with her class. Of course, everyone in the class was amazed by this unexpected news, and a look of amazement flashed in their eyes, as if opening a new chapter of the mysterious journey with Ruyu. And among the surprised looks, Charlotte stood out with her discontent, as if there was disharmony in her heart caused by the unexpected turn of events in the class. With her appearance and facial expression, Charlotte literally conveyed to everyone that she was deeply dissatisfied with the current situation, as if her internal rebellion was broadcast to the whole class. Charlotte, with a demanding, urgent air, demanded an immediate explanation from her boyfriend, as if demanding clarity in the foggy web of mysterious events unfolding in their classroom. In a whirlwind of excitement and uncertainty, Iris intervened for an unknown reason, deciding to hug the guy, as if eclipsing the moment and diffusing the tension that had gripped the class. Rui did his best to reconcile Charlotte and Iris, as if protecting them from unnecessary disagreements and tensions that could cloud the air in the classroom. After some time, they finally calmed down, found a common language and sat in the classroom, like the only harmony in the world, after a storm of uncertainty. The guy decided that what was still ahead, written on the board, was already important, and peered into the next chapter as if into a riddle ready to unfold before him. The teacher stood in front of the class, arguing that it was not the race that was important, but those who overcame the wall of strength, receiving a special mark, as if drawing attention to the strength of the inner spirit, capable of overcoming any barrier. When its owner becomes stronger, it transforms into a golden royal mark, and a special royal mark also appears next to it, as if symbolizing the highest level of strength and wisdom. When the teacher asked who knew anything about this royal mark, one of the boys energetically raised his hand, as if ready to reveal the secrets he had learned in his quest. He began to explain that when you think of a special royal mark, what comes to mind is the Dragon King and the Demon King, two monarchs who are completely different from each other in nature. As Demon Kings, they become the embodiment of brutal power, their power piercing the darkness and causing trembling in the hearts of those who dare cross their path. In a martial arts tournament, participants will fight the previous Demon King, and the winner will join the ranks of the elite to become the next lord thereby passing on the title of a demon with outstanding magical power. Of course, in this fascinating story, Iris saw her destiny reflected, as if in a mirror, where magic and adventure are closely intertwined with her own story. Unlike demons, dragon kings are born with the mark of a king, inherited from their royal family. From this moment on, they are destined to become dragon lords, but carry the burden of this title from birth. The teacher announced that the next step would be practice, but emphasized that this time, their mentor would be a different teacher, as if making a mysterious change in the class routine. Everyone was startled by the news that they would now have a teacher with an overall grade, as if the sudden appearance of this mysterious teacher caused surprise and excitement in the class. Rui realized that he now had ample opportunities to gain new knowledge and experience, as if the upcoming training under the guidance of a teacher with a general assessment promised to be exciting and useful. The teacher asked if they were Lagos' students as if hinting at his connection with a mysterious and influential educational institution. The man introduced himself as a traveling swordsman named Kojiro and announced that he would be teaching them for a while, as if bringing a dose of mystery and adventure to the class. Charlotte, full of curiosity, wondered how powerful this man was, as if his power held secrets that could captivate the imagination. The man invited them to fight him if they wanted to find out how strong he was, as if challenging him to a duel to reveal his true strength and skill to them. The entire class was eager to meet such a great master in battle, as if the flames of passion and excitement were burning in their hearts, creating an atmosphere of excitement and anticipation. The wolf, with a burning thirst for battle, resolutely expressed his desire to fight first, as if he was ready to accept the challenge and show his skills in front of the great master. Kojiro announced that Wolf and Michael could attack him together, as if giving them a unique opportunity to test their strength in an alliance against the great swordmaster. He then unsheathed his sword, as if unraveling the mystery hidden within the blade, and prepared his eyes for the coming battle. The man decided to shake their confidence and asked if they were afraid of the possibility of losing together, as if challenging their determination and fortitude. Their dissatisfaction grew as the man did not seem to take them seriously, as if forcing them to prove their strength even more forcefully. Kojiro noticed the strong spirit in them and wondered what would come of this struggle, 
as if seeing in their determination and energy the potential for something unexpected and great. He then announced that he was ready to fight, a glimmer of determination and experience seeming to flash in his eyes, ready to test his strength. Next, the man pushed off from the floor, as if flying into the air, and in his movements one could already read the grace of an experienced warrior, ready for battle. The wolf didn't even have time to react as the swordmaster approached him like a shadow, silently and efficiently, creating the feeling that the battle had begun even before the first blow. Wolf's strike, compared to Swordmaster Kojiro's, seemed surprisingly slow, as if time had slowed down, highlighting the gap in skill and experience. Michael could not afford to lose this battle, as if his determination was filled with a burning desire to overcome the challenge and prove his strength. He then used a technique called Bomb, as if suddenly revealing his arsenal of techniques that could bring surprise to battle. By this point, the man had already admitted that the situation had become a little dangerous, as if the internal fire of their passions was fueling the fight to the limit of tension. They were furious when they saw that even a few blows did not reach their target, as if anger and disappointment ignited the flame of determination within them. By the way, now he is preparing for a new attack, as if the moment of truth is approaching again, and they are ready to face unknown challenges. Wolf gave him advice to bite his tongue during a fight, as if trying to tactfully emphasize the need for silence at this moment, so as not to divulge his plans. Kojiro easily dodged the guy's attack. Grace and skill seemed to appear in his movements, making it clear that for him, such attacks were just an easy stage of testing. And then, with ease and skill, he threw the wolf away from himself several meters, as if demonstrating superiority and control in this fight. Mikhail could not give up, because this would mean that his dignity would suffer. He stood resolutely, ready to accept the challenge and continue the fight. He was ready to use his strongest magic, as in the exciting moment when he called upon his inner strength for the final decisive attack. Michael was slightly surprised that the man didn't try to defend himself, but decided that if he did, he would try to attack harder. The guy decided to use his bomb of the longest range, as if creating a vortex of energy that would absorb everyone around in a vortex of its power. But Kojiro still continued to stand motionless, as if his equanimity and steadfastness were a strong shield from the approaching whirlwind of magic. After a while, a smile appeared on his face, and he was ready to strike, as if his gaze contained wisdom and confidence in the upcoming action. And it was at that moment that he did what he had in mind, as if the moment had exploded with a powerful blow, leaving behind only an echo. Mikhail could not believe what was happening, as if the world around him was distorted, reflecting the improbability and unexpectedness of what had happened. The man asked if they could continue, as if the inner determination and passion of battle had now reached a new level, making them want to go further. But Mikhail lost the strength and desire to continue. He realized that he had lost, and in the end, gave up, as if admitting defeat to the strength of an experienced opponent. Everyone present was shocked that this man had defeated them so easily, as if his skill had pierced their expectations and caused uncontrollable admiration. Rui was confident that now, after this fight, he would become a better person, as if in every defeat he saw an opportunity for his own growth and improvement. The main character took the sword in his hands, as if feeling the weight of the weapon, preparing for the next test that will take his skills to the next level. The man noticed that the main character had again tensed his shoulders too much, and advised him to move the weight lower, as if sharing his experience and suggesting how to improve the technique. The man admitted that before he was a nobody, but for a clearer understanding he added that now he is confident in his abilities and knows who he really is. His perseverance left a mark on him as a mark of achievement, showing his journey and efforts to become someone important. The man decided that his upcoming task would be to train the prince, as if a new chapter in their shared history had opened before him, full of lessons and discoveries. James stated that he personally trains the prince, and the man does not need it, as if his words convey confidence in his abilities and responsibility for training the heir. There was clearly tension between them, as if uncertainty and dissatisfaction were in the air, creating an atmosphere of intransigence. The guy said that it was his duty, and he could not do otherwise, as if emphasizing his devotion and determination in fulfilling his duties. But Yuri said that the guy shouldn't worry. Kojiro no longer interfered with all this. When the man asked if anyone else wanted it, Michael and Wolf immediately extended their hands to him. James didn't think the man was bad, but he couldn't let others get close to the prince without doing something special. Yuri was glad that he had such a guard. Rui realized that they had a really strong connection. The main character said that James will teach him today. Nevertheless, Kojiro suggested starting training. Rui was clearly alarmed. He didn't look the best. Something was very bothering him, and he wasn't doing a good job of hiding it. 
He could not understand how such a situation could happen. He was sure that this should never even happen. Charlotte couldn't understand why Rui always goes with him and trusts him. It was clear to her from the very beginning that this was a bad idea. Iris realized that she should be with the main character and should also think about my rebellious behavior. She still didn't have enough to ruin everything for the master. Usually Wolf was also with them, but this time it was an exception. The main character was asked how he was doing. The same stranger with whom he had met when named Frederick appeared in front of the guy. Rui heard that Frederick had gotten into some kind of squabble again. This was clearly not a good sign for him. Frederick asked the main character who it was next to him. He introduced his girlfriend Charlotte and his girlfriend Iris. Frederick noticed that they were very cheerful. The guy said that he had information that Rui would like. As it turned out, Frederick found a dungeon nearby, not far from them. And the main character really became interested after hearing it. But the girl, on the contrary, somehow became wary after that. Frederick decided to tell this information to Rui because the ruins there could have a connection with the hero whom the guy was working so hard on. Rui's expression instantly changed. He was ready to plunge into this headlong. Frederick told the guy that he was glad that he was able to interest Rui. He found the entrance there, but there is a rather strong seal on it. So far, no one has entered it, and there is also such a template on that seal. The template really had an unusual shape, and more specifically, the shape of a petal or flower. Surprisingly, Charlotte had the exact same symbol on her sword as on this template. As it turned out, this was the family mark of the family of heroes. It was not simple, but truly legendary and meaningful. So there was a high probability that this dungeon had some kind of connection with the hero, which could play into the hands of the main character. A girl named Kazak was very interested in what awaited them for the treasure inside the dungeon. Frederick noticed that the girl had a rather unusual manner of speech, and in addition asked where she was from. Kazakh woman was born and raised in Cuba, Senpai. Now the guy understood where she got such a dialect from. Charlotte couldn't understand why Wolf didn't go with them today. But as it turned out, today he's training with Michael. After the fight with Kojiro, the two of them began to train very hard and diligently, which was to bear fruit in the future. Just at that moment, Rui noticed Kojiro sitting nearby, whom he remembered a couple of seconds ago. It's clear that Rui had a bunch of questions, and one of them was about what the teacher forgot here. The man admitted that he was told that effective medicinal herbs grow here, so he was looking for them. The guy admitted that he was not here because they were actually going to see what the dungeon was up ahead. Kojiro warned the students that this could be dangerous, especially since this dungeon is new, and it is unknown what kind of monsters and traps are there. Rui assured Kojiro that they were not going to play there, and if it was dangerous, they would immediately leave the dungeon. But no matter what, in any case they need to go there no matter what, a lot of things depend on it. Kojiro will agree to this only if they take him with them so that he can look after them and help if something happens. Kojiro provided the children with a homemade regeneration potion that works on scrapes and bruises. But still, they must be extremely careful on this expedition, because the potion will not be able to save them from final death if something happens. Rui was disturbed by how kind the teacher was to them throughout the whole time, especially at this moment in time. Now they were clearly ready to begin exploring the dungeon, which was fraught with a lot of mysteries and treasures. After some relatively short time, they finally came to the dungeon. It's not that this was a new dungeon, the ruins had always been here, but Frederick thought that they had been plundered. But about a week ago, I accidentally found the entrance downstairs, which served as the discovery of this mysterious dungeon. Near the dungeon, there was a group of people consisting of five people. They were diligently trying to find something, but at the moment they were resting. Kazaka shared her opinion that this group of people seemed unpleasant, and she would not particularly want to be around them for a long time. The gaze of the tired men immediately fell on the girl, and indeed their appearance and gaze were not the most pleasant, very angry and cold-blooded. They rudely asked what they needed and why they came here. The men thought that someone had already arrived, but it turned out that they were just children. This clearly made them laugh. The next people they turned to were Charlotte and Iris. They told them that it was dangerous here, and it was better for them not to be here. Otherwise, the consequences could be dire. If they walk here, the bad adults will catch them. This behavior made Charlotte very angry. Although she did not show the full aspect of her emotions, you could still tell that she was unhappy with it. Iris even said that if they want to flirt, they should first start with taking care of themselves, because their behavior was disgusting. The man was speechless after such words. He clearly did not expect to hear this from the school students. They hoped that they would be scared of them and immediately run away. The man instantly became furious and even pulled out a knife, saying that the girls would regret not taking him seriously. For unknown reasons, he decided to start with Rui, then swung at the guy and was ready to strike. It is clear that Rui easily dodged this attack and it did not cause him any harm. 
Then the main character began to attack himself in order to show that the man has no right to conduct a dialogue with them like that. Strangely enough, in a split second the man simply lay on the ground unconscious after such a blow from the guy. The men's partners could not understand at all what these children were allowing themselves to do and were also ready to show them their place. Frederick realized that it looked like the three wouldn't get inside so quickly and something had to be done to speed up this process. But everyone knew how Frederick loved fun, so this fight had to be memorable and colorful. But the men didn't care about the threats of Frederick and the others because there were more of them, and he saw this as their advantage. Sometimes you need to prove yourself like Senpai. Frederick created a clay creature or a magic doll. In any case, this was a bad sign for the men, because now they certainly had no chance of winning the dungeon. This creature had a truly bewitching appearance. With its mere appearance, it could scare off many pseudo-heroes, like in this case, men. Already trembling with fear, the man told the others not to dare to retreat, because they must stand to the end, no matter what happens. The man even managed to hit the creature and slightly pierce its thick ball of clay. But the problem was that after such a blow, he simply could not reach his weapon. Frederick gave the command to the golem to begin battles in order to quickly move on to the dungeon, after which the golem delivered an incredible blow with such force that the earth shook after it. Then the partners saw their friend already unconscious, lying on the floor straight, like that impudent man who was in a similar situation. In a mysterious voice, someone told Ruyu and Iris not to move. Otherwise, unexpected things might happen to everyone. Turning around, they saw in front of them a man who was holding a knife right in front of the Kazakh's throat. He pathetically asked whether they knew what would happen if they moved. He asked them again. Only this time he raised his tone or whether they understood what was happening. And just after these words, not a trace remained of the man's sword. It is unclear who, and it is unclear how his sword was simply cut in half, which radically changed the whole situation. As it turned out, it was the work of Kazakh. Because of the noise, her baby woke up. This baby was like an abnormally sized praying mantis, which instantly attacked the stranger. The insect immediately began to attack the man in order to protect the girl. The Kazakh woman immediately began to apologize to her friend and said that they were already finishing. Frederick was not at all aware of the existence of this man, and next time he would have to ask permission to look at him and find out more. The men decided to attack the opponents, relying on numerical superiority, and their only argument was that there were many of them, and there was only one opponent. The girl decided that since one of them woke up, she needed to wake up the others. Suddenly, a multitude of abnormally huge insects appeared, and their origins remained a mystery, but now their numbers were strikingly equal. The man was instantly frightened by what he saw, and this seemed quite natural, given the strangeness of what was happening. Stunned by the inexplicable, the man felt instant fear. With gratitude in his heart, the Kazakh began to warmly express his gratitude to his friends for the help they provided, pouring words into their contributions to his life with warmth and sincerity. Charlotte and Iris, noticing the main character, immediately began to find out if everything was okay with him, showing concern and keen interest in his well-being. The guy, rejoicing at the victory over his enemies, realized that it was important that they did not remember them, and now he had to do everything possible to erase his trace from their memory. The main character suddenly began to use an unknown technique, shrouding his actions in an aura of mystery and causing interest and surprise among those around him. As it turned out, this was what his teachers had taught him, and he now applied what he had learned with confidence and skill. By channeling electricity through his head, the hero discovered that he could manipulate memories, effectively erasing parts of the past and leaving behind traces of uncertainty. Waking up, the man was surprised to find that he did not recognize any of them, and a blank sheet opened in his memory, as if the pages of memories had been erased. After some time, they found themselves in the jungle, and the place itself seemed truly mysterious, as if nature itself kept its secrets and sacraments here. Just a few seconds later, the mysterious seal that Frederick had spoken about appeared in front of them, as if the prophetic moment of their adventure had come true. Moreover, this seal proved to be extremely durable, which only increased the difficulty before them and added new puzzles to their already difficult task. Frederick wondered if he could ask Charlotte for a small favor, revealing the hope of her friendly assistance on this mysterious journey. It is unclear why the main character suddenly grabbed Charlotte's hand, as if trying to dissuade her from something or warn her from an invisible danger. Rui asked Charlotte not to overwork herself if she was doing it for his sake, and resolutely began to investigate whether it was possible to somehow remove the mysterious seal in question. The girl, of course, was outraged by this guy's reaction expressing her dissatisfaction and misunderstanding in response to Rui's sudden appeal. Thanking Rui for his care, she noted that his attention turns out to be important not only for her, 
but also for her own well-being. She also wanted to know what her ancestor was like and to see with her own eyes the history that formed the basis of her own origins. That is why she has nothing to fear. She strives to reveal the secrets of her past and moves forward with confidence, eliminating fear from the equation. Charlotte then began the process of removing the mysterious seal, setting before her an amazing path to uncovering secrets and reconnecting with the past. After some time, he managed to achieve a positive result, and that mysterious seal was finally successfully removed, opening up new horizons and secrets for them. At this time, Frederick smiled widely, confident that Charlotte would cope with the task and completely believing in her, supporting her until the very end. Although there was nothing special inside, it was thanks to the hero's granddaughter that success was achieved in removing the seal, otherwise all efforts could have been in vain. The protagonist's gaze faded, and for reasons unclear, he was called out and ordered to stand, creating a mysterious moment in his own story. Turning around, he noticed three strangers standing in front of him, creating a sudden tension and mystery in the air. There were now many more people in the jungle than expected, creating an environment that none of them had anticipated. The guy asked permission to join them in the dungeon, expressing a desire to go through unforeseen trials and secrets that were hidden in these mysterious places. Rui wondered who they were, as he could not allow them to join without understanding their identity and goals in this mysterious place. After apologizing, the guy explained that he did not want to scare them, introducing himself as Max, the leader of a group called the Jackal, making excuses for their sudden appearance in front of Rui. The girl with blue hair was named Jima, and she was a thief. With a wave of her hand, she expressed pleasure at meeting her, adding that it was nice to meet you. The third girl turned out to be Mal. Despite her status as a newcomer, she was a magician, which added interest to this unpredictable group. Max reassured them, telling them not to be afraid, since they were only at the very bottom of their lowest rank group, urging them not to judge by first impressions. Realizing that they couldn't do it alone, they decided to ask Rui if they could help them on their difficult journey by revealing their own purpose and motivation. It turned out that they were quietly watching their fight, and emerging from the shadows, Max apologized for not being able to intervene and help them at that moment. Charlotte asked if there were any advantages to them joining and helping them, finding out how they could benefit from this alliance. Max began to explain that despite their weakness, they had a lot of experience in the jungle and knew how to discover traps, treasures, and secret passages, which their new acquaintances did not know how to do. Indeed, it was true that they did not know at all how to handle traps, find treasures, and discover hidden passages in the jungle. The company decided to discuss all aspects of the situation and make a collective decision on how to move forward with this group and what steps to take in their journey together. Max suggested that if they couldn't come to a decision, they could look at the magic items they had, hoping it might shed some light on next steps. The guy pulled out the Ring of Charge, which absorbs the magical power of the one who puts it on and stores this energy in himself. Rui's heart was touched by this magical item, and it was clear to him that this treasure would be useful to him in future adventures. As it turns out, the ring drained Max's magical power, but released some that didn't enter his inner sphere, creating an interesting twist on the use of this magical item. The next item was the Medal of Body Change, which, when placed around the neck, promised to protect against any attack, adding a new element of security to the collection of magical artifacts. Kazakh was not entirely happy about this because this pendant broke from a light attack. After Max suggested the next item, the main character broke down and gave them permission to join them on their difficult journey. The group was delighted with such news, because now they had a chance to survive in this dangerous dungeon with the support of experienced comrades. Charlotte wasn't sure that everything would be fine and was a little nervous about it, keeping a cautious optimism in her heart. After this, the entire group, now united, went deep into the dungeon, ready for the new adventures and challenges that awaited them. Max warned his allies that if they faced a strong enemy, they had better run away creating a strategy to ensure their safety in difficult situations. As it turns out, the group's true intention was to take all the treasure for themselves, raising questions about trust and the consistency of their journey together. Having caught up with the main character, Max said that he had decided to talk about the jungle, revealing to them more information about the place and possible dangers. It's better to be careful. There must be a trap in such a corridor, for example, a copy emerging from the floor or an arrow. Just as Max was talking about the button in the floor, Rui unwittingly stepped on it, creating a tense moment and raising questions about following the warnings. However, now everyone clearly understood what Max warned about, looking at what happened with some puzzlement. Within a split second, a huge block of stone appeared above the people's heads, creating a shadow of fear and forcing them to quickly react to possible danger. 
the main character undoubtedly felt guilty at this moment, realizing that it was because of him that all these events were developing in this direction. The main character turned to Max with a request to take action, because it was for such situations that they brought them into their group to solve such problems. Max instructed Mala to take the lead since she was a mage, emphasizing her abilities in magic and the need to use them in this situation. The girl conjured a medium magic arrow and fired it straight towards the huge stone, quickly reacting to the threat and trying to nullify the potential danger. Max slowly realized that in front of him was a stone devoid of magical power, and that is why the girl's spell remained ineffective, like a fruitless plan doomed to futility. Max realized that in front of him was a stone devoid of magical power, explaining why the girl's spell did not work, remembering how the golden adventurer cut a similar stone. Hearing that the stone could not be broken with an ordinary stone, the main character flared up with enthusiasm and instantly ran towards it, sweeping away obstacles in his path. Rui, after weighing the power of his meteor fist technique, decided to use it to break the mysterious stone, embodying power and determination in the act. The jackal group marveled to see how the guy actually managed to break that mysterious stone, joyfully welcoming success and absorbing the energy of his victory. Iris carefully asked the guy to show more reason in such situations, reminding him of the possible dangers and risks that could lie in wait for him along the way. I have not yet encountered many different traps and obstacles on my way. Sometimes they faced situations where they needed to work together to overcome difficulties. Frederick noticed that they had already come a long way, but still had not discovered any treasure, causing him some concern. The main character said that there was an additional path deeper and suggested continuing research along this route. Maximum understanding may come when they discover a way out for themselves, or they may be able to invent a cunning plan that will help deceive everyone around them. Of course, he felt deep gratitude for the good fortune of meeting such distinguished comrades on this strange journey, finding that vast spaces were opening up in places where they had not previously penetrated. The protagonist assumed that they were probably in the depths of the dungeon. Rui's gaze deepened into the distance, and his expression suddenly changed, acquiring a hint of fear and fear. Not seeing the slightest hint of a flying magic ball in front of them, they began to wonder if they were encountering one of the most treasured treasures hidden in the mysterious depths of the dungeon. It was difficult to unravel what exactly was revealed before their eyes. A mysterious manifestation, vague and incomprehensible, that captivated the imagination of all those present. And suddenly, out of nowhere, the words of some mysterious voice were heard, who announced that he was testing life reactions and was beginning to analyze the hero's genetic code. Having successfully completed the operation, the process of transferring information to the two began. Iris did not have time to react, and in an instant, the main character seemed to disappear, dissolving into unknown spaces. With an additional shock, they discovered that not only the guy, but also Charlotte was missing. No one could understand how this could even happen. Max was also at a dead end, unable to explain what happened, because this was the first time he had encountered a similar phenomenon. Kazakh wisely asked Iris to wipe away the panic, reminding her that calmness is the best ally in solving difficult situations. Iris immediately began to apologize to Max for her unrestrained impulse, realizing that lost emotions do not always help in solving mysterious mysteries. Max realized that their disappearance resembled the magic of displacement. They were probably transported to another room. Frederick had an unpleasant premonition of trouble. Frederick noticed that the sphere examined them carefully and then transported two of them. It seemed that it removed them, allowing us to continue on our way. But unfortunately, it left us. The sudden disappearance of his comrades under the influence of a magical sphere which Frederick had warned about finally penetrated Max's consciousness, forcing him to think about the mysterious force influences and possible consequences of this unusual event. The magical sphere seemed to take stock of the two, transporting them into the unknown while the others remained outside it, bereft of explanation and the opportunity to join. It was because of this irrepressible decision to end all communications with them that a mysterious rock statue appeared before their eyes, rising like a powerful giant from ancient times. The remaining group of people were confused, faced with misunderstandings, helplessly wondering about the next steps, because among those who left were those who possessed unrivaled strength and wisdom. At the same moment, the main character suddenly woke up, realizing that his face was blinding by an intense snow-white light as if a bright ray was penetrating directly into his eyes. It was at this moment that it became clear to them that only the two of them had been transported to this mysterious place, and no one else was sharing this mysterious setting with them. Charlotte held out hope that the others were okay, and in turn decided that they should be concerned about their safety, leaving them as an afterthought. 
It was obviously much more dangerous here than in the previous place, and the girl, sensing the threat, immediately grabbed her sword, ready for any surprises. The main character's gaze darted to the girl's hand resting on the sword, and at that moment, something mysterious and unknown flashed in her eyes. With caution, the guy took her hand and gently asked her not to resort to such actions, arguing that it was unnecessary and not required in this situation. In addition, he explained that he was with her to somehow reassure her, because against the backdrop of this difficult and tense situation, any support becomes important. After these words, Charlotte suddenly became confused. Confusion flashed across her face, and she became embarrassed, as if she had not expected such attention. She noted that she herself was capable of defending herself, but if he wanted, then so be it she would agree, allowing him to take care of her protection. It is clear that the guy did not argue on this score, and only added that he was ready to become her knight, giving her a sense of security in this mysterious and dangerous world. A stranger in a rather strange and old outfit wandered not far from them, attracting attention with his mysterious presence in this world full of secrets. Before they entered the ruins, there was no one here, and so this stranger became a mystery to them, adding mystery and uncertainty to their adventure. Sword in hand, Rui inquired about who stood before them, eager to discover the stranger's identity and learn more about who had joined their strange adventures. In response, he announced that he was waiting for them to take on the hero's legacy and share his intentions, taking responsibility for the next stage of their journey. Explaining that he posed no threat, he politely invited them to join, a silent gesture inviting them to come to him and reveal new aspects of their fateful journey. Having no other option, the three who came decided to follow him, following the mysterious stranger in the hope of new discoveries and unraveling the secrets of this strange world. Moving forward, they discovered something that caused them complete shock and surprise, causing their hearts to skip a beat from unpredictable explorations in this mysterious place. An extremely ancient painting of historical significance was spread out before them, right on the wall, arousing their respect and incredible admiration for the greatness of the past, brought to life by this work of art. The painting depicted the majestic ogre hero. His appearance came to life on an ancient canvas, revealing mysterious stories and exploits to them, plunging them into the depths of time. This painting showed the third-generation ogre. His powerful figure and expressive features remained in the surprise of the audience, as if opening a page of history that had previously been forgotten. The stranger decided to answer all their questions in sequence, preparing to reveal the secrets and provide them with the keys to understanding what was happening in this amazing historical place. The answers must have amazed them, causing surprise not only at the results, but also heightening their interest in what lies in the depths of this mysterious story. He sincerely admitted that his face was in a terrible state, soaked in time and rotten marks, creating a mysterious contrast between his history and appearance. He couldn't even remember his name, but it was because of his rotten face that he felt disgusted with his body, considering himself a kind of zombie in this mysterious past. This was the place where Mr. Ogre's data protection was controlled, where secrets and important information were kept, giving them the feeling that they had entered into the core of the secrets and mysteries of this historical past. He is an integral part of this place, intended to correctly reveal the meaning of the fresco, he has long been waiting for the right people who are able to unravel the secrets and penetrate the depths of the images presented in the work of art. Rui could not understand whether it was a decision to accept this position as part of this world or whether he himself had consciously chosen this path, leaving the mystery of his own motivations. The main character was right. The stranger decided to become immortal based on his own will, thereby revealing the secret of his choice and the greatness of his unique destiny. The stranger decided to share with the park's heroes the story of the hero and his three true and true friends, revealing new chapters of this exciting saga and shedding light on their true connections. The group is now faced with uncertainty, not knowing what to do without Rui, since he could easily defeat the monster, creating a void with his absence. Iris was full of confidence that she could easily take on the monster on her own, feeling the strength and determination within herself to replace Rui and take on the responsibility of protecting the group. She made the decision to use the bloody spear, going into battle with a resolve shrouded in mysterious energy, ready to fight back the monster and reaffirm her willingness to stand in defense of her friends. Unfortunately for her, this did not bring any results, and the spear simply broke on the stone golem, expressing hopelessness in front of the unshakable strength of this extraordinary creature. Max couldn't believe that the spear really broke. For the first time he saw a golem made of stones, the embodiment of sealing magic, and this made him amazed at the unexpected and strong opponent. Realizing that magic was powerless against the stone golem, Iris decided to retreat with the group, 
faced with a hopeless situation where there was simply no choice. Despite the difficulty of the situation, she decided to take a chance and try to strike the enemy, trying to somehow damage him and cause at least some kind of response from this stone golem. She put all her strength into this blow, concentrating on an instant attack with the hope that it might leave at least some mark on the impenetrable armor of the stone enemy. As expected, this did little to help, and Iris simply landed back down, realizing that her attempt to break through the golem's defenses had been in vain. In a split second, she had to rush to the rescue from the monster, realizing that now the situation required not only strength, but also dexterity and the desire to survive. Fortunately, Kazaka intervened in time and saved the girl, strictly insisting that she stop getting into such dangers, showing concern for her well-being. Kazaka realized that they had apparently angered the golem and realized that they should retreat. To successfully win, they would need to attract more allies and join forces. The Kazakh was saved by Iris, and she could not understand why she was saved, because her life could simply be sacrificed in this dangerous situation. The Kazakh woman only laughed at the girl's reaction, realizing that the mysteries and secrets of this world can be unpredictable, causing different feelings and reactions. Kazaka said that Iris herself knows perfectly well why the girl saved her, adding to the mystery of this situation, in which there is something more than what is visible at first glance. It is clear that Iris could not understand what Kazaka was talking about, because the answer remained veiled in secret, raising only more questions. Charlotte was amazed, unable to believe that the man had willingly chosen to become a zombie based on his own choices. Rui felt that if he became a zombie, his life and memory would last forever forcing him to think about the cost of such a choice. However, in most cases, others break down psychologically as they experience their body breaking down into a disgusting state. This only indicated that the man had been alone for 300 years, experiencing a long and solitary journey in his unusual destiny. But he asked not to express sadness, since the fact that they came here is already his reward, bringing him joy and satisfaction. Then he decided to continue the explanation, revealing to them even more secrets and details of his amazing story. The mural depicts the hero and three others as the hero's team, considered the strongest in history, giving the group new perspectives and potential in their adventure. This reignited Charlotte's interest as unread pages of their history began to unfold, revealing endless possibilities and exciting secrets for her and the group. Information about them remains only here, but his memory seems to be starting to fail, creating a mysterious combination of valuable details and some kind of hole in his memories. The man decided to start with the one to the right of the hero, her name is the Fairy King Titania, introducing a new character into their story with an exquisite and mysterious name. There is a fairy village somewhere, and it is there that Fairy King Titania appears to exercise his rule, adding new and unknown dimensions to their adventure. Next, to the left of the hero, is the King of the Three Worlds, Balmung, representing another powerful character who has power over the Three Worlds in their exciting history. Rui inquired who the King of the Three Worlds, Balmung, was seeking to uncover the secret and essence of this mysterious ruler in their own epic. The man could not remember, and it looked very strange, as if memory, like a magic mirror, reflected the uncertainty and mystery in the past of this mysterious king. Charlotte could not believe what was happening and asked the man for an explanation, wanting to solve the mystery and restore a cloud of forgotten memories. Balmung was the strongest fighter on the hero's team, giving their alliance incredible strength and skill in battle, making him a key player in their history. Rui decided that he would later ask Wolf about Balmung, seeking to fill in the gaps in his memory and unravel the mysterious details of their own saga. And in the last position was the Queen of Snakes Achinda. According to records, she had the unique ability to see the future. She was a queen of Lamias, half-human, half-snake. The girl, as well as the guy, unfortunately, did not have the opportunity to hear about her earlier, as if their worlds had forgiven each other, leaving an emptiness of untold stories in their hearts. Charlotte did not imagine that her generation would have to absorb such a mysterious mystery, as if fate had turned down a road where every bite opens up new pages of unknown stories. Perhaps they were trying to keep secret that he had non-human allies, implying that revealing this fact might alleviate discrimination between inhumans and beastmen. There was probably a reason, but perhaps it was better not to be deeply sad about it, leaving the mystery alone and trusting the flow of life. Rui played the game of ignorance, masking his uncertainty about how and why he ended up here with the girl. He was lucky enough to be in a key place where it was possible to find the key to unsealing the endless hell, as if a secret door led to the solution to a painful riddle. The man brought intrigue into the conversation, giving a hint that he still had something unsaid, 
as if revealing a page of his life full of secrets and unexpected turns. The man suddenly began to carry over the hero's words, as if opening a new chapter, where reality intertwined with fantasy, and his story became part of the plot of life. If someone in trouble needed support, the man should turn to his partners for help, as the last thread of salvation in a maze of incredible events. Rui was faced with misunderstandings, unable to figure out which partners the hero was talking about, as if trying to unravel a tangle of secrets wrapped in mysterious threads of the past. The man finally revealed his cards, sharing that their friends were attacked by a golem, as if a sudden darkness had fallen on their serene world, causing excitement and anxiety. When he easily returned back, both of them had questions, as if a mystery hung in the air that needed to be solved, their gazes mixed in search of answers. This was all that needed to be told to the man. He had been waiting for this moment for a long time, but when it came, he suddenly felt loneliness, as if a mysterious secret carried not only answers, but also sadness. Wrapping his arms around Charlotte, he expressed gratitude to her for everything, as if at this moment words became unnecessary and feelings found their response in the silence of the embrace. In parting, she said that he was a hero, even more outstanding than herself, as if he had left an indelible mark on their shared adventure. The man said goodbye with his last words, noting that the girl had the blood of a hero flowing in her, as if a mixture of courage and determination flowed in her veins, which supported them in this world of secrets and dangers. And then literally he seemed to crumble, disappearing into space like a shadow, taking with him mystery and heroic metamorphosis. Having made up her mind, she decided to inherit his desire, as if a spark of determination had awakened in her heart, ready to sparkle in the name of continuing the extraordinary path. This meeting and everything that happened became an integral part of her memory, clearly intended to remain in the corners of her memories for a long time. Kazaka began to explain why she decided to save the girl, as if his words revealed the depths of her kindness and determination, deserving admiration. Iris still could not comprehend the meaning of the words that she herself knew why Kazaka made such a decision, as if the secret of her motives was hidden in the impenetrable depths of her inner world. Max suddenly interrupted their conversation, warning that it was time to run, as if the decision to take important steps required immediate action. And just at that moment, a golem attacked them, threatening to destroy everyone together, as if a whirlwind of events suddenly took a dangerous turn. Max realized that his attack power was equal to that of an A rank, as if his inner potential had been unleashed, raising his abilities to a new, exciting level. The girls were ready to escape because they had the means to escape quickly and efficiently, as if they skillfully wielded the tools of their freedom in this tense moment. However, despite their attempts, for some reason these methods did not work in this situation, as if mysterious forces were opposing their plans for freedom. Mila suggested at least standing silently in the corner of the room so as not to attract attention, otherwise they risked preventing their escape. Max glanced decisively at the girls, trying to assess the situation from the corner of his eye, as if his vigilance was aimed at maintaining the safety of the entire group. Max's face expressed anxiety, indicating that he was lost in incomprehensible circumstances, as if the worry in his eyes reflected uncertainty and the lack of a plan of action. Iris realized that it was time to take the situation into her own hands, otherwise they were in danger of death, as if the responsibility for the survival of the entire group fell on her shoulders. She then decisively approached the enemy, preparing to attack, as if her eyes sparkled with determination to change the course of events in their favor. However, the golem's reaction was amazingly fast, and it easily identified the girl, as if its attention was so penetrating that it gave them no chance of evasion. Iris was already preparing for death, without even attempting to defend herself, as if acceptance of the inevitability had arisen in her heart. She faced the threat with wise calm. But for some reason, like the mysterious hand of fate, the golem suddenly froze, and the expected moment for which she had been preparing disappeared in impenetrable mystery, as if the plans had gone wrong under the influence of the magic of unknown forces. The golem, as if immersed in the world of a mystical slug, is covered with an incomprehensible sticky mass that has changed its appearance, as if the breath of a mysterious natural entity has penetrated its stone body, turning it into a mysterious creation. Max, with concern in his voice, rushed to them and asked excitedly if they were carrying any misfortunes, as if his caring gaze could change the course of fate, or at least, give consolation. Iris, with open eyes of disbelief, refused to believe that they could stand in the way of the golem, as if she were faced with an undeniable force turned into an unsolvable mystery. The sticky bomb, a mysterious tool of adventurers, had its own special magic, 
its effect lasting only a few minutes, like a short burst of magic that could change the course of adventures in the blink of an eye. Iris, with a mysterious smile, offered them a choice. Try an incomprehensible drink that hid the secrets of magic, or use a potion, as if opening the door to a world of mysterious possibilities. Mila, with caring in her eyes, began to deftly bandage Iris's leg, as if wrapping thin loops of care and friendship around her, trying to shed light in the dark moment of healing. Iris, looking at them in bewilderment, did not understand why they stayed, because strategically, it would have been smarter to simply slip away, as if retreating from danger. But perhaps there was something in their decision that eluded her gaze. Max, wisely deferring to Iris's better judgment, refrained from arguing as he admitted that she was indeed right, as if calling for wisdom in making inevitable decisions. In fact, it had always been the case that they preferred to leave, as if taking with them traces of an unknown past. But now, perhaps, something in Iris forced them to stay, breaking the usual ritual of flight. They skillfully manipulated other adventurers, turning them into living baits, since they, in their weakness, succumbed to their persuasion and got lost in a world of intrigue and dangerous adventures. However, when they saw Rui, they wondered if they should accept this lifestyle, as if noticing something in his fate that made them question the meaning of their own actions. Remembering his childhood dream, Max suddenly realized that he had once dreamed of becoming an adventurer, as if resurrecting in his soul the spark of adventure that had been forgotten by years of routine life. After apologizing, Max stated that even if they themselves did not ask for help, he decided to help them anyway, as if an inner impulse of kindness reflected his true intentions. The girls were also fired up with the idea, eager to demonstrate their abilities and strength to everyone, as if they had gathered the fire of determination within themselves, ready to write their name in history. Now they had a better chance of defeating the golem, as if by combining their strengths and skills, they had created an unstoppable alliance, ready to face even the most severe threat. The golem came up with the idea that setting the sticky on fire could free him from it, as if an idea was born that could seemingly change the outcome of the battle. Realizing that in this situation it was better for them to give in for now, the girls decided to retreat temporarily, as if strategically choosing the moment to retreat in order to return with renewed vigor. At this time, Max laughed and assured that there was nothing worth fearing, as if his fearlessness was like a shield protecting from the shadows of fear. Iris, deciding to trust the guy, eventually saw him draw a slingshot, as if in his hands this simple tool turned into a powerful weapon, ready for action. Iris flared with anger, realizing that he intended to use the slingshot in the battle with the golem, as if her fear turned into rage at the unwise decision, causing a storm of emotions. Max, confident in his choice of weapon, remained deaf to Iris's objections, as if his stubbornness was stronger than the opinions that divided them. Max boldly fired a smoke bomb, as if creating a veil of mystery behind which he could hide his movements and muddy the situation, anticipating the golem's moves. The girls were relieved that Max would now join their fight, as if his decision to fight alongside them had given them a new surge of motivation and strength. Kazaka handed Mila a mysterious potion, as if unspoiled forces were concentrated in this mysterious liquid, ready to reveal themselves at the right moment. Frederick expressed his gratitude to the girl and admitted that he had not counted on their help, as if in their kind actions he had discovered unexpected support and allies in a harsh struggle. Now they faced a final challenge, an all-or-nothing battle, as if they were preparing for a decisive battle where every action could determine the outcome of their adventure. Max realized that he would have to show his full essence, as if this was not just a battle, but a test where he must reveal his true strengths and skills. He resorted to using the slippery ball as if creating a clever tactic that allowed him to maneuver around the golem and dodge its powerful blows. The partner used a special lubricant, as if using it to create a slippery barrier that made it difficult for the golem to move, giving strength to their alliance in this battle. And this indeed brought positive results, as if their cunning and joint efforts were effective in the fight against the golem, opening the way to success. Mila assured Max that he could rely on her, and then used her magic, as if turning her words into reality, to support him in the decisive moment. And indeed, their combined efforts began to bear fruit, the golem slowly began to fall, as if under the influence of a combination of their magic and cunning tactical moves. Max also realized that even an A-class monster couldn't stand up to such a combo, as if his experience and powers of observation told him how powerful their combined actions were. But alas, unfortunately, the monster was able to rise to its feet, as if its strength and tenacity allowed it to recover from the blows, causing a new turn in the battle. Max couldn't believe their plan didn't work 
as if disappointment and bewilderment showed in his eyes despite all their efforts and the strength of their combined approach. Luckily for Max, Iris was there to save him, as if her quick and decisive intervention was a bright spot in their battle-filled story. Max couldn't believe at all that the girl had saved him, as if surprise and recognition of his vulnerability were reflected on his face, meeting an unexpected feat. Max said that he now owes the girl for his salvation, as if acknowledging the debt and expressing gratitude for her selfless support in a difficult moment. But Iris simply did what came naturally to her, as if her kindness and willingness to help were a part of her nature that did not require special thanks. At that moment, the girl remembered Kazakh's words that she herself knew why she saved her, as if secret motives and internal changes began to appear in her mind. Iris began to remember how she was rescued, as if the footage of the past came to life again in her memory, bringing with it excitement and mixed emotions. She couldn't concentrate, all her thoughts were spinning in her head, and suddenly she realized that you don't always need a reason to save someone. She just wanted to do it and express her concern. When she fights with someone, the strength and feelings stir within her, as if her heart beats in time with the fight, giving strength and determination to the battle together. And so now Iris is serious, as if her inner fire of determination has burned brighter, preparing for a new wave of battles and challenges. Now it was time for her to teach the monster a lesson, as if determination sparkled in her eyes, ready to teach him what he did not know how to expect. She was completely determined to defeat the enemy, as if a formidable hymn of determination sounded in her soul, ready to fight to the end in this battle. Iris athletically dodged the monster's attacks and smoothly walked around it, as if dancing to the rhythm of battle, her grace becoming a weapon in the fight against the enemy. And then she completely resorted to using a bloody sword, as if in her hands, this sharp blade had become a continuation of her inner strength called to fight, and she planted it right in the monster's eyes, as if with a precise blow, she had chosen the key point to strike, creating a short-term chance in this battle. This blow was undoubtedly strong and powerful, as if its energy filled the space, leaving a clear mark on the power dynamics of the battle. To the girl's surprise, she noticed that the monster began to attack itself, as if its indestructible will to fight had an influence on its behavior creating a new turn in the course of the battle. Iris really didn't expect things to turn out this way, as if the monster's unexpected reaction to her blow made her feel surprised and uncertain about the fight. Max immediately ran up to the girl to find out how she was, as if his anxiety and concern flared up at the moment when the situation in the battle became unpredictable. The guy provided the girl with a regeneration potion, as if his concern for her well-being had become a priority in their joint struggle, calling on the forces of restoration. Max began apologizing and calling himself useless, as if his mind was overcome with guilt and helplessness, absorbing the weight of responsibility for the course of the battle. Iris, of course, began to deny this, as if not wanting Max to burden himself with guilt and expressing confidence that they would cope with the difficulty together. After all, thanks to Max, she was saved from certain death, as if the recognition of his role in their destinies became a bright note in the dark plot of their adventures. And then, as if out of nowhere, Ruby appeared, as if a mysterious character had introduced a new element of surprise into the course of their events, diluting the everyday routine of the battle. Rui was glad that he was able to return to his friends, as if a joyful memory and gratitude flashed in his eyes for the opportunity to be together again. The protagonist immediately began using magical analysis, as if his mastery of magic was the key to uncovering secrets and recognizing potential threats in the world around him. The monster managed to fight it off with the magic seal stones, as if demonstrating its strength and ability to resist the effects of magic, causing bewilderment and concern. Now he understood why he could not win, and then he decided to finish him off with something interesting, as if an idea flashed in his eyes that could change the course of the battle. Rui was ready to launch his attack, as if his readiness to fight transformed his appearance, creating an aura of determination in the face of this inscrutable warrior. His gaze was cool and confident, as if his eyes reflected his readiness to take decisive action in this dangerous battle. The guy used a technique called Space Slash, as if his mastery of magic manifested itself in creating a temporary hole, providing new opportunities during the battle. And oddly enough, it actually worked, and the monster fell, as if surprise and relief were mixed in the faces of the heroes, realizing that they were on the verge of victory. Now thanks to the guy, they were safe, as if his ability to make difficult decisions and use magic was an integral part of their survival in this world. Rui immediately began to check if everyone was okay, as if his concern for the well-being of his friends manifested itself in vigilance and readiness to support. Max immediately began to beg Rui to share his knowledge, 
as if hope for the discovery of new horizons and skills was visible in his eyes. Rui was glad that Frederick and Kazaka were okay, as if relief washed over him, making sure of the well-being of his friends. Kazaka said that if he was going to praise her, then it should be done with Iris, as if her laughter and slight mockery created an atmosphere of friendly jokes. Iris said that she always believed in Rui, that he would return, as if her confidence in him became the unshakable foundation of their friendship. He, in turn, also believed in Iris and thanked her for protecting everyone, as if at that moment their mutual trust became even stronger. And just at that moment, Charlotte returned, as if her appearance was an unexpected turn in the course of events, adding mystery to their adventure. She said that Rui was great for being able to deal with the monster, as if her praise gave Rui a new shade of respect and recognition for his skills. It's always the oddballs who like the guy, like Max, as if Charlotte were expressing her playful side towards their unpredictable friend. The Kazakh noticed that something began to happen and began to shake in some incomprehensible way, as if she expressed concern and anticipation of new events hanging over their group. Max shouted that the dungeon began to fall off, as if his exclamation pierced the air, a harbinger of a new danger and a call to action. Between the shadow of hope and the emptiness of fear, in the bottomless labyrinth of their fate, the unknown bubbles. And if they do not get out, their dreams will be buried alive under a pile of unknown circumstances. Beyond the limits of everyday life, which usually reveals a way out, this time the prospects disappeared, as if they were eclipsed by the darkness of unpredictability, and then only the heavy silence of the unknown. And suddenly, like an explosion in the dark sky, the main character suddenly remembered something that turned out to be the key to the solution, opening the way out of dark hopelessness. The information that appeared in memory turned out to be like a key to a closed castle. It was a dungeon, a building designed to store the hero's secrets, where a testing golem, the guardian of hidden mysteries, awaited those who penetrated. Suddenly realizing that it was not just a guard of secrets, but a double trap, the hero realized that his further path would be lined with collapsing secrets, skillfully created in this dungeon. Max was questioned about whether he happened to have some item in his possession, and there was a shadow of suspicion in this question, as if the key to the solution might be in his hands. Max had the item, but he understood that its use required permission from his partners, because even in a dark labyrinth, the powers of united minds turned out to be important. Max revealed the secret. It was a magical magic stone of movement. He explained that under the influence of magic, this stone is able to transport them outside, opening the door from the darkness of the dungeon. The stone's capabilities were limited. The protagonist had to carefully select only three partners, whose strengths and skills would make them a team capable of overcoming the dark obstacles of the Dan. Consequently, realizing that Rui was unable to make a difficult choice, the protagonist felt the weight of responsibility facing him in selecting three companions for the great journey. The main character expressed gratitude to Max, but admitted that it was difficult for him to make a choice, and the decision about which partner to take with him was left hanging in the air. The hero, full of determination, did not want anyone to suffer harm because of his guilt, and this burden of responsibility pressed on his soul, making the choice even more difficult. In conclusion, he only asked to believe in him, as if it were the last thin thread connecting their destinies in this dangerous adventure. The Kazakh and Charlotte, with bewilderment in their eyes, could not recognize what decisions the guy was about to make, and their incredible adventure depended on this moment. There was a knowingness in Iris's expression, as if she had knowledge of what the guy was about to do, which added to the mystery and excitement in the air before the unpredictable turn of events. A satanic ray flashed from the hands of the protagonist, framing his figure in a dark glow, and at that moment, an aura of mysticism and unknown power hung in the air. Gathering all his strength, the main character offered all his energy, directing it to save his friends, as if trying to bring down the walls of a dark labyrinth and free the captive souls. Iris realized the whole point. This beam is capable of destroying magic, and if the dungeon is created from magical power, the hero could simply erase it with his unique beam, clearing the way forward. Exhausted, the guy exhaled and declared that now everything depended on the strength of the name, as if at that moment the meaning of his words was revealed in the air saturated with tension. Kazaka proposed a plan. They could take off with the help of her 18-meter friend, like a natural union with the power of the wind, providing them with an unexpected path to freedom. Suddenly, an unimaginable creature took them, and as if captured in the arms of magic, they all took off together from the dark dungeon, overcoming the boundaries between reality and fantasy. Naturally, they were all full of joy, 
realizing that they were able to escape danger and escape from the ominous mysteries of the dungeon, feeling within themselves the excitement of sudden deliverance. Arriving home, they said a friendly farewell together, as if each of them had carried into their hearts a piece of the adventure that had bound them forever on this incredible journey. Rui noticed that sharp pains were piercing his whole body, as if every cell was screaming about unbearable discomfort. And at that moment, as if out of a fog, Kojiro appeared. Having learned from the head of the hostel that he still had not returned, he could not believe that the guy returned so shabby, remembering their conversation in the forest. The teacher asked if he had used his potion. Bewilderment flashed in his eyes, as he did not expect that anyone would pay attention to his mysterious experiments. The teacher, having fallen into experimental methods of treatment, used incomprehensible means, because of which something was pinching the guy very strongly, causing him to doubt the choice of the teacher. Surprisingly, the teacher was informed that his potion really worked well, which was confirmed in practice and turned out to be true. He, however, was glad that the guy returned in perfect order, at the same time, he warned, saying that it was better not for children to do such things. Next, the main character had to arrange a bath for himself, lie in warm water, and hopefully sleep in the hope that all the troubles would disappear. Rui still couldn't believe that he was actually worried about him and was waiting for him, and their meeting in the forest remained a mysterious secret for him. Waking up, the guy decided to go in for sports, trying to awaken his body and get away from the memories of the strange events of the previous night. And at this time, his good old friend the parrot flew to him, spreading joy with his bright feathers and cheerful cries. So in addition, with some exotic fruit in its beak, the parrot brought not only joy with its shrill greeting, but also with the aroma of mystery. It is clear that the main character was glad that they brought him fruit and thanked his feathered friend for the unexpected morning treat. But it was time for Rui to go to school, and she said goodbye to the parrot, in an amazing mixture of joy and anticipation of new adventures. Kojiro apologized for the suddenness, but announced that today was the last lesson with him, instilling mystery in the upcoming farewell and leaving behind many questions. Although they spent little time together, it was definitely worth it, filling their lives with vivid memories and unexpected turns. Rui was slightly in a stupor because she could not understand why everything was happening this way, and the mystery of this oncoming world only increased her misunderstanding. It is clear that Charlotte immediately noticed the strange behavior of the guy, and curiosity flashed in her eyes as she tried to decipher the secrets that were in the air. He was wondering why the teacher was in a worse mood than usual today, and he thought about the possible reasons, sensing something mysterious and unknown in the air. The man, in principle, carried out his duties, but in the eyes of his students, there was a shadow of some unknown mystery, making his ordinary actions more mysterious. He said that when attacking, you need to grip the sword, emphasizing the importance of reaction. And despite this, his stance became better than before, which surprised everyone around him. It's clear that the guy was happy with what he heard, saying that the stand needed to be made even better and deciding to go practice to bring his skills to perfection. Next in line was Prince Yuri, and everyone around him was curious to see what lessons of skill and secrets the mysterious teacher might reveal to him. Deciding that it wouldn't hurt for him to learn how to wield a weapon either, Prince Yuri watched the learning process with fascination, ready to plunge into the world of secrets and skills. He brought a staff to training, ready to learn not only swordsmanship, but also master other types of weapons, adding variety and uniqueness to his training. The teacher said that he would now attack, and Yuri needed to try to defend himself, following his instructions. There was a tense atmosphere in the air, full of expectation and challenge. Yuri was serious about this training, believing in every movement of the teacher an opportunity to gain a new level of mastery and improve his skills. The teacher noticed that the guy had a good stance, and his gaze was confident, emphasizing his readiness for challenges and a thirst for mastering new techniques. It is not clear why the teacher regretted him, because in his eyes one could read pride in the demonstrated level of training and the desire for improvement. But still, the teacher decided to start sparring with his student, creating an atmosphere of competition and an opportunity for Yuri to show his skills in battle. Yuri was slightly alarmed by all this, but prepared for the sparring, feeling inner strength and determination to cope with the challenges posed by his teacher. Well, it's clear that Kojiro in turn was calm and confident. The master, rushing forward at the speed of light, threw out his first attack like a master of instant embodiment of power and movement, creating a whirlwind of power. Yuri, as easily as the wind, will not give up his position, like an unshakable guard, standing like an impenetrable wall, calmly preparing for the inevitable meeting. Joy filled his heart for being able to defend himself, as if a bright sense of pride had ignited within him. 
emphasizing his ability to ensure his own safety. In the blink of an eye, the teacher's gaze changed dramatically, as if dark shadows were replaced by bright light, revealing the secrets of his true intentions. A sharp rage gripped him, like a raging fire, and realizing his impulse, he apologized to Yuri, like a warm wind softening a storm of indignation. Then, like an instant of irrevocable fate, he hurled the killing blow towards the student, leaving a trail of mysterious strength and determination in the air, after which, oddly enough, the guy simply collapsed on the floor, as if an invisible burden suddenly mixed with the severity of defeat, leaving silence behind him. Everyone present was frightened by what was happening, as if a sudden shadow of fear enveloped them, causing their hearts to beat louder in confusion at the unforeseen threat. The next thing the teacher did was put a sword to Yuri's head, as if the ominous drama had reached its peak, freezing for a moment in tense silence. Kojiro said goodbye to the guy, as if in this farewell there was not only a finishing touch, but also some kind of inexpressible weight of unspoken words and unknown experiences. Rui came to the defense of his friend, who did not allow himself to easily kill the guy, as if his determination blocked the teacher's path, turning the moment into a struggle of destinies and friendship. He could not understand what all these events meant, like a mysterious puzzle where parts of an unknown picture remained unsolved, entailing excitement and doubt. Here Yuri's guard already appeared, who could not understand at all how the man allowed himself to do this, as if his bewilderment was expressed in a lack of understanding of what was happening before his eyes. It is clear that he immediately flared up with rage after this, as if a storm of passions had shot up in his soul, enveloping the flaring internal fire. He promised to kill the man, as if his words carried an unwavering determination, thundering like a thunderclap, a harbinger of an inevitable collision. The main character asked the guy not to give in to anger, as if his wise words sounded like a gentle whisper in a storm, warning against reckless actions. After Rui whispered something to the guy, he instantly calmed down, as if the mysterious words of a friend quickly dissipated the clouds of an internal windfall. Then she suddenly declared that she relied on the main character, as if this unexpected turn of events gave her confidence in the future and created unprecedented harmony. Finally, he only asked her to protect us all, as if his plea sounded like the last hope in the unsteady dance of fate, slowly revealing its cards. Then he stood in a fighting stance, ready to fight his master, as if every movement of his body expressed determination and strength to protect those he loved. Just a few seconds later, Iris appeared behind the guy, as if her appearance was an unexpected ray of light penetrating the darkness of the struggle, bringing with it hope. She could not identify a single weakness of the teacher, and the difference in strength seemed enormous, as if an abyss stretched between them, filled with undeniable superiority. Wolf was furious, because he could not understand why in such a situation it was impossible to influence in any way, as if helplessness enveloped him like a dark veil. But Charlotte asked the guy to calm down, because he was not alone, as if her soft words were a caress that dispersed the clouds of indignation in his soul. It's a pity that it was dishonest, but nothing can be done about it. You just need to watch and remember, as if lesson wisdom was hidden in this wrong moment. Charlotte silently begged the guy to be okay, as if her gentle thoughts penetrated his soul, calling for inner peace. Rui finally asked why the man did this, as if in his gaze there was a readiness to understand and reveal the mystery of what was happening. The guy said that he spent little time with the teacher, but he, worried about them, turned out to be real to him, as if an understanding of what was important in this regard was ripening within him. Kojiro said that not everything is so simple, and they will not understand anything, as if her words sounded mysterious and an unknown secret shrouding what was happening. He asked the guy to leave for health reasons, in addition noting that he did not want to harm anyone except the prince, as if his words sounded like a desire for a peaceful resolution of the conflict. The teacher's blow seemed fatal, but he needed to make sure that the guy's breathing stopped, as if a heavy shadow of uncertainty remained in the air. It is clear that the main character could not allow him to leave, injuring his friend, because he did not yet have a reason to attack the teacher. Rui was partially right, and it was not easy to understand why he needed to kill someone, as if a fog of mystery shrouded his actions and motives. However, he had his own reason for this, as if a fire was burning inside him, fueling his motivation. But its essence remained in the shadows. If he blocks his path, he will pass with force, as if an invisible wall was in front of him, causing him to become determined to destroy it using all his power. The teacher was serious and wanted to end the guy. Well, now Kojiro simply had no choice and he needed to get rid of Rui. A split second later, he disappeared from the guy's field of vision. And in an instant, it appeared right in front of him. This maneuver looked impressive. Well, it's clear that Rui had a good reaction and was able to dodge it. 
He began to repel all enemy attacks and did it skillfully and professionally. The teacher said that the guy was quite good because he could parry his blow. And all this was thanks to his teachers in the form of friends and sister and Rio. The guy decided to strike, but it was unsuccessful. But the teacher's blow had its fruits, and Rui even moved a couple of meters. The guy even had to use magic so as not to fall on the floor. He realized that he would not be able to hit the teacher at close range, and he needed to move away. Then I decided to use a technique called Big Flame. The ball of fire moved closer and closer to the teacher. It was indeed a well-trained magic, but did the main character really think that he could take a teacher with it? Kojiro prepared to defend himself from such an attack. He needed to put in no little effort to do this. He then used magic and was still able to repel the attack. It is clear that the main character did not expect this and was surprised. But the teacher said that there was no time to be surprised. Doing what the enemy doesn't like is the basis of battle. If everything is converted into numbers, then there is not much difference between him and the teacher. But he didn't know that the guy was a difficult child. He was sure that if he continued like this, he would definitely be able to defeat the guy. Then the teacher realized that the guy was becoming stronger during the battle. In addition, he can remember its movement at incredible speed. Rui learned by memorizing from his little sister in Rio. Then the guy completely gave up on his feet and was ready to continue the fight. He wanted to move away and switch to magical attacks, but he does not have enough speed to move. Thanks to the shuffling of feet, it was difficult to predict the teacher's next move. He just needed to find his weak spot and hit him there. Unfortunately, the teacher was able to pierce the guy with his sword. It was very bad for the guy. The teacher has already said goodbye to the guy. The man felt some hot air around him. He couldn't figure out what it was or who it was. As it turned out, this was the guy's plan, and now was his decisive act. The guy decided to use a space cut, as in the case of the stone monster. It was a good move, but only if the guy could hit the teacher. Kojiro, in turn, used a technique called the swallow's tail. After such a blow, the guy could no longer stand on his feet and fell, coughing in his own blood. The teacher was confused by the fact that he did not lose consciousness. He could not believe that he survived after his swallow's tail. Kojiro decided to check the prince's breathing and just go their separate ways. He pointedly said in front of the other students that he didn't like to kill without a good reason. If they leave, he will not harm them and will leave them alive. Charlotte asked whether the man wanted them to calmly watch him kill their friend. Kojiro realized that he simply had no choice. Finally, he just said that it would be very painful for them. Rui was still able to somehow wake up and tried to persuade the man to stop. Either it was memories or he really was transported to endless hell. But the very essence is that the guy was in endless hell. The girl said that the guy had become much stronger, but he still lacked something. This something was determination. If he gets into his world, he will have to face it. A situation may also arise when he has to kill the enemy. Rui said with a kind face that it is not necessary to put his life on the line. If we talk, he can understand him. The girl said that his kindness is his strength. However, if everything could be discussed, this would not happen to the warrior. Things that are important to him can be lost in an instant. Therefore, in this case, he does not need to get lost when he fights for life and death. Rui managed to whisper words of forgiveness from the girl, Ryo, and then he began to get up completely in order to continue the fight and not let the man win. Rui found the strength and motivation to get up and continue the fight. Kojiro did not expect that he would have the strength to fight with such wounds. The guy is shaking all over but is still ready to continue the fight with the teacher. Rui was determined. He wanted to put an end to this lawlessness. Kojiro asked for forgiveness for treating him like a child and will now accept him as an obstacle to his goal. The teacher was ready to strike Rui again. But to the surprise of everyone, the guy was able to easily repel this attack without using a weapon, with his bare hands. Kojiro couldn't understand how Rui managed to do it so easily. He was confused, because his movements were very careful. Then the main character began to launch his attack. Kojiro will notice that Rui's number of hits has changed, which means that he has become stronger. The main character realized that he needed to use a third attack technique called Saranui. This blow was really strong and unexpected for the teacher. The man immediately fell to his knees after such a blow, and the guy immediately began to thank him because thanks to him, he learned the horror of war and true determination. And with the help of this power, he will overcome the teacher. Kojiro did not expect such a surge of strength from the guy. He was not ready for it. In such a small amount of time, he became stronger. He became too strong. Kojiro couldn't believe that willpower changes people like that. The man noticed changes in the guy's face. It is unclear why the main character's eyes changed color and became red. Rui realized that this is not just like that and they give him strength. The main character remembered how in endless hell, he said that when they were training, he noticed that she began to defend herself faster than he began to attack. The girl was happy about this because it meant that the guy became stronger and that he noticed it. It's called the dragon's eye and only the strongest of dragons have it. 
Unlike the magic eye, it also sees life and qigong, muscle tension and movement. With this, you can understand how the enemy will attack. Rui was upset when he learned that only dragons could wield it. But the girl made him happy and told him that he could have it too. Her blood flows inside him, and thus he can also use dragon qigong. Rui was really glad that he too would someday have the dragon eye. He will appear when Rui senses real danger and is ready to fight with his will. Then the power of dragons will definitely save him. Rui was grateful for these words and Ryo's lessons. It is clear that for Kojiro, this meant that he had even more problems. He was sure that now he would definitely not lose and walk towards his goal. It is clear that Rui will not just stand there and began to defend himself. The main character needed to jump back, but he didn't hit. He hoped that everything would work out. On top of that, Rui literally managed to cut off the teacher's hand during his attack. The main character asked whether Kojiro was ready to continue the fight since he could no longer use a sword. After these words, Kojiro became completely furious. But he also has a reason for which he needs to win this battle. Even if he is covered in blood or dirt, he must win. But Rui also has his own reason. All his friends and people dear to him, he is obliged to protect them. Their battle will go down in history as a legendary confrontation. He became stronger in order to defeat the teacher. Kojiro lost his arm, and now this. But Ryu cannot lose no matter what. The main character began using Dragon Qigong as his number one attacking move. Rui was ready to use the Dragon Star Fist. Kojiro was wondering if the guy could stop his ace in the hole. Giant General's Sword. This is magic that only magicians with a general mark can use. But on the way to save Ryo and her sister, there will probably be even stronger opponents. Rui, with inner tension, gathered the last bit of determination in himself to deliver the final blow. Feeling a growing wave of energy ready to spill out at the moment of the solemn embodiment of his determination. Rui, trained by the strongest, was ready to take charge again and protect Yuri and everyone, holding his resolve as a guard ready for the test. Kojiro admitted that the guy turned out to be much more complex than it seemed at first glance, and agreed with this, encountering unexpected depth and strength in him. He sincerely regretted his actions, realizing that if he were as strong as that guy, he wouldn't have to do what he was doing now. Rui, feeling the weight of responsibility for his friends and loved ones, was ready for anything, feeling an unshakable determination within himself. As a result, he will be able to avoid Kojiro's attack and carry out his own, which will show how masterful he is in his strength and dexterity. And as expected, the blow was too heavy for Kojiro, who simply passed out, unable to bear this crushing blow. Rui attributed his success to Ryo. Thanks to her, he gained the determination that allowed him to overcome all difficulties. Of course, the protagonist's instant victory was inseparable from the support of his friends, who were always there, ready to defend him. After some time, everyone worked hard together, trying to save Kojiro and bring a change to the current situation. Fortunately, with their joint efforts, they managed to bring Kojiro back to consciousness, restoring him after the fight. The guy apologized immediately after waking up, having previously warned that the next moments would be painful. Asking the girl standing next to him, Lona, to begin the necessary process, he tentatively explained that it might be unpleasant, but necessary for his recovery. Lona proceeded to use High Hill, providing the boy with the healing he needed to recover from the fight. The man was surprised to see how she was able to restore him simply by casting a spell, because even experienced healers usually need several hours for such a restoration. The girl wondered if it hurt, but despite this, she skillfully continued her work, creating a healing spell with grace and skill. Kojiro expressed outright surprise at Lona's professionalism and skill in healing, clearly admiring her skill. Kojiro couldn't believe that he was able to move his arm again. Now new prospects were opening up for him, and he realized that he would be in debt. The teacher could not understand why Rui decided to save him after all the events that had happened and the actions he had done. But the guy himself also seeks to understand what the point is when Kojiro, at the end of the battle, found himself under his protection. It was as if he had conceded as if he was deliberately aiming for defeat, giving the impression that his goal was to concede in this battle. Then Kojiro realized that his deception had been figured out, and even the children noticed this cunning move. Having lost the battle, he realized that the most important thing now was to take the prince to the hospital, because the chances of saving him were extremely small. Approaching him, Yuri asked him not to worry, trying to calm him down and support him, despite the current situation. In fact, the main character gave him a magical artifact, revealing a secret that could change the course of events. Thanks to the substitution medal that the adventurer in the dungeon provided him with, he managed to escape, avoiding the danger that awaited him. The blow was so powerful that he still temporarily lost the feeling of recoil, switching off from the intensity of the moment. It was clear from his expression that he was enjoying this, enjoying the moment of recovery and peace from the intense events. 
Then Kojiro, realizing his mistake, knelt down, beginning to beg forgiveness to those whom he had upset with his actions. After such changes, I don't even want to respond to words, but it is clear that the upcoming punishment will not be easy. The teacher, realizing the current situation, was ready to accept any punishment. He only asked to be given a chance to tell how everything came to this. Her gaze changed sharply, as if she was preparing for something big. A second later, the man fell to the floor, as if conquered by a wave of pain that overwhelmed him, depriving him of support. Lona could not understand what was wrong, because she was treating. But the temperature continued to rise, as if the rebellious organism did not want to agree with her efforts. After some time, the man began to feel better, as if the shadow of pain was gradually dissolving under an invisible ray of relief. Well, nothing can be done about it. The temperature does not subside because of this, as if it had become an unruly element, ignoring any attempts to influence. As it turned out, the man had the mark of a slave, as if invisible chains of long-lasting submission paved the way to his past, intertwining with his present. Rui noticed that he was not just a slave, because the seal was made in the wrong sequence, as if a moment had flown through his awareness, revealing a mystery hidden in the mystical signs. The man said that the guy was great, because he understood. This mark is prohibited by royal decree, being an illegal seal of slavery, as if he had unraveled the secret message in the signs of submission. It's only a matter of time before he dies due to his failure to kill the prince, but he wants them to listen, as if his final plea remains forever hanging in the air, awaiting justice. As it turned out, he has a seven-year-old daughter, but a year ago she fell ill with an unknown illness, as if the shadow of a mysterious illness had enveloped their lives leaving a trace of mysterious moments. His symptoms were the same as those of his wives who had died several years ago, as if the curse of the past had come to life again in their lives, repeating itself with merciless precision. Many doctors were unable to cure his daughter. She weakened day by day. When he lived far away, two men came offering a special magical item to relieve the symptoms. In return, he had to carry out several errands. He realized the severity of his sins. He no longer cared what would happen to him as if the burden of regret had become an integral part of his existence. Well, his daughter named Fu Yu was sinless, and he begged to save her, like the last innocent soul captured by fate. The main character asked if everyone had heard the man, emphasizing that it was their responsibility to save his daughter, as if the question hung in the air, filling him with determination. Just then, two strangers were sitting in the man's house, discussing that they had discovered a potential source of income, as if invisible threads of fate intertwined their decisions in an unpredictable whirlpool. After all, it's enough to just keep her alive, as if a mysterious proposal sounded in the room, breaking the silence and infiltrating the plans of strangers. They decided that they needed to make more money from that samurai, seeking to get rich quickly, as if the greedy minds of strangers were weaving plans, ignoring moral boundaries. Well, their sweet conversation was interrupted by Rui, who spectacularly appeared like a shadow of the unknown past, disrupting the flow of their greedy plans. The guy was really furious and ready to deal with them, as if the fire of indignation burned in his eyes, guiding him forward. The men immediately picked up knives just in case, as if the dark shadows were preparing to dance in anticipation of the outbreak of a threat. Then the main characters commanded Iris to start something, as if she had become the executor of their strategy, an invisible hand embodying their intentions. The girl then began to crush her opponents, as if a whirlwind of revenge had suddenly erupted, and she became an unstoppable force, falling on those who faced her wrath. And then she took Fuyu in her arms, as if gently and decisively protecting her from the storms of a hostile world, creating a protective shield around her ward. The men realized that once again their secrets had been revealed, because they thought that they were hiding safely, as if the invisible hand of fate was revealing their secrets at an unexpected moment. Wolf said that it was easy to find by smell, as if his sensitive sense of smell was the key to revealing the secret hiding places weaving in the air. Well, the guy said that he was the first to analyze everything, as if his mind became a spearhead, penetrating secrets and solving their riddles. The man said that they were strong and offered to measure their strength with him, as if a challenge had been thrown, and tense anticipation of a fight hung in the air. Well, the guy would not forgive them under any circumstances for disgracing the man's efforts and his strength, as if his pride were a piece of shrapnel cutting in the air. Then, as expected, he struck the enemy as if the moment of truth had arrived, and the sound of the collision of hostile waves filled the air. With such a force of impact, the wall simply could not stand it and broke through, leaving behind a destroyed hole. Kojiro's prediction came true. The girl's heart flared up, as if a passionate flame had flared up in her heart, 
illuminating everything around with its warmth. This was something beyond an ordinary disease, and the healer seemed powerless in the face of an unknown illness that required unusual means of healing. Some kind of resourceful method was needed that could put an end to the disease, which declared war on the girl who had become a hostage to her own condition. Rui concluded that the first step was to let the girl evaluate loan and then urgently go to the palace, leaving behind a trail of a mysterious decision. At this time, the girl and Guy settled down peacefully awaiting the arrival of their friends, feeling the tension in the air being replaced by an atmosphere of pleasant anticipation. It was clear from her facial expressions that the girl was irritated and nervous, as if the internal dissonance concealed mysterious riddles and expectations. The guy gently asked the girl to calm down, reminding her to breathe deeper, as if his words were a quiet touch to the seething inner world of her feelings. The girl's gratitude went to Ben, and as if by magic, the children felt much better, as if his presence brought calm and healing energy. Ben, in response, feeling his role in changing the situation, even blushed slightly from unexpected gratitude and attention. Happiness knew no bounds, and he rejoiced to see that thanks to his help, the girl was able to find peace and tranquility. Then Ben conveyed the good news, saying that it seemed that their friends had arrived as if the invisible shadow of tension had dissipated with the arrival of loved ones. As the guy predicted, everything happened exactly like that. His friends actually came, confirming his instincts and ending the wait. Lona decided that she would start with a simple attempt at healing, aiming to bring relief to the girl with her healing touch. Fuya even managed to come to her senses, but naturally she was completely bewildered, unable to realize what place she had ended up in. Lona cautiously asked if the girl could share a little conversation with her, as if offering a warm hand in the uncharted waters of communication. Ben noticed that the girl had a rather unhealthy complexion, as if the dullness reflected her inner state, causing concern and concern. If the situation continued, the girl would not last long, which is why Ben felt an urgent need to find a way to recover her. The main character tried to solve the riddle. It seemed not a disease, but some kind of curse, and lowering the temperature turned out to be not a simple enough solution. Doctors and healers, it would seem, should have noticed something deeper, since attention must be paid not only to obvious symptoms, but also to mysterious aspects. Ben asked if something was captivating the main character, if something had caught his attention, as if waiting for key information that could reveal secrets. It turned out that he had an above-average amount of magical power, as if mysterious signs were opening up, harbingers promising the potential for a solution. Rui was slightly distracted and realized that if she began to train, the girl could become an outstanding magician, as if the glimmer of new potential was blossoming in their harbingers. Ben discovered something fascinating. Her mother also had a significant amount of magical energy, as if the mystery of magic permeated their family ties. The amount of this magical power meant only one thing. They had the potential of great possibilities and secret powers ready to blossom. Ben asked to pay attention to unexplained fever, fatigue, and swelling of the joints, noting that these symptoms closely resembled her condition, as if they were united by an unknown force. Rui agreed that the symptoms were identical, as if confirming that the mysterious influence extended not only to the girl, but also to her mother. It seemed like magical poisoning. Usually too much magical power is considered a sign of health, but too much can lead to poisoning, and her mother had a body type that made it difficult to control magical energy. Her body is tormented by the accumulated magical energy, and if it is released, it will begin to accumulate again. Perhaps this is not an easy solution to the problem. Kazaka announced that she had an idea, like a ray of light in the darkness, ready to illuminate the path to a possible solution. She offered to give them her idea for free, like a gift ready to shed light on the dark corners of their mysterious quest. She begged them to try it on the girl, as if staking any hope of successfully testing their shared path to healing. Rui waved his hand, inviting Lona to join him, as if anticipating the moment when a new chapter in their strange healing journey would begin. The guy asked Lona to put it on the girl and use it when she felt tired, creating an opportunity for her to heal through healing. Lona announced that she had a gift, asking if the girl could accept it, as if the offer of a mysterious gift was hanging in the air. Fuya tried to express gratitude but suddenly began to faint, as if emotional stress had overtaken her, leaving confusion and anxiety in its wake. Of course, the girl immediately began to treat her, as if healing magic had been summoned in response to an unexpected fainting spell. Her face instantly takes on a healthy hue, as if the magic of healing spreads through every cell of her body, returning vitality. Ben felt bewildered, could not understand whether it was the effect of the bracelet, as if a mysterious force was hiding its secrets, leading him into a world of mysteries. This is a magical item, a charge bracelet, 
created to accumulate magical energy. When it is filled, the release of magical power outward will begin. However, to her, it seemed to always drain her energy, as if a magical exchange was part of an unexpected journey with this bracelet. The Kazakh woman asked to give her money instead of gratitude, explaining that she bought the bracelet at a big discount from Max and simply spent the money for nothing. Wolf noticed that the girl was blushing, indicating her embarrassment, as if embarrassment bloomed on her cheeks, creating a nonverbal response. After some time, Rui decided to visit Kojiro, as if the clock was ticking, measuring the moment when they would cross paths again. The teacher expressed gratitude for the guy's visit, announcing that the academy was closed for the holidays, and now he had free time. As the guy noted, the man seemed to feel great, as if positive energy and satisfaction surrounded him. It all happened because the protagonist erased the mark of a slave, as if the act of liberation marked the beginning of a new stage in their relationship. Kojiro realized that it was because of him that they were sent on vacation, and he brought trouble to Lagas, as if the shadow of regret lay heavily on his shoulders. The man should have been severely punished, but Yuri took him under his wing, as if his difficult past was in the hands of a man ready to change the outcome of events. So far, he has not been removed from the post of class teacher, as if the educational institution provided him with a temporary refuge, allowing time to heal the wounds. It was as if suddenly an almost sepulchral silence reigned, as if everything around instantly froze, leaving only the echo of previous events. A man was recently told by a jailer that the guy cured his daughter. He saved not only from robbers, but also had a healing effect. The man couldn't even imagine how he could thank the guy for this, as if her daughter's life had received a second chance, leaving behind a debt of gratitude. Rui stated that a man should not be grateful for this, as if the act of healing had become a natural manifestation of her gift, a kind of integral part of her being. After all, at the very least, he simply acted in a natural way, expressing concern and asking her to leave quickly for the good of his own daughter. The man firmly decided that he would never forget his debt. Someday, he would definitely return it. He swears with his commander's mark, as if the promise remained in his heart like a sealed agreement. At this time, Iris seemed alarmed by something, as if the shadow of an indefinite anxiety was approaching, overshadowing the clarity of her usual mood. Although it was still early, the guy was extremely tired and decided to take a nap, as if the need for rest had become the main pressing issue. But his attempts to sleep were interrupted by Iris who at that moment entered the room as if an invisible force of fate had directed her to him. She immediately apologized for her late arrival, explaining that she had a friend gathering information who came for a surprise visit. An interim report on the ruins of the hero was received, as if pieces of the past and future began to sparkle in this information kaleidoscope. When the girl tried to sit on his lap, he remarked that this was not the place to do that, as if the atmosphere called for more formal communication. Iris felt like she had done something wrong, as if the realization of her mistake was reflected in her gaze, creating unnecessary tension in the air. Then she pressed herself as close to the guy as possible, as if trying to smooth out the previous awkwardness and restore communication on a closer level. She even wondered if it was all too fast, as if trying to decipher the fine line between the speed of events and her comfort. The main character realized that this was indeed too close. There are only two people in the room, and they are so close to the bed that it will be difficult for him to concentrate. The girl noticed the guy's worried look, as if the reflection of his anxiety was mirrored in her attentive gaze. Iris was annoyed that the guy was not listening to her, as if an invisible wall of misunderstanding had risen between them. Now, realizing his mistake, he was ready to listen carefully to her, as if awareness of his own inattention had opened up a new perspective for him in communication. The girl decided to tell, so that the information would not leak out, as if the circumstances required clarity and common understanding in a situation full of tension. Since the guy didn't listen to her, she decided to get closer to him. He noticed that this was impossible, as if reality had interrupted their moment, emphasizing the inadmissibility of further physical steps. Although perhaps this attracted him, as if a moment of intimacy left a mark on his perception. Iris wondered if their relationship was a servant-master relationship. At first, she showed him respect, as if trying to decipher the subtle dynamics of their bond. As the companion of the great demon king, she was content enough to help him, as if in her eyes he was not just a servant, but a companion in great deeds. Spending time together, succumbing to his strength and kindness, just looking at him, her soul becomes warm, as if emotional memories warm her inner world. And then for the first time she felt the distance between them. She began to feel jealous of the hero's granddaughter, as if the new element of interaction brought with it difficulties. She realizes that she may not be worth it, but she decides to try anyway, 
as if the desire to cross the border of her feelings became too strong to resist. She asked if the guy wouldn't mind. He could return her feelings. Then she kissed the guy, as if this moment had become decisive in their relationship, filling the space with new, unknown emotions. To my surprise, the guy didn't try to resist at all, as if at that moment he decided to indulge in the flow of feelings, leaving questions and doubts behind. He noticed that it was unusually pleasant, as if in this kiss he had found something that he had been missing for a long time. The girl said that she was very pleased, as if the confirmation of her feelings added warmth to the air and blurred the sharp edges of their misunderstanding. Rui reciprocated. He was flattered that such a girl had feelings for him, as if mutual recognition brought them even closer. Iris asked if she could come down, as if the question became a bridge to return to more mundane questions and activities. Rui said that this was not necessary, as if he gave her freedom of choice, creating an atmosphere of mutual respect and understanding. In fact, she didn't tell him anything, as if a secret was hidden in her eyes, adding heightened interest to the moment. From their first meeting, she fell in love with his sweet face, as if the facial expressions of his face became a magical guide to the world of her feelings. She apologized for ignoring him the first time she met the guy because she felt embarrassed and insecure. Then she thought that someday they would have to be enemies, as if the first impression left its mark on her perception of the situation. Fate is a strange thing. Back then, she didn't think their relationship would develop into this, as if a path that began with uncertainty led them to an unexpected turn. She couldn't stop looking at the guy's sweet face, as if she found something in his features that made her heart beat faster. For a long time, she had wanted to make him blush, as if in this embarrassment she saw a peculiar charm and inexpressible tenderness. The guy only asked to be more gentle, as if his request sounded tender and trembling. Iris apologized for disobeying his request for more gentleness, but then, defying this order, kissed the guy passionately, revealing the reciprocity and her own passion. Meanwhile, Charlotte was sitting in her room, unable to understand who Iris thought she was, as if a mysterious shadow of misunderstanding had passed through her thoughts. She didn't know what she was doing, because if she was attacked, she would come back, as if a mysterious threat lurked in her ignorance and uncertainty. She noticed a brochure from a harvest festival she had attended often as a child, as if memories of past joys had resurfaced in her mind. And in this, she saw some kind of sign from the universe. She understood what was needed, as if the random find had become a reminder and direction for her from the cosmos. While the guy was sleeping, it was time to enjoy his sweet sleeping face, as if these moments of peace brought joy and peace. Using her long nails, the girl decided to sneak into the room, as if her determination and dexterity were the keys to the secret corners. Carefully opening the doors, she immediately asked for forgiveness and wanted to ask something, as if her sudden appearance was accompanied by sincere intentions. To her surprise, she did not notice anyone in the room, as if the emptiness and silence became her silent testimony, and only on the table did she see a note, as if the mysterious message had become her only guide in this quiet emptiness. It was a note from Charlotte, where she said that she had taken the guy and asked everyone to go to his room, as if mysterious courses of events were developing under her leadership. There was no longer any warmth left on the bed, so that meant that they had long since left, as if the empty bed was evidence of their temporary absence. She agreed and now takes her for a rival in love. Next time she will not give in to her, as if a hot struggle for attention and feelings had flared up in her heart. At this time, the couple was directly running somewhere, as if their haste was evidence of urgent concerns or exciting events. The guy, waking up in the morning and finding that she was in his room, was scared. He would have been grateful if she had given advance notice that they would be leaving, since the surprise had caused misunderstandings and anxiety. And then the gaze of a couple of girls fell somewhere in the distance, as if something had attracted their attention in the distant future. This is the trading country of Bloom, as if the name of the place carried a hint of prosperity and variety of trading opportunities. They really use ships as homes, as if sea travel has become not only a means of transportation for them, but also a way of life. A state city on the seashore, founded long ago by a great merchant, it is called the largest port on the mainland, as if its history is imbued with great trading traditions. Usually there are more people in the capital, but today there are a little more people here, all because today is the first day of the fertility festival, as if a festive atmosphere filled the streets of the city. The main character was incredibly happy, because for the first time he came to some festival, as if enthusiasm and excitement filled his heart. He immediately grabbed his girlfriend's hand and told them to go, as if the excitement of discovering a new adventure had visibly awakened his resolve. Charlotte slightly did not expect such abruptness from the guy, as if his unexpected energy gave their walk an unexpected pace. She noticed that they hadn't gone on a date together in a long time, 
and she was glad that she brought him, as if remembering how nice it was to spend time together gave them a special mood. And then their journey into the world of adventure began, as if every step at the festival opened up new interesting opportunities for them. They both had as much fun as they could, as if every moment at the festival became a reason for laughter and joy. It was just time for a snack, as if appetite had become an involuntary companion of their exciting journey through the gastronomic delights of the festival. Rui really enjoyed the food, as well as everything else about the festival, as if the delicious food had become an integral part of his positive experience of the event. So they will be cheerful for the second half of the day. Charlotte's fish soup is also very tasty, as if the delightful impressions left them with energy and satisfaction. However, all the stores she showed were good, as if the selection of offers pleased them with variety and quality. There were even magical objects that Max probably didn't have. Somehow they continued to meet him, as if the mystery of magic added a new element of interest to their everyday life. He, Wolf, and Burn also see each other often. I don't know what happened, but they somehow found a common language, as if the invisible ties of friendship became stronger. Charlotte asked the guy not to worry, because she had already planned everything, as if her confidence added comfort and confidence in future events. To be honest, this made the main character laugh, as if the unexpected course of events added lightness and playfulness to the situation. He asked the girl for forgiveness after he saw her face, as if caring about her feelings became more important to him than jokes. He just feels like an ordinary student when they walk him around so calmly, as if the ordinariness of the moment creates a pleasant sense of normalcy. From the moment he decided to save his little sister with Rio, he only thought about how long he would have to fight alone to achieve his goal. He did not think that he would spend such a peaceful time, as if life had surprisingly changed its ways. The girl kindly called him a fool, as if the playful abuse had become another link in their friendly relationship. They really may be a little unusual, as if the originality gives their relationship a special charm. But this does not mean that they cannot be satisfied with something ordinary, as if in simple joys they find their uniqueness. Maybe because they try so hard, they have the right to everything and faces more than others, as if their efforts give special meaning to every moment. Rui completely agreed with this as if in the unity of thoughts and feelings they found the harmony of their existence. For some reason, he really began to think too much, as if a shadow of misunderstanding had covered his thoughts. Charlotte offered to go already, because she had not yet had enough fun, as if the anticipation of the fun made her look forward to the continuation of the adventure. The main character looked at the girl and how happy she was with a smile on his face, as if his own happiness was closely connected with the joy he brought to her. Still, they bought something, the guy, as always, bought something incomprehensible, as if his interest in unusual things was an eternal source of surprise. The fun passed for him as if in an instant, he wondered how many more stores they would go to, as if his curiosity knew no bounds. But suddenly, all the fun in the guy's eyes ended after one mention of his name, as if a wave of seriousness and anxiety covered his soul. Out of nowhere and out of nowhere, Elena appeared behind the guy, as if she had emerged from the shadows, ready to bring new twists to their adventures. Charlotte could not understand what was going on, as if Elena's mysterious appearance had brought mystery and unsolved mysteries into her world. The main character was clearly not happy about the girl's appearance, as if her appearance disturbed his peace and caused misunderstanding. He immediately began to wonder where she came from here, as if trying to reveal the secret of her appearance in their world. Now she was convinced that it was still a guy. She had been looking for him for a long time, as if solving a riddle that had been tormenting her mind for a long time. She didn't think he would leave the village and become an adventurer, as if imagining his future had changed her view of him. Elena had clearly been preparing for this meeting for a long time. Her gaze expressed secret plans and long hidden feelings. As an adventurer, you can earn money and travel to different countries. It was a very convenient profession. It took a lot of effort to find him, but she still turned out to be strong. She quickly advanced to silver rank. Elena, noticing the determination in the guy's eyes, decided to invite him for a walk. And at that moment, on a magical night, she said that she forgives him for his previous rejection, opening the door to a new chapter in their relationship. In a world of magic and mystery, where destinies are intertwined, she, like a gentle shield, will cherish him again. Her love is an invisible armor in the storm of life. Perhaps her intentions were hidden in manipulation, because this, apparently, was not a simple defense. In her presence, he did not know how to relax. Naturally, her words caused a wave of anger in the girl, stirring up the inner fire of intransigence. If he desires misfortune, let him follow this dark path where shadows envelop the soul, for light and joy will be far from him. Charlotte politely asked if she could squeeze in, eager to find comfort in their conversation. 
Charlotte said that the girl is free from obligations to the guy and can choose not to communicate with him. Now she takes care of him, as if she has become his invisible protector. Lena perceives Charlotte as the girl's mistress, aware of the upcoming date, and therefore is not going to interfere, leaving them to enjoy the moment together. Elena couldn't believe it. The lady turned out to be more than just a childhood friend. Charlotte's gaze embodied something deeper and mystical. Earlier, the guy mentioned her to Charlotte, but she did not imagine that he was dating such an unusual girl, as if he was revealing the secrets of the world to her. If Elena wanted a fight, then Charlotte was ready. But if she was afraid, then it was probably best for her to return to her village and avoid conflict. These words ignited anger in Elena, and she became ready for any possible action, despite the consequences. The readiness to kill Charlotte right on the spot pierced Elena's soul, clouded her mind, and swallowed her heart with a dark wave of revenge. Politely addressing the guy, the girl asked him to look after her purse, as if showing unobtrusive concern for her property. Then, like a wolf, she stretched out for her sword, ready for a virtuosic blade dance in battle, personifying strength and determination. Having said that she was going to cut off all their ties, she said it with such determination, as if she was tearing off the last invisible cord connecting their worlds. Elena lacked patience and resolutely attacked first, as if releasing an internal flow of passion and determination. Of course, Charlotte easily deflected this blow, as if dancing with the wind, allowing her to masterfully soar in the air, avoiding a collision. At this time, the main character was still in a state of shock, stunned by the development of events, as if floating with the flow of fate. He noted that Elena had gained considerable strength since leaving the village, as if her time away from him had allowed her to accumulate incredible energy. Her words were true. His sword was fast but heavy, and she wielded it deftly, using the weapon with incredible ease and skill. After uttering these words, even greater anger flared up in Elena, as if a fiery storm of intransigence flared up in her soul. She couldn't understand why each of her attacks missed Charlotte aimlessly, as if she were shrouded in an invisible shield of immunity. Charlotte, as if seeking to break the prolonged stalemate, decided to strike, as if summoning a force capable of overcoming Elena's resistance. Deciding to use the Brave Cherry Petals technique, Charlotte created a beautiful and deadly whirlwind attack, as if scattering indomitable petals around her, summoned to the Dance of Fate. In addition, Sakura's aspiration, acting as a powerful technique, enhanced the effectiveness of her attack, as if natural forces were supporting her stamina and determination. Elena, it seems, will not forgive Charlotte for anything, as if a strong determination arose in her heart not to forget and not to forgive. She couldn't comprehend how Charlotte dared to seduce her with Rui, as if it was an incredible betrayal that deeply wounded her trust. Charlotte felt as if she saw herself in Elena before she met the guy, as if her own path was reflected in the mirror of time. Boasting of her gift, Charlotte, when faced with failures, showed her hysteria, as if it was difficult for her to come to terms with the fact that not everything was going according to her plan. The main character changed her, and Charlotte felt gratitude to him for this, as if he were the architect of her changes. Elena remained perplexed, could not understand why Charlotte decided to free herself from the sword, as if from a symbol of her strength and steadfastness. The girl came to the idea that if Elena did not attack, it could mean that she was admitting defeat, as if giving Charlotte freedom of choice. Elena was losing track of how to express her anger vividly, as if she had exhausted all ways to express her anger in this situation. Then, naturally, she decided to attack again, as if trying to regain control and prove her strength. Charlotte once again chose to use the Brave Cherry Petals technique, as if creating a whirlwind of invisible but deadly blades around herself. Only this time she used a move called Petal Flash, as if adding a new, unexpected dimension to her attack. In this fight, Charlotte looked much more powerful than Elena, as if her strength and skill shimmered in every movement, asserting her superiority. As expected, Elena was unable to defeat Charlotte and only fell, as if realizing her defeat in this battle. Rui just watched all this ups and downs in silence, shocked, as if trying to comprehend all the chaos unfolding before his eyes. Charlotte clearly expressed joy at being able to protect not only herself, but also the guy, as if she had found satisfaction in her determination and strength. Then, with a smile on her face, she waved her hand to the main character, as if to sign her gratitude for his role in this unusual theater of events. The guy admitted that the situation seemed frightening, as if he was aware of the seriousness of what was happening, and its impact on their world. Even after explaining what had happened, they were still pursued, and it was lucky that they were somehow able to return to the capital, as if carried away by a whirlwind of incomprehensible events. The girl began to apologize for disrupting his first festival, as if feeling responsible for the unsuccessful conclusion of events. 
But the main character did not think that there was any problem in this, as if appreciating the importance of the moment and looking at the situation with optimism. Plus, he added that she was truly amazing, as if finding great qualities in her that outweighed the bad parts. Suddenly, she began to train Qigong, focusing only in front, and became stronger, as if new energy and determination had awakened in her soul. In response to this, when he saw Elena, he instantly fell down, as if feeling like a failure in comparison with her inner strength. It seems that in this situation, it is difficult for him to find the strength to become stronger, as if he feels his own limitations in the fight against current circumstances. Charlotte instantly grabbed the guy's hand and walked with him somewhere, as if holding his hand, she was opening up new horizons before them. Dragging him to the bed, she declared that she had become stronger thanks to him, taking him as a model, as if in his presence, she found strength and inspiration. Although the main character did not expect such a turn of events, he felt touched by this, as if something unexpected and pleasant had awakened in his heart. He was only frightened by such a girl, but this does not change who he is, as if his own stable personality traits remain inside him. Rui was glad that a person appeared in his life whom he could trust and discuss everything, as if he had found his support and understanding in this regard. Although it is difficult for him to admit, simply forgetting this girl turned out to be a difficult task for him, as if her influence had left a deep mark on his heart. Charlotte promised to make him forget her, as if her eyes sparkled with determination to erase the memories of her previous girlfriend. After that, she kissed him passionately, as if this kiss was a promise of a new beginning and oblivion of previous difficulties. For the first time, she yielded to him, realizing that she also needed to become more experienced in these sensual moments, as if discovering new facets of her own desires. Charlotte promised that she would try all day to make him forget, as if trying to create moments of weightlessness and pleasure for him. The main character apologized for everyone constantly paying attention to him, as if aware of his role in the spotlight. But Charlotte did not attach any importance to this, as if for her the lack of time was just an insignificant factor in their communication. Elena, after the battle, still could not come to her senses and was ready to go to extremes, even to the point of thinking about killing Charlotte. She couldn't comprehend how Charlotte dared to desecrate her boyfriend, as if in her eyes it was supernatural audacity. At that moment, a stranger approached the girl and asked if he could ask her something, as if the sudden appearance of a stranger added a new twist to events. The man introduced himself by the name of Thorn, as if adding to the mystery of his appearance in this already tense environment. He said that he was helping find the way for lost lambs, as if his arrival turned out to be some kind of strange salvation at this moment. Elena stated that he looked suspicious and did not want to talk to him, as if she felt something mystical and disturbing in his presence. The man was still able to hold the girl by mentioning her hated enemy and the person she seeks to win back, as if these words had an effect on her, making her think. The stranger asked to believe him, clarifying whether what he was saying was true, as if casting doubt on his veracity. The man said that he knows all these details because he is a pastor and is able to sense people's weaknesses, claiming that they can help Elena. Elena could not comprehend what the man meant when he spoke of saving her, as if his words remained a secret incomprehensible and mysterious to her. No matter how he looks, he is actually well-placed in a large organization. If she wants help, they can help solve her problems, as if providing new perspectives and opportunities. Elena noticed that it all really looked very suspicious, as if every element of this incident was filled with mystery and uncertainty. But if, like today, she misses the guy again, it's as if doubt and fear of loss are tormenting her heart. In the worst case, you can beat them up and just leave. She is just going to use them and nothing more, as if her goal is to survive at any cost. Elena stated that she agreed to the man's terms, as if making a decision that she believed could ensure her survival and protection. Elena was curious about what kind of organization this was, as if she was trying to unravel the veil of secrecy surrounding this mysterious man and his proposal. He said that he was a member of an organization called the Church of Genesis, confident that she would definitely like the name, as if assuming that she would find something attractive in it. The man was disappointed that nothing was known about the Demon King until now, as if his expectations and hopes for new information remained unfulfilled. He reminded that the subordinate is trying harder at his job, as if calling for greater dedication and diligence in performing his duties. Three hundred years have passed since separation from Rui's sister Alice, and he has aged greatly, as if time had left its inevitable mark on him. However, after more than a century of searching, there is not a single clue, and there are very few who are looking for her seriously as if the mystery of her disappearance remained unsolved and forgotten. A guy approached the man and asked if she could talk to him for a moment, as if the appearance of a new face brought some change to the routine. The guy's name was Jason, 
as if the new name gave him individuality and mystery in this difficult world. Three hundred years have passed since the mistress disappeared, and the inhabitants of the demon territory began to show dissatisfaction due to the long absence of their king, as if the power and order in their world began to be shaken. Recently, wars have begun, as if demons deprived of their ruler fall into chaos and struggle for power, bringing with them destruction and anxiety. And this was just the beginning, as if the shadows of future storms were already darkly stretching ahead, foreshadowing even greater trials and changes. The man was furious at the news that there was a new contender for the throne, as if his power was under threat, and this made him angry and worried. The man is almost the only protector of the demon king's family. The guy realizes that angering him is in vain, and it is probably better for him not to worry about the possible consequences. As he said earlier, due to the absence of a king, the inhabitants of the demon territory have a hard time, however. Thanks to him, the country was not left without a ruler, and this prevents complete chaos from disintegrating. But this still cannot continue for long, as if the pressure of circumstances and the instability of power are slowly but surely eroding the foundations of a demonic society. The man agreed that there was some truth in this, but it was wrong to assume that he was not looking for a replacement, as if recognizing his secret desire to find a worthy heir. Jason confidently declared that he would become the new king, as if challenging the current protector of the demon king's lineage. It is clear that the man was not just angry, but simply furious after hearing what he heard, as if his emotions flared up and turned into a storm of indignation. Jason's gaze, on the contrary, was very confident and calm, as if he did not have the slightest doubt about his words and actions. The man said that the guy had simply wasted his time and asked him not to come into his sight again, as if stopping any discussions and putting an end to their meeting. Someone approached the guy and said that he was great, as if expressing recognition for his determination and courage in a difficult situation. They asked Jason how it all went, as if expecting details about the meeting with the man and the conversation about claiming the throne. He began to say that, as the prime minister said, he was too devoted to the country, and better than others, he did not involve himself in this either, as if conveying the assessment of his situation by senior officials. The man who appeared said that they would then ask them themselves, as if hinting that fate might bring unexpected turns. It was Minister Gran who heard their conversation, as if suddenly intervening in events and leaving his mark on the turns of history. He was interested and asked for more details, as if trying to unravel the mystery and understand what forces and influences were currently operating in their demonic society. However, everything that the guy tells further will become a big secret. He has one condition, as if hinting that this information is not intended for a wide range of people. He wants permission to enter human territory, as if raising the question of the need for cooperation and interaction between two different worlds. Indeed, if he gives him permission, he will be able to pass, as if opening up the opportunity for the guy to interact with the human world. A long time ago, when the hero ogre defeated the demon king, it was as if a legendary story about the struggle between different worlds and forces began. There was a war between three races, demons, beastmen, and humans. A great war, in which the continuation of the race of each of the races was at stake, like a clash of destinies and survival. It divided the territory where the demon king lives and the territory where people and beast people live, and everything has remained that way until today, as if the borders drawn in that distant period of the war remained unchanged. If they are caught, it could lead to execution, like a hanging threat for violating centuries-old rules and laws. Well, the guy couldn't understand what the man was waiting for, and asked if it was time to return to the era when demons were the strongest, as if offering to look at the past in search of solutions to current problems. In the dark corridors, a man, brave and determined, meets his fate and becomes a hero saving demons, his sword sparkling, piercing the darkness, and releasing light in their world. Having met a mysterious woman with eyes sparkling under the moonlight, the man was clearly aflame with passion. In her gaze he found something that stirred his soul. Jason realized that a new piece had appeared in his game, a pawn, and finally the moment of revenge had come when he would make his move and change the course of fate. He will take revenge, although it is not clear for what, but Jason intends to direct his revenge towards Alice, as if in the shadows of the past there is a secret hiding that requires unraveling. At this time, the main character, his fears coming true in his eyes, entered the vast expanses of endless hell, where darkness swallowed up every glimmer of hope. Angry at Rio's actions towards the guy, Alice looked excitedly in his direction, a wave of misunderstanding and disappointment raging in her heart. She, embarrassed and confused, decided to defuse the tense situation, 
and in a light mocking tone asked how much time she would have to spend on the guy's lap. Alice noted dissatisfiedly that she had to sit on her knees more often than she would like, while in turn, she never preferred this position. The main character, not paying attention to this, believed that there was no problem in this, not realizing the dissatisfaction and disappointment that Alice concealed within herself. Rio embroidered fun into every minute with the fabric of her mood, generously decorating life with smiles and funny stories, trying to bring her sister out of seriousness and into the world of laughter. The guy, being at the exciting peak of his story, asked if he had time to share the details of his adventure in the dungeon, revealing all the secrets of the hero and the information discovered. On the canvas of the performance, where he was depicted surrounded by three faithful friends, the image of not just a hero emerged, but a great monarch, ruler of three worlds. The images of the fairy king and the snake king were spinning in his mind, and he believed that it was they, this trinity of mysterious lords, who could reveal the secrets of the hero, although there was almost negligible information about the snake king. Fairies in Lamia, preferring to avoid contact with other races, became mysterious creatures, and the girl had no idea where traces of their presence could be found. Alice, having no information about the whereabouts of the fairies in Lamia, made Rio feel even more lost in this mysterious web of unknown areas. The disillusioned protagonists realized that even their own sisters did not have the information they needed, and the question of how to find out became a mystery along a foggy path. Rio supported the guy, assuring him that there was nothing scary on the unknown path, and that he would definitely be able to cope with the challenges facing him. In recognition of her confidence in him, she decided to give the guy an award, symbolizing his strength and determination in climbing unknown paths. The reward was a kiss, which became a sincere treasure, emphasizing not only her recognition of his perseverance, but also awakening new feelings in him. Then, as if transporting their feelings to a more intimate dimension, they easily found a more comfortable position, plunging into the world of ascent together. For Alice, this became a clear sign of the beginning of a war between her and her sister, in the struggle for attention and recognition, which so suddenly found itself in the arms of a guy. Rio, due to her own desires, asked not to interfere with the act of love, which became a kind of response to the challenges thrown by their sisters to each other. Alice, deciding to use a technique called high fire, attempted to change the dynamics of the war by introducing an element of surprise and force into her strategy. The next morning, the guy was almost all aching after a serious reception from his sisters, and he realized that the war between them had added its share of emotional intrigue and incredible intensity. Iris, penetrating the guy, showed concern and interest, asking how he was feeling and how he managed to sleep after an unusual evening full of passion and struggle. Iris, entering the guy's room, expressed concern and interest, asking how he was feeling and how the night was filled with passion and surprises. Rui was surprised that Iris showed up surprisingly early this morning, leaving him somewhat amazed at the unexpected change in routine. Iris, having shown her caring nature, turned out to be so devoted that she was even ready to take care of even such little things as wiping up after a guy. Rui, having reconsidered the situation, invited Iris to join them in the library, creating a moment of possible unity in this stream of unusual events. Iris had a meeting planned with friends who were collecting information from various regions of the mainland, which created an important and obligatory activity for her. The main character shared his desire to learn more about the hero's friends and expressed his intention to read something in order to better understand their stories and characteristics. Iris reported that, as far as she knew, there was a vast amount of material in the capital's library archives that provided information about the hero's friends that might be of interest to them. He realized that this represented a difficult task, but he firmly believed that he could find all the necessary information and solve the mysteries buried in the library's archives. Still, it turned out to be really difficult, and the main character went deep into research, reading several volumes with the same tenacity and determination. Ben and Lona were also in the library at the time, and their presence created an atmosphere of collaborative searching and sharing of information, somewhat resembling a team effort. Ben felt anger as Rui constantly searched for subtext in their presence in the library, seeing it as something deeper than just a general search for information. The main character noticed how serious Ben and Calm Lona, despite internal tension, began to move closer to each other, creating invisible connections in this world of knowledge. Without thinking too much, Ben expressed his willingness to help the protagonist, creating a moment of solidarity and understanding between them. Rui expressed his desire to learn more about the Lamias and fairies, emphasizing his interest in expanding knowledge about these mysterious creatures. Ben advised Rui to read a specific book and went after it, showing his concern and willingness to share his knowledge. 
Ben reported that there are no records of anyone seeing Lamia and fairies, but it seems that the book in question contains several hints and information in this regard. Lamia are a mysterious race with abundant abilities matched only by demons and a unique ability only available to them. Queen Lamia has a unique ability called the Third Eye, which allows her to see into the future several centuries into the future, making her the owner of an amazing gift of foresight. After treating his wounds from a poisonous snake bite, the Lamia instantly disappeared into the dense jungle, leaving the recovered hero alone with the mysteries of their mysterious world. But if you think about the fact that their unique ability can be used for malicious purposes, then it is probably better for everyone to stay away from connections with these mysterious creatures. Unfortunately, Ben doesn't even know anything about fairies. He doesn't even know if they really exist. Ben assured the guy that if he needed any more information or help, he could safely reach out, revealing his willingness to support in his search for knowledge. Rui decided to make an effort and aim to actively strive to achieve his goal, engaging in a struggle with secrets and riddles. At this time, the stranger also seemed to be holding some kind of book in his hands, creating the feeling that each of them held in their hands the key to unknown knowledge. Before entering the gate, the guard demanded to stop and grant permission, creating a moment of tension in anticipation of the important entrance. The permit turned out to be genuine, but they also needed to check the contents of the carriages following behind, increasing attention to detail and ensuring security inside the gate. A colossal horse towered in front of the guy, creating an impression of grandeur and power, like a living guardian of the entrance to this mysterious world. Five giant horses, rare even among demons, along with ten carriages were heading into human territory, creating an impressive and mystical caravan full of unexpected mysteries. A guy named Jason revealed that the purpose of the visit was related to something outside of human territory, creating intrigue around the intentions and nature of this mysterious appearance. And to be precise, outside the capital of the Kingdom of Escador, Jason added, revealing a more specific direction of his mission and stirring up the interest of others. Jason asked the man if he understood everything correctly, clarifying the details and confirming his intention to head outside the capital. The subordinate conveyed information to the commander that all other carriages also had permission to enter, eliminating possible obstacles to their passage. The commander instructed the guy to tell Mr. Portofino about this just in case, warning against possible misunderstandings and emphasizing the importance of timely information. The subordinate approached Jason and asked if he could have a conversation with him, expressing his desire to exchange information or ask questions. He noticed that the boss was in a great mood, as he even played a melody under his nose, creating a cheerful and light atmosphere. Jason revealed that the book would prove useful to his plan, revealing hints of strategic motives and mysterious intentions. The guy did not hesitate to express that for him, this book looked just like an ordinary book, without anticipating any special attention. Jason claimed that finding this book was destiny and believed that the heavens were his sign to become king, paving the way for him to greatness. There was a small village nearby, a small corner where life was housed, and its presence provided a contrast to Jason's mysterious secrets and plans. Jason, the brilliant leader, decided to give his subject something incredible. He planned to capture a neighboring village in order to stage a spectacular show of destruction and panic, bringing a dose of unpredictability and adrenaline into their everyday life. He summoned all his strength to prevent the capture, for he understood that in this clash, not only his own well-being was at stake, but also the fate of the entire village. The guy, having heard such news, expressed surprise and stated that Jason, in his opinion, turned out to be unexpectedly kind, sometimes hidden under the guise of an imperious leader. Spide was assigned to go down, and he, accepting the challenge, stepped down, preparing for a new test, despite the possible difficulties and surprises that could await him below. The guy openly stated that Spide had the right to do whatever he wanted with them, giving him power and control in this situation, as if submitting to a kind of game or test. Spide was left in shock, unable to believe what had happened, his mind rejecting the idea that he had been given such unlimited freedom and control. He is well aware of how the demons have been enjoying the fun of late using their sinister abilities, and this knowledge has filled his heart with worry and caution. Thus, this marked the beginning of a new, unpredictable fun war, where every moment promised to be filled with excitement and laughter, but at the same time riddled with uncertainty and risk. Spide really enjoyed this, enjoying the fun of a new war where every move brought him indescribable joy, giving him intense emotions and adrenaline. It was great for Jason to sit back with a glass of wine and watch the fun war, like an epic show, where each demon fighting became an actor in this amazing and bloodthirsty production. The man flared up with anger, unable to understand how the guy's subjects could afford this, 
because it caused bewilderment and anxiety in his soul. This wasn't a problem for Jason. On the contrary, he enjoyed chaos and unpredictability, seeing it as a source of fun and entertainment. Jason suggested that if a man was so afraid of being discovered, the guy could arrange everything so that there would be no evidence left, promising that the traces would disappear unseen and his secret would be preserved. Then, in the midst of the village's devastation, Jason himself joined her, adding his mark to this chaotic mosaic of fun and destruction. In just a split second, in the literal sense of the word, there was nothing left of the village. It disappeared, becoming an entertainment field of destruction under the rule of Jason and his subjects. Indeed, Jason was a psychotic, capable of madness, and his potential to become a demon king was enormous, reflecting his strength and untamed nature. However, it seemed like it wasn't enough to cause chaos in just one small village, and Jason had already begun to think about how to expand his power and chaos to a larger area. He hoped that the capital would be the ideal place for new entertainment and an outlet for his unbridled desire for fun and chaos. As a result, the main character did not discover anything about the Snake King or the Fairy Queen, with the exception of the book that Ben recommended to him, leaving the hero waiting for new mysteries and adventures. Charlotte suddenly appeared in front of the guy, adding mystery to his quest and causing excitement with her unexpected appearance. Charlotte revealed that she met the girl and Ben in the city, and they told her that he was in the library, deciding to wait and make a joke. Charlotte seemed unable to catch him off guard. If his business in the library was completed, then Charlotte invited him to go home, warning him of a possible secret that she could reveal. He informed Iris that he needed to visit the library without revealing his plans to Charlotte and leaving her in the dark about his motives. He did not share with Charlotte the real purpose of his studies at the academy, fearing that if he told the truth, she would not believe him, which is why he did not tell Iris about his visit to the library. It would probably be a shock to her to learn that the ancestor she believed in was connected to his studies at the academy, and so he decided not to reveal this information. He discovered that his ancestor was the one who sealed the good demon and dragon kings, putting him in a difficult position and forcing him to hide the truth from Charlotte. If Charlotte found out that he was seeking to release the sealed good demon and dragon kings, it could put her in an unpleasant position, so he chose to hide his true intentions. Charlotte also noticed that the guy was thoughtful and anxious, which caused her concern, the feeling that there was something hidden in his soul that he was not ready to reveal. But he assured that everything was fine and suggested not to continue the conversation, as if trying to close a topic that he did not want to open. Charlotte stopped abruptly and stated that although she did not know what he was hiding, she did not intend to persuade him to reveal his secrets, respecting his decision. Charlotte once again emphasized that he was completely free to say nothing if he didn't want to, reaffirming her respect for his privacy and choice to keep secrets. Sincerely expressing her faith in him, Charlotte assured that they trusted him, supporting him in any decision and accepting him without conditions. If he believes it is better not to reveal his secret, she is ready to simply listen to him, recognizing his right to personal intimacy and choice to remain silent. The guy was surprised by the girl's reaction, but at the same time realized that he could continue to manipulate her, so she had to be prepared for this and closely monitor the situation. Yuri was curious what happened, since his father had not invited him to his place for a long time, creating a mysterious atmosphere and raising questions about the reasons for such a long silence. However, instead of inviting him into the common room, his father called him into his private room, emphasizing that the conversation should be confidential and secret. A few seconds later, Yuri and his subject entered his father's room, ready for a secret conversation and attentive to any possible details. Now it became clear who Yuri took after. They were like two peas in a pod with his father, reflecting the similarity of character and behavior, which could not help but attract the attention of others. The father said that he would now make tea and invited them to take a sitting position, creating an atmosphere of comfort and preparing for a frank conversation. A few minutes later, the tea was ready filling the room with a pleasant aroma and creating a cozy atmosphere for continuing the conversation. The atmosphere between father and son was pleasant and kind, filling the room with warmth as if they were enjoying their moments together. Recently, there was a message about the arrival of a messenger from the country of demons in the capital, which, despite the usual, gave the event a special mystery and interest. It is clear that after such information, both guys were in complete shock, faced with unexpected and potentially dangerous circumstances. Yuri was curious to know what the goals of the envoy from the Land of Demons were and when he intended to arrive in the capital, creating a sense of the unknown and mysterious in the upcoming events. Yuri did not know where to put his nerves after learning that the messenger from the Land of Demons intended to arrive tomorrow, 
filling his feelings with tension and anxiety. The father asked Yuri to remain calm, claiming that he hoped they could maintain composure when faced with the arrival of an envoy from the Land of Demons. Taking into account the risk of attack, you will have to invite the envoy to the palace and then move away from the city with him, avoiding potential dangers. This is all just guesswork for now, but apparently this is solely the decision of the minister, who is showing a belligerent mood. The father asked Yuri to carry out the evacuation, emphasizing the seriousness of the situation and the need to safely leave the possible conflict zone. The most important thing now is that the royal bloodline is not interrupted, even if something unexpected happens to the father, emphasizing the importance of maintaining the chain of inheritance. The man immediately apologized to the guy for his unusual request, recognizing the possible emotional and moral burden associated with such a request. The man announced that he was transferring responsibility for the future of this country to his subject, doing this with special solemnity and hope for prosperity. The guy assured that he would protect Yuri even at the cost of his life, expressing devotion and determination in protecting the future of the country and its leader. The father realized that he had raised his sons correctly, and there was nothing better for him than to see them show loyalty and responsibility at a critical time. He thought to himself that even if the demons attacked, his sons would still not let the country fall, expressing confidence in their ability to protect and preserve the country's prosperity. Some guard at the gate expressed a desire to return home, expressing his feelings of fatigue or dissatisfaction with the current situation. A man asked Carlos where his energy had gone, expressing curiosity or surprise at the changes in his mood or behavior. As it turns out, it was a commander named Echol, providing information about the identity of the one asking the question about Carlos's energy loss. Carlos was indeed surprised by such a meeting with Commander Echol, feeling surprise and perhaps some misunderstanding in the situation. The commander behaves with dignity, even after being notified of the impending demon attack, demonstrating the example of the kingdom's shield and confirming the expectations of its reliable protection. Allowing highly skilled riders to enter the capital too quickly could cause disaster due to the potential for chaos and poor horse handling in confined spaces. The commander issued orders to assemble all of the country's carriages in preparation for evacuation or mobile deployment to ensure rapid and efficient transport if necessary. Jason expressed his gratitude for his willingness to receive them and introduced himself as a subject of Minister Grands, named Jason, establishing contact and demonstrating his willingness to cooperate. In response, the commander thanked them for their journey, expressing recognition and respect for those who are ready to take on the challenge in conditions of uncertainty and tension. The commander introduced himself, oddly enough, as the commander of the Knights of the Royal Escador named Echol. Having never expected a meeting, the man realized that in front of him stood the shield of the kingdom. He was well acquainted with the heroic deeds of this great military leader, whose deeds had become legends among the inhabitants. Hearing the commander's confident words that he was well aware of the man's exploits, he suddenly asked him, wondering what he himself thought about it. Then, without wasting any time, we proposed to resolve the conflict by force right away, insisting on instant reconciliation. Jason intervened in a timely manner, stopping and offering an apology to the commander, to which he replied with a smile that he did not see any problems in this and was ready to forgive. The commander offered to take us to the palace in these carriages, leading our horses, and promised us his own supervision at the guard gate. The relieved commander expressed his joy that they had managed to temporarily avoid disaster, while his main goal of protecting the country and the king remained at the very center of his concerns. At this time, the main characters, Charlotte and her companion, were in the classroom, immersed in the fascinating world of knowledge and discoveries. The girls were surprised why the guy knew nothing about demons, and began an interesting conversation, revealing the secrets of the supernatural in the world that surrounded them. By the way, Charlotte was uncomfortable with the fact that demons had appeared in the capital, and she sincerely wished that her friends would quickly return to confront this evil sign together. By the way, before he met his sister, he himself thought that there might be good ones among the demons, but not everyone knows about it. No one knew that Iris was also a demon, and it remained a hidden secret, adding to the mystery of her personality. When his sister returned from endless hell, he dreamed that people would be able to make friends with her, but he realized that it would be very difficult. At this time, the main character noticed that Iris was sitting nearby, giving the moment special excitement and an unexpected turn of events. Approaching Iris, he asked if she would be fine and if she was connected to demons, trying to find out the truth and calm his worries. Iris revealed that vampires have the ability to change their appearance and warned that if she was discovered, there would be a commotion, adding to the mystery of her existence. She remembered asking at the vampire meeting the day before yesterday, and she was told that no one was sent to Escador. 
which confused her and created mysterious secrets. Only now she was informed that a demon named Jason was involved in the case, about whom there was a lot of bad gossip, adding intrigue to the solution. The main character thanked for the information and assured that he would remember this demon named Jason, as if ready to face the mysteries and challenges that had yet to be solved. When the teacher entered the classroom, the main character noted that it was not possible to start yet, since Yuri and Ibuki did not show up, emphasizing the importance of their presence. The teacher announced that Yuri had health problems, so he was absent, and at the same time apologized for the brevity of lessons today, explaining that recent events had created certain difficulties in the schedule. The main character was very surprised because Yuri had never missed a lesson until today, and even had his lessons cut short, and all this happened right when the demons came. Although the time for the end of the lesson was a little early, the teacher announced that that was all for today, asking to be careful on the way home, as if anticipating possible difficulties. Rui was finally free. He planned to go to the cafeteria and eat as always, and then go home. Charlotte offered to go somewhere with her guy if he was free. The main character, with wide eyes, looked for an answer in bewilderment, unable to comprehend the reason why all this happened again, as if a mysterious turn of fate had disrupted his routine. Charlotte stood in bewilderment because she couldn't understand why Iris was with them, because she had only invited a guy. She explained her presence, claiming that it was her responsibility to be with the master. Confusion flashed in her eyes, but she stood firm in her opinion. Of course, adding that if Charlotte doesn't like something, she is supposed to be free to move to another place without unnecessary hassles and complaints, to make it comfortable and easy for her. Classmates were happily informed that their order was ready and this news of the successful completion of their selection filled them with pleasant satisfaction, creating a pleasant feeling of joy and satisfaction. It is also worth emphasizing that all this seemed truly appetizing, which combined with a pleasant notification that the order was ready, created a tempting prospect of tasty pleasure, inspiring real gastronomic pleasure. The main character completely immersed himself in pleasure, fully enjoying the delicious food that was brought to him, forming a moment of complete satisfaction and true joy around himself. Noticing that he was dirty, Iris immediately began to help him, showing care and friendliness at this unexpected moment, creating an atmosphere of attention and support. From the expression on her face, it became clear that she was alarmed by the girl's behavior, reflecting anxiety and bewilderment at the unexpected actions of her interlocutor, creating an atmosphere of misunderstanding and anxiety. She was sure that Iris was doing this on purpose, demonstrating her actions right in her presence, causing her a feeling of dissatisfaction and irritation. After that, she decided to take action and was ready to tell the guy something important, taking responsibility for conveying information, creating an environment of seriousness and readiness to act. Then she suddenly just licked it, creating a moment of confusion and surprise with her unexpected action, giving the situation a strange cast and raising questions in the air. And after that, she gratefully expressed her gratitude and said that everything was delicious, ending the meeting with a positive review, creating a pleasant impression and ending the meeting in a good mood. Of course, the main character could not understand what was happening here and was slightly alarmed, feeling some awkwardness and misunderstanding of the situation, creating an atmosphere of mystery and slight anxiety. Everyone else present will also always be in shock at what is happening, creating an atmosphere of surprise and bewilderment among everyone present leaving a trace of mystery and surprising excitement in the room. Iris then offered her pancake to Rui with a smile on her face, creating a warm and pleasant environment where the delicacy became not only a symbol of taste, but also a sign of friendship, blossoming in an atmosphere of mutual understanding. Immediately after this, Charlotte began to offer her cake, adding to the atmosphere of fun and sharing of treats, creating a delicious moment in their communication together, where taste and joy became an integral part of this pleasant evening. The guy was at a loss, could not understand what was happening, because he saw how both girls were competing for his attention, and did not know how to behave in this situation, feeling a mixture of surprise and bewilderment. It was difficult for him to choose one girl, because both of them were ideal in their own way, creating a dilemma of choice and causing mixed feelings in him, leaving him in a state of indecision and hesitation. He then decided to use the escape technique, and by simply using the disappearing technique, he suddenly disappeared from the setting leaving the girls in amazement and bewilderment, creating a mysterious effect and a mysterious ending to the scenario. Charlotte sarcastically called the guy polite, insisting that payment could wait, adding a humorous note to their communication and emphasizing a peculiar view of the situation, giving the conversation a slight ironic tone. After all these events, 
Iris apparently decided that it was time for her to go home, emphasizing the closure of the meeting and, perhaps, the desire to avoid further surprises, creating an atmosphere of closure and resolution. She explained her move by saying that without the main character, there was no point in being there, expressing her need for his presence and emphasizing the connection between them, giving the situation a touch of emotional importance. Charlotte couldn't understand why Iris always said things like that causing her confusion and questions about her friend's behavior, leaving a sense of mystery and misunderstanding in the air. The girl simply could not understand whether she had done something wrong and why she deserved such treatment from Iris, feeling misunderstandings and doubts about her behavior, creating mixed feelings and questions in her soul. Iris understood that the Demon King had the ogre sealed and his granddaughter had nothing to do with it, but she still felt some inexplicable emotions, especially towards the girl creating a mysterious moment in their relationship. Inside, Iris felt an inexplicable anger towards the girl, although she understood that she was not to blame for anything, experiencing an internal contradiction between emotions and rational understanding, creating a complex emotional conflict. Then she simply decided to say goodbye and leave because she had nothing to say, ending the meeting with a vague feeling of disappointment and misunderstanding, creating a moment of parting in an atmosphere of unresolvedness. Charlotte considered the girl a fool, while Vitya seems to hold grievances inside herself, creating a tense and unclear dynamic in their relationship, leaving negative tension in the air. The next day, the main characters told their friends what happened to them, sharing their impressions and worries after the unusual events, creating an atmosphere of discussion and exchange of impressions. The guys sincerely hoped that the girls would find a common language and become support for each other with the confidence that friendship between them would make their interaction more pleasant and calm, introducing an element of mutual understanding and harmony into their relationship. Wolf said that in that case they needed to eat meat and asked the man for three large skewers, expressing her need for nutritious food and making a request to him, creating mixed feelings around the request for meat. The man decided to please the guy and said that he would give him more, showing friendliness and willingness to please his guest in a pleasant moment creating an atmosphere of cordiality and hospitality. Wolf believed that his meat was different from others, considering it the best among all, expressing pride and confidence in the quality of his product, creating an atmosphere of passion and gastronomic enthusiasm. Michael felt that there was some uncertainty in the city, and more and more mysterious events were happening every day, making her feel wary and eager to unravel the mysteries that mysteriously developed around her, creating an atmosphere of intrigue and mystery. In addition, there is some kind of unpleasant atmosphere in the city, and he does not like it when everything is so gloomy, causing him an additional feeling of discomfort, creating an atmosphere of indignation and even anxiety. Even the seller noticed that since yesterday, the number of buyers has become significantly less, emphasizing the impact of strange events on the general atmosphere and life in the city, creating an environment of decline and uncertainty. There are also adventurers who fled the capital, he was interested in the question of what would happen to this country, creating additional mysteries and worries about the future, adding an element of unpredictability and uncertainty. Wolf felt it was strange not to be afraid of demons, expressing his surprise and pondering why some people do not naturally feel uneasy about demonic entities, creating an interesting conversation about the perception of fear and mystical phenomena. He explained that beastmen are excellent at close combat, but have absolutely no magical skills making them incompatible with demons due to their inability to use magic, adding an interesting dynamic to their struggles with mystical forces. Michael could not understand why demons were considered so scary, expressing his confusion regarding their terrifying reputation, raising questions and speculation about the nature of fear of such entities. The guy firmly decided that he would not allow magic to become his weak spot. His ideas on countering magic had just begun to take shape and were in the development stage but he was determined to bring them to specific and effective methods of protection, creating an image of determination and desire for self-defense. Michael reported that this was exactly what he expected from the guy, expressing his unsurprisingness and confidence that the guy would take such a strong stance towards magic, emphasizing the conformity to expectations and reinforcing the guy's image as a stoic and determined individual. Rui noticed that they were getting stronger, and he felt that he should not lag behind them, encouraging himself to constantly grow and develop to match the level of his interlocutors, creating internal motivation and desire for personal success. Wolf suddenly felt a vague anxiety, which caused him to sharply tense, despite the absence of obvious reasons 
his attention was drawn to something invisible, creating a mysterious and exciting moment, filling the situation with mystery. He attributed his wariness to the fact that he thought there was a strange smell around him, adding an element of mystery and emphasizing his attention to detail that others might miss, creating an atmosphere of suspicion and interest. Of course, his friends could not understand what he was talking about, greeting his explanation with bewilderment and creating a comic situation around smells and premonitions, adding an element of humor and discrepancy of perceptions. In addition, Michael reported that he smelled only the smell of meat and nothing else, specifying that his sensations were limited to a specific aroma, which added mystery to their discussion, emphasizing the limitations of perception and causing interest in the nature of his senses. Rui noticed that the situation had become strange, and accordingly, his curiosity was aroused a little, creating interest and a desire to unravel the mysterious events happening around him, adding an element of intrigue and exploration. Then, the main character decided to try to discover magical power, opening a new path for himself and introducing himself into the world of secrets and magic in search of answers to his questions, creating an atmosphere of intrigue and desire to understand the unknown. The people who were around turned out to be really just ordinary people, adding mystery and bewilderment to the strange incident that caused such anxiety and interest, increasing the inner feeling of mystery and uncertainty. A second cut suffocated the situation, and the guy, with a wary gaze, drew attention to someone, creating tension and increasing the feeling of mystery in the air, adding an element of intrigue and surprise to what was happening. He noticed three people, and if he looked closely, their magical power was shaking strangely, creating strange vibrations and raising further questions about their unique abilities. Perhaps, of course, it seemed to the main character, but just in case, it is better for him to follow them, leaving the question of what is happening open and not excluding the possibility of something more mysterious. And literally in a split second, they took off, adding mystery to the scene and giving the protagonist a sense of urgency to follow them. Well, Michael abruptly stopped the seller and said he wouldn't let them leave without paying for the meat, creating a tense situation and emphasizing the importance of honesty in this context. In the end, with an incredible effort, he ran to three strangers, despite all the difficulties, and they finally found themselves together, creating a mysterious picture of the evening city. As long as they behave as usual, apparently they really are just ordinary people, and at this point there is nothing to suggest anything unusual in their behavior. Wolf noticed that the boys were hitting on the girls, and his attention was drawn to their smiles and joking conversations creating a cheerful atmosphere in the crowd. And then, as if out of nowhere, the guy started dragging the girls into some alley, adding mystery and excitement to the city night scene. Three strangers reported that the girls were brazenly resisting, all because they thought they looked human, creating funny misunderstandings in an unexpected situation. The guys were in anticipation, because they had never had sex with a person before, and excitement was mixed with inexperience, creating a special tension in their expectations. Ruby could no longer stand it, and decided to help the defenseless girls by taking action to change the situation and prevent possible problems. He then very intensely asked the girls if they were safe, expressing concern and a desire to protect them from possible troubles. Of course, both were very scared, but they said that everything was fine with them, trying to calm down the worried Rui and emphasize their well-being in this situation. The protagonist told them not to run, warning them that it was dangerous here, and tried to convince them to stay in a safe place where potential problems could be avoided. One of the strangers approached the guy, arousing his attention, and began to ask questions or express his thoughts, creating interaction in a mysterious situation. Because he ruined their fun, one of the strangers promised to kill him, creating a tense moment at the climax of the story and threatening serious consequences. Michael asked if they were going to run away, expressing his concern and desire to help them in such an unpleasant situation. The strangers were determined, and not understanding with words, they decided to explain their position to him through bodily actions, creating a tense moment in the exchange of hostile emotions. But the main character and Wolf were also very serious and were ready to fight, preparing for a possible clash with determination and resolve. The guy had low magical power and weak defense, creating a threat and adding an element of danger to his participation in a possible clash. On the contrary, he would definitely not lose with an ordinary sword giving the situation a certain epic feel and emphasizing his chances in the fight. And so it happened. In a split second, he simply broke the stranger's sword, demonstrating his strength and causing surprise among those around him. Wolf was very angry because he could not tolerate such behavior from the guys, and his indignation added tension to the already existing situation. He met one of the villains head-on, 
delivering a powerful blow that sent him crashing to the ground, emphasizing his willingness to protect and fight for justice in this unpredictable conflict. After which Rui himself decided to get into the fray in order to help his friend, adding a new element to the chaos of the conflict and emphasizing their solidarity in this difficult situation. He decided to use supersonic lightning, adding an element of surprise and power to the fight to turn the tide in his team's favor. And this indeed helped. At least one of them received a serious blow, emphasizing the effectiveness of using supersonic lightning in the fight. With the reinforcement of their friends in superior numbers, they felt confident in their superiority to the strangers and prepared to end this ridiculous conflict in their favor. The protagonist pathetically asked if the last remaining guy was ready to continue, expressing his readiness to end this troubled moment and emphasizing his determination. By tearing the chain from his chest, he became a symbol of possible surprise, leaving everyone around him tensely waiting to see what would happen next in this mysterious and unpredictable scenario. And then demonic wings began to appear on him, giving this unusual situation an even more mystical and mysterious character, leaving everyone in amazement. He said it was too late to apologize and said he would kill the guy, hardening his tone and adding a new element of tension and danger to the situation. It is clear that the main character knew this, but he also noticed that the stranger skillfully hid his magical power, creating a certain mystery and an additional element of danger. The chain he removed had the ability to hide his demonic nature. It wasn't perfect, but to most common people, it effectively masked his true nature. The protagonist noted that this was indeed the case, emphasizing his insight and ability to discern subtle details in a situation. The main character noticed that the chain removed by the stranger was capable of hiding his demonic essence, and if the guy had not smelled the smell, he would not have noticed either. Perhaps there are other demons among them, and the situation may be even worse than it seems. Magic items weaken the magical power of demons, adding a new element to the scenario's characteristics and influencing the power dynamics in the conflict between the heroes and the stranger. The stranger asked the guy not to think that he was still the same, emphasizing his changeable nature and possible deceptions in the world of magic and intrigue. And then he asked the main character to prepare for the blow, creating a tense moment in anticipation of the inevitable collision and emphasizing the seriousness of the situation. Of course, Rui was not going to just stand there and wait to be hit, showing determination and willingness to respond to the challenge, which added to the dynamics of the fight. On the contrary, he immediately delivered his blow, thereby preventing the attack and emphasizing his vigilance and skill in battle. The blow was really strong, and the opponent flew straight into the opposite wall, creating a spectacular finish to his attack and emphasizing Rui's power in combat battles. He just could not understand how the demons got into the city, and whether there were other demons in the city, adding questions and mystery to the mysterious events in their surroundings. Avoiding full disclosure, the stranger remained silent, emphasizing his caution and intractability in disclosing details, which only increased the mystery and misunderstanding in the eyes of the protagonist. The main character said that he was ready to bloody his hands to protect those who are dear to him, and asked if the stranger was ready for such a sacrifice, finding out his readiness for protection and alliance in this difficult battle. And then the guy gave up and began to say that there was no one else in the city yet. They were simply ordered to go out into the city, but thinking that if they were ordered to act according to plan, they would not be given time to have fun. The guy could not understand what plan the stranger was talking about, leaving in the air a feeling of mistrust and unsolved secrets in their future cooperation. But he couldn't say, because if he spoke out, his boss would simply kill him, creating an additional layer of danger and drama in their interaction. Contrary to expectations and ambiguities, the stranger somehow managed to escape, leaving behind a mysterious trail and forcing the protagonist to ponder the possible consequences that could arise from this unexpected turn of events. To be honest, the main character could not understand how this could happen, but he needed to act, gathering strength and preparing to solve the mystery and face the new challenges that lay ahead. He then instantly remembered that there were a lot of people on the main street, causing him to become uneasy and realize that the situation might be more complicated and dangerous than it seemed. And under any circumstances, the stranger must be stopped somehow, otherwise big problems will arise, forcing the protagonist to feel increasing tension and responsibility for the safety of the city. Just then, Michael came running in, complaining about being left without paying, adding a new element to the chaos and possible negative consequences for the protagonist's team. It just happened that Michael was so lucky that a stranger almost ran into him, creating a comic moment in the chaos and further confusing the situation. After which Michael heard him strike the stranger, 
bringing him up to date and emphasizing the need for coordinated action in this difficult moment. He, of course, didn't understand anything, but he got the gist that he needed to hit the guy, creating comic confusion and adding misunderstanding to the already existing situation. Immediately after this, his eyes lit up and the idea of a secret move appeared, suddenly changing Michael's character and adding an element of surprise to the development of the fight. Next, of course, a punch called an explosive fist was thrown, creating an epic moment in the fight and surprising everyone with his unexpected skill. Of course, the blow was even stronger than that of the protagonist, adding a new level of power to the stranger's defeat and causing amazement among those around him. The stranger could not understand how this happened because he thought that everything would go smoothly, leaving him bewildered and embarrassed by unexpected resistance. When Michael was asked if he had overdone it, the main character, on the contrary, said that he was great, supporting him and expressing recognition for an unexpected and successful technique in the fight. Well, Michael still continued to yell about being left without paying, adding a comic element to the situation and highlighting his displeasure at this chaotic moment. Rui revealed that the demons may be up to something, so they need to scout, adding an additional element of mystery and preparation for possible dangers in the future. If they have a plan, they must first find out who their boss is, emphasizing the need for strategy and intelligence to effectively counter the demonic conspiracy. But to do this, the main character will have to use his power a little, emphasizing the need to use his skills and magic to achieve his goals. Rui then raised his hand to the stranger's forehead, creating a mysterious moment that could have a connection to his magical abilities or some mysterious ritual. To be honest, Michael could not understand what the main character was up to, creating an additional layer of intrigue and uncertainty in their group, causing interest and misunderstanding from those around him. An advanced version of memory manipulation magic is magic that can put an unconscious person into a trance and control them, opening the possibility of forcing them to tell all the information, creating an intriguing element in the world of magic, and introducing new possibilities into the plot. Michael reported that it was truly scary magic, emphasizing its power and raising alarm about the potential dangers associated with its use. The main character seems to be able to take control of the stranger, highlighting his mastery of magic and creating new possibilities in a situation with a demonic threat. As it turns out, the stranger's name is Arago, adding a new element to the plot, a character name that may have its own history and meaning in the world of magic and mystery. Still, it was true that no one except the three of them went outside, increasing the feeling of isolation and emphasizing their special position in this mysterious situation. The stranger reported that Jason made them sit in the hotel forever, and this really pissed him off, introducing new details into the motivations of the characters and the dynamics of the plot. If what Iris said yesterday was true, then he is still that villain, adding to him negative aspects and a threat to the heroes and those around him. The main character asked what they were going to do, expressing concern and uncertainty about the group's future actions and plans. He didn't know the details, only that they had some kind of ritual to perform, and they were going to use people from the capital as victims, creating a new level of tension and urgency in the task of preventing a sinister plan. He was told to commit genocide, revealing a darker and more catastrophic plot that gives the whole situation a deeper, darker dimension. And they had to start this chaos by introducing an element of timing and emphasizing the urgency of the task of preventing an ominous event. Today at 3 o'clock, they would have to attack the city with the ringing of a bell. They were supposed to attack in two groups, adding specific details and clarifying the villain's plan of action. I start with the hotel, and the freaks should not have destroyed the capital at once, creating a more complex scheme and attack plan that requires careful research and prevention. Of course, such information shocked everyone present, increasing tension and emphasizing the urgency of the need to prevent the upcoming threat. The protagonist decided that he would force them to sleep through sleep magic, taking decisive steps to neutralize the danger and create an opportunity for a deeper study of their plans. And then he began to run somewhere, leaving everyone in amazement and introducing a new element of surprise into the course of events, creating additional difficulties for the heroes. At the moment, it was 2 o'clock in the afternoon and 50 minutes, emphasizing the limited time before events occur and increasing the sense of urgency in the actions of the protagonist. They simply did not have time, because in 10 minutes the demons would begin to attack the city. They needed to protect everyone from the demons, but at the same time, they needed to find out Jason's real goal, introducing poignant moments and internal contradictions into the plot. Friends reported that the guy was very strange, adding a mysterious element to the plot and possible difficulties in revealing his true intentions. And he said that he should not think about going there alone, 
because they are with him. They will do everything he asks, showing unity and readiness to support the main character in a difficult situation. To be honest, the huge hero was slightly shocked after such words, reflecting his surprise and perhaps an unexpected sense of responsibility for those who are ready to follow him. He decided that he would still rely on the boys, deciding to entrust his fate to the group, feeling that there was strength and unity, and preparing for joint efforts in the fight against the demonic threat. He, realizing that the demons would soon begin to attack, decided to rely on his friends, armed himself with a sword, and, with faith in their joint strength, went forward to save his city from sinister forces. The main character decided that he would go towards the hotel, where there would be many demons, demonstrating his determination and willingness to fight the threat directly. Rui, using his memory manipulation magic, decided to probe the demon's memory, hoping to learn more about their plans and goals in order to have an advantage in the upcoming clash. And Michael had to go to the royal palace and report everything to the knights, creating an additional plan of action and ensuring that the official defenders of the city were informed. If he says that he stands up for Yuri, he is listened to, emphasizing the importance and influence of Yuri in the city and the possibility of using this to his advantage in the current situation. Michael was only interested in one thing. After he reported whether he could act as he wanted, expressing his desire to maintain some degree of freedom in solving the problem. Then they had to be careful, realizing that every step in their plan matters, and any mistake could be decisive in the fight against the demons and to save the city. The next time they meet is after everything is over, emphasizing the anticipation of the unknown and the tense atmosphere before the upcoming battle with the demons. Under the weight of responsibility for the future of the city, they formed an unbreakable alliance, ready to confront the darkness and bring victory to the light taking up arms and turning their gaze towards the advancing enemy. At this time, Jason calmly drank wine for himself, emphasizing the carefree attitude of his attitude towards the impending danger and creating a contrast with the tense situation of the main characters. Seeing Jason calmly enjoying the wine, the man conveyed the information that they should begin soon, making the main characters feel the pressure of time and the inevitability of the approaching clash with demonic force. Jason noticed that he was somehow anxious, and as he found out, there were no Platinum-class adventurers in the capital right now, adding mystery to his behavior and raising questions among the main characters. When they got to the capital, they were already winning. It would be nice if it were that simple, emphasizing the impending difficulties and surprises that may await the heroes in their attempt to save the city. Now that the time had come, they needed to get started, creating an atmosphere of tension and preparedness for unpredictable events in the near future. The man could not believe that he just had to wait, expressing anxiety and bewilderment in front of the unknown danger that was slowly but surely approaching. Since he is a warrior, he could not simply sit still while the war was going on nearby, expressing his rejection of passive waiting and preparing to take an active part in the fight for his city. Jason noted that the man was truly an old man with an old mindset, highlighting the generation gap and differences in approaches to the situation that could affect their ability to effectively deal with the approaching threat. He decided to entrust him with dealing with the commander of the Royal Knights of Jekyll, demonstrating strategic thinking and distribution of responsibilities in the upcoming struggle. The man at first did not understand who Jason was talking about, expressing bewilderment and emphasizing possible difficulties in communication and understanding among the heroes. After he realized who the guy was talking about, his eyes lit up, expressing determination and possible personal involvement in resolving the conflict with the commander of the Royal Knights. Jason said that he would leave him several subjects, he could use them, offering the man the resources and opportunities to effectively complete the assigned task. Jason nodded affirmatively, emphasizing his confidence and trust in the boy's ability to successfully complete the task, creating additional incentive for him to show his best qualities in protecting the city. But he didn't care, because he no longer needed the man after he crossed the border, highlighting Jason's determination and his ability to get away with cooperation after achieving his goal. If he manages to distract the commander of the knight and the king, it will even be to their advantage, expressing the possibility of creating favorable conditions for the implementation of their plans and actions in the interests of the city. Although it would be best if they beat each other, highlighting Jason's strategic move to try to create a win-win situation for his side within the royal structure. It is better for them to concentrate on their plan now, emphasizing the need to focus on solving current problems and putting internal conflicts on the back burner to achieve a common goal. He did not think that there were people who could stop them, expressing confidence in his plan and underestimating possible opposition from other individuals. Just at this moment, a giant horse runs amok in the capital, 
adding an element of chaos and surprise to the city's setting, which may affect the course of events and the actions of the main characters. At this moment, Max and his group were next to her, providing additional personalities and possible interactions between the characters in the developing situation. They were just trying to cope with this crazy horse, emphasizing the unpredictability and struggle with unexpected forces in the city, which can add an additional element of tension to the plot. The girls intervened in this chaos, actively helping the victims and rescuing them from dangerous situations, creating an additional element of solidarity and mutual assistance in the city. They almost completed the evacuation, demonstrating the girls' efficiency and organization in a crisis situation and highlighting their ability to act quickly in difficult conditions. Max was fine, but ran out of flash grenades, highlighting the limited resources and potential difficulties the characters face in dealing with the chaos in the capital. He just could not understand what the knights were doing at this time, where the adventurers were, or even anyone would come from the Alliance, expressing concern and bewilderment at the lack of action on the part of other groups and allies in such a critical situation. Max has already begun to lose hope that anyone will help them, emphasizing the feeling of helplessness and loneliness in the face of growing threat and lack of external support. And just when he was distracted, a giant horse charged at him, adding an unexpected turn of events and increasing the tension in the fight against chaos in the capital. And then he realized that he could no longer evade and simply decided to take a stance, expressing determination and readiness to confront, despite the unexpected attack of a giant horse. Well, fortunately for Max, it is unclear who decided to help him, emphasizing the sudden support that appeared from an unexpected source at a critical moment. Wolf, arriving just in time, quickly joined Max, creating a unified front line in the fight against the giant horse and increasing the chances of a successful confrontation in this unexpected clash. Max Extra could understand what the guy was doing here, creating a mystery around Wolf's presence and possibly introducing additional mysteries into the course of the plot. He reported that the leader told him to protect the people in this territory, and they just happened to be here when this horse suddenly went berserk, adding an explanation to his appearance and strengthening Wolf's role in protecting the city. They were able to somehow save the people, but they themselves would not be able to defeat the horse, emphasizing the complexity of the situation and the need to join forces to overcome the threat. Wolf was effusive in his praise and expressed his admiration, saying that the boys were truly great, having overcome difficulties and shown outstanding perseverance in all trials. The guy instantly turned into a wolf and claiming that he was now taking the initiative, said that from now on, he was leading the business and promoting it with his wolf lifestyle. The guy asked if Max was scared because for the first time he showed his strength, demonstrating that he was capable of something much more impressive and powerful. Well, to tell the truth according to Max, he was not only not afraid, but he was delighted and said that it was simply incredible. And he was simply delighted with all this magical magic. To be honest, it never even occurred to him that the moment would come when such words would be spoken to him. And he was pleasantly surprised and even a little shocked by this unexpected confession. Having said that the demons were preparing to appear at the hotel near the royal palace, the guy said that the leader was already on his way, but he could use additional help in this difficult matter. Max only knew about the adventurers, noting that the platinum class, the highest currently, was not in the capital. But among the gold class adventurers, there were probably still some left. Then the guy decided to take the issue with the horses into his own hands, while Max suggested turning to the adventurers for a conversation and joint action. Quite frankly, it is not at all clear for what exact reasons, but at that moment, Max seemed to suddenly lose his confidence and somehow awkwardly found himself in a state of confusion. Having overcome his inner fears, Max finally decided that he would definitely call for additional help and involve his reliable friend for support, relying on their joint efforts in this difficult matter. Wolf, who rose to the attack, moved into battle, filled with determination and passion, ready to face the unknown, because before him was a spectacle of trials requiring strength and courage. Max, with full confidence that the adventurers did not trust them, turned out to be right. The chances of success were extremely meager, as originally expected, and the whole situation seemed even more hopeless to him. Well, since he was already asked for help, he readily took up the matter, trying to make every effort and help as much as possible, because it was important for him to contribute and satisfy the request, and he worked to the fullest, without sparing himself. He couldn't bear the thought that his friend might die, and so he determinedly set out to do whatever he could to prevent that fate, preparing to fight and doing everything in his power to save his friend. Of course, the girls agreed with Max because he had an irresistible charm and the ability to win their hearts, 
and in his every request or proposal, there was an easy confidence, which made his opinion very attractive to the fair sex. They certainly didn't have enormous power, but that didn't make them powerless. On the contrary, they were going to put in their best efforts and try to achieve their goals, overcoming their weaknesses and achieving success in their efforts. Max told Jim to stay put and help the guy, emphasizing the importance of this task and expressing confidence in Jim's ability to make a significant contribution to resolving the situation. And he persuaded another girl to go with him, assuring him that if he was beaten, she would be there, ready to provide the necessary help and support, creating an atmosphere of mutual trust and protection. He then decided to do whatever he could, relying on his strength and determination to achieve his goal or overcome obstacles that might come his way. And the girls, in due time, will show that they are not cowards, showing strength of character and determination in the situation, proving their ability to cope with challenges and not succumb to difficulties. Michael rushed forward as if he had escaped madness, shouting that if his encounter had been unfortunate, it would no longer be his problem, filling the moment with an atmosphere of anxiety and uncertainty. He still had a little time left before the palace, and he relied on the fact that he would be able to meet Yuri, hoping for a favorable set of circumstances and the opportunity to spend time in the company of his friend. But suddenly, someone restored his run, to put it mildly, introducing an unexpected element into his plans and forcing him to face unexpected events caused by mysterious incidents. At this time, Kazaka and Oscar appeared in front of him, creating a situation full of anticipation and excitement since their presence was a harbinger of something important or unusual. The guy reported that they had been doing a bit of investigating here, suddenly introducing an element of mystery and intrigue into the situation, raising questions about the nature and purpose of their investigation. And the girl reported that the Beatles were not feeling well, creating a mysterious atmosphere and arousing interest in what could affect the condition of these strange insects. After the demons arrived, they began to behave strangely, explaining that they had a strange feeling about the palace, which was why they came here, causing misunderstandings and incredible speculation. Michael was surprised, because he did not think that both of them were so friendly, causing him some surprise and joy at the unexpected harmony between the demons, which he did not expect to see. As it turned out, classes ended earlier than usual today, and Oscar suggested they go for a walk, suddenly creating an unexpected turn of events and an opportunity to have a good time after the school day. Michael, to be honest, did not expect Oscar to seem like this, surprised by new traits of character or behavior of his friend that manifested themselves in an informal setting outside of class. He, however, turned out to be not as shy as Oscar thought, opening up in a more informal setting and showing himself from a new, unexpected side. To be honest, Oscar easily fell into that couple when Michael said that he was in love with the girl, causing surprise and joyful emotion in his behavior. The brain then decided to wonder what Michael had forgotten there, perhaps hinting at mysterious or important aspects of the past or forgotten details that might be relevant to the current situation. Then, over the course of several minutes, Michael told them all the details, details and events, removing the questioning shadows and creating clarity around what could have happened and how it affected his current state. And accordingly, taking this into account, there is a high probability that the palace seems strange in the eyes of the demons. So it is necessary to quickly deal with these circumstances and find out what could cause their unusual perception. Michael politely asked for their help, emphasizing his dependence on their support and joining forces in solving the mysterious situation surrounding the strange perception of the palace. They then decided to go to the palace, oddly enough, perhaps to unravel the mystery and understand why it evokes such strange impressions and feelings in the demons. Not far from them, Michael noticed a guard, causing him to be a little alarmed and attentive to safety, because the presence of a guard could indicate something unusual in the vicinity of the palace. Michael shouted very loudly to the guard, trying to get his attention and ask him with a request or question, creating a situation that required attention and a response. But the guard showed no attention, and Michael decided that it seemed he would have to get closer to get his attention and get an answer to his questions. Michael said that if they didn't hurry, the capital would simply come to an end, adding drama and urgency to the situation to emphasize the need for a quick response and resolution of the problem. But he was quickly stopped, and told that there seemed to be something there, drawing attention to a possible source of problem or danger that needed to be investigated and resolved. He then decided to use magical analysis, attempting to penetrate the mysteries and energies of the surroundings in order to identify unusual or anomalous phenomena that could be related to the strange state of the palace and the demons. Oscar noted that this was quite high-class barrier magic, 
indicating the presence of powerful artificial barriers, perhaps created for the purpose of protecting or hiding something important within the palace. And not everyone is capable of creating such a powerful barrier, which is why the guard did not pay attention to Michael's presence, since usually such magical protections remain invisible to ordinary observers. This barrier appears to have a cognitive alienation effect. The guard cannot see or hear them, creating the illusion of invisibility and inconspicuousness for those who try to get close. Therefore, even if the capital were turned into embers, inside the palace it would look the same as usual thanks to this cold magic, maintaining the appearance of an ordinary and unshakable reality inside the palace walls. Michael decided that he could simply break this wall and began to literally beat it, trying to overcome the magical barrier with physical force, expressing his determination and reluctance to accept the impassibility. Yes, he decided to use the Supreme Bomb with the hope that it would somehow help, showing determination to use all available means and strength to overcome the magical barrier and the problem inside the palace. Well, oddly enough, nothing helped, and the guy simply sat back, realizing that the use of a higher bomb or physical force had no effect on the magical barrier, creating disappointment and uncertainty in further actions. But he is glad that he at least cracked it, leaving the hope that even small successes can lead to overcoming the magical barrier and achieving the goal. Oscar once again explained that this barrier was most likely created by the forces of about 10 demons, adding an additional element of mystery and complexity to the picture of the situation. If you don't use the latest fire magic on him, it is impossible to pass through, which means that Michael's blow was not strong enough and a more powerful impact will be required to overcome the barrier. And he said that he tried to use the belt of magical power, but nothing worked, emphasizing that the magic he tried to use could not overcome the magical barrier. He did not sense Yuri's presence from the palace, which added to the mystery and anxiety, as Yuri was usually easily detected in the magical plane, and his absence created additional questions and anxiety. Michael could not understand when Oscar had learned to search for magical power, causing surprise and questions as to how even ordinary personal items acquired such amazing skills. Oscar still decided to look for Yuri, despite the complexity of the situation, showing determination and willingness to take the lead in solving the riddles and finding answers inside the mysterious palace. It is not clear for what reason, but he almost fainted, causing anxiety and bewilderment as to the reasons for his unexpected state at this moment. The guy then reported that he was in a folding area and felt Yuri's magical power in the gateway, adding new mysterious elements and indicating Yuri's possible location in this unusual magical environment. If you get there, you can defeat the one creating the barriers and it will disappear, providing a new path to solve the mystery and overcome the magical obstacles inside the palace. Of course, Michael was for such an idea because this proposal opened up the opportunity not only to discover Yuri, but also to get rid of the source of the magical barriers standing in the way of solving the problem. Just at this time, the guards were punched in the face, which caused some satisfaction and a feeling that their plan was beginning to work, making it clear that magical influence on the barriers could produce results. As it turns out, these were demons who were beating up the guards, adding an element of chaos and danger to the environment, which could be due to their interests within the palace and their influence on the magical barriers. They laughed because the partner was worried about his friend, demonstrating his cruelty and indifference to the feelings of others, which created an additional layer of tension in the situation. One of the demons reported that if the surviving partner sat on his knees, he would let him live, offering the destruction of the relationship and reduction to a level of submission in exchange for sparing his life. Of course, the guard was not ready to let them into the city and considered this very cruel, expressing his displeasure and protest against the threats and violence from the demons. The stranger hoped to negotiate with him, but nothing came of it, creating a situation of conflict of interests and possible conflict in an attempt to find a compromise or solution. It is unclear why something suddenly stopped him, creating questions and confusion as to what could have influenced the sudden change in circumstances. As it turns out, it was the main character who saved the guard, adding a twist and highlighting his role in resolving the conflict between the guards and the demons. The guy immediately asked if the man was okay expressing concern and concern for his well-being after intervening in a conflict with demons. To be honest, this guard's look was very frightened because he did not understand what was happening, evoking sympathy and understanding of the complexity of the situation that he had to face. The main character said that he would figure it out himself, emphasizing his willingness to take responsibility and resolve the situation in the future. And then he advised them to identify people with injuries and direct them to the gates, 
providing specific actions to organize assistance and manage the situation within the city. The guards couldn't believe that such a small boy had saved them, causing surprise and perhaps a re-examination of stereotypes about who can be a hero or leader in difficult situations. One of them heard that he had defeated the swordsman who had attempted to assassinate the prince a month ago, spreading rumors about this student from the magic school, which gave him additional status and respect in the eyes of the guards. The guard said that if it became dangerous, the guy should run, showing concern for his safety and warning against possible dangers in the future. The stranger could not understand how he saved the warriors, causing him bewilderment and interest in what abilities and skills allowed him to cope with such a difficult situation. Magic is the profession of demons. They will definitely benefit by expressing skepticism and confidence in the power of demons in the field of magic and anticipating the outcome of future events. Of course, the main character knew about the power of strong demons, but he is very sorry that they use their magic for such sinister purposes, expressing sympathy for potentially powerful creatures, but used for harmful purposes. He simply could not let them into the city, expressing his determination to confront the demons and not allow them to enter the safe areas of the city. The man then decided to use a supreme firestorm, taking measures to protect the city and confront the demons, showing his willingness to use powerful magical abilities to protect the monastery. Of course, Rui was prepared for this, demonstrating confidence and readiness to take on the challenge of the ultimate firestorm and use his magical skills to combat the danger. He was ready to defend the capital with all his might, showing devotion and determination to protect his city from possible threats and ensure the safety of its inhabitants. The demons could not understand who he was, leaving them bewildered and uneasy at the mysterious figure willing to confront them with such determination. They promised him that he would not return alive, hinting at serious threats and raising tension in anticipation of an imminent confrontation. The main characters moved very elastically and professionally, demonstrating their skills and coordination in the fight, which gave an impression of skill and experience on the part of observers, and he dealt with demons with ease, expressing his fearlessness and skill in combat, which strengthened his reputation as a strong and experienced warrior. Next, the main character decided to use attacking technique number three, emphasizing his strategy in the fight and his readiness for a variety of tactical approaches in the fight. This technique was indeed very effective and mesmerizing, giving the impression of not only skill, but also virtuosity in the use of combat skills. The demons no longer believed that he was human, emphasizing the supernatural abilities and skill of the protagonist in the fight against them. The demons were wrong, as he was taught to fight by the Dragon King, revealing the secret source of his strength and skill in battle. They realized that they couldn't kill him up close and decided that they would attack with magic, adopting tactics and strategies according to their magical abilities to achieve their goals. They noticed that he even saw all their feints, expressing surprise at his incredible skills in perceiving and deflecting attacks. It happens that he sees magic, but cannot control it, adding an element of uncertainty and risk in his interaction with magical phenomena. The main character then decided to take matters into his own hands and finally start attacking, showing determination and desire to control the course of events in the fight against the demons. Rui used the highest dragon flames, instilling fear and wonder with his powerful magical abilities, creating the impression of incredible power during battle. It looked very impressive, and the demons simply had no choice when faced with the power and impressive strength of the dragon flames, which they were unable to survive. It was at this moment that they realized that they had already lost, realizing the inevitability of their defeat in front of a powerful and experienced opponent. Then, of course, they simply fell to the floor, demonstrating their powerlessness and defeat in front of the strength and skill of the protagonist. The main characters again pathetically asked if they would continue, emphasizing their readiness and confidence in their victory, causing submission from the defeated demons. His gaze, of course, was cool and confident, reflecting determination and control in the situation after a successful battle. The guy promised that if they told where Jason was, he would not do anything to them, expressing his willingness to cooperate and leaving room for dialogue instead of conflict. But they don't know what the boss will do to them if they tell, highlighting the dangers that may await them from the top brass and creating additional tension in the situation. Additionally, they don't know where the boss is or what he's doing, adding mystery and uncertainty around the actions of top management and highlighting the complexity of the demon situation. Just then, their conversation was interrupted by some demon who called out to the guy, creating a sudden turn of events and raising questions about what might happen next. As it turned out, he took one of the guards hostage and thereby threatened the guy, creating a tense situation and forcing the hero to make difficult decisions. He set his own conditions for the guy to throw the sword, 
demonstrating his power in this situation and trying to control the course of events. The guard even told the guy not to worry about him, expressing his determination to accept the possible consequences and demonstrating his dedication to protecting his master. Still, the main character decided to throw the sword and asked, and for this it is enough, demonstrating his willingness to cooperate and drawing attention to the moment the violence ceases. Now everything has become different, not agreeing with the fact that he is truly strong, emphasizing the change in circumstances and possible doubt in the strength of the protagonist on the part of the demons. But this time he was unlucky. Immediately after these words he was hit, demonstrating that trust in the enemy can be dangerous and emphasizing the surprise in the course of events. They didn't think he would have that look in such a situation, expressing surprise and perhaps fear at the protagonist's unexpected reaction or determination. He didn't know how long he could continue with so many demons, expressing doubt about his ability to deal with so many opponents and highlighting the difficulty of the situation. It will be difficult for him to endure attacks from such a large number. He cannot let everything end here. He needs to do something, expressing awareness of the need for action and the desire to change the course of events. Now this guy was left in a hopeless situation. He urgently needed to come up with something to prevent the demons from winning, emphasizing the urgency and tension of the moment.